welcome, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of January 5th. This is the first time I'm talking to you at home for the new year. First off, hope you had a great new year, New Year's Eve. I was going to come to you a little earlier, but your boy got COVID during the Christmas break, so it was a, a very troubling time. Did I test for it for it to be COVID? No, I should have. I still could was probably, there a point two at this point? Yeah, yeah I, I felt horrible yeah. the first two days, and I was like, should I test? And I was like, um, I'm completely dead. I'm just going to say it was COVID. Um, yeah. You've but been, but you've, uh, been, you've been dead for a week. You're like, it's, it's been this long. My, it's, it's that. It's probably COVID. But maybe I'll test still because I do still have one. So I should probably jump right in there. Every time I've tested, it said it's negative. But um, I haven't tested this this sickness yet. So maybe I'll try that. But that's not important. I have a great set of panels set slash guests today. And we're going to be talking about, you've seen the little uh, thumbnail and title. But of course, we're talking about our top 10 of last year. Uh, of course, the tradition around... The Easy Shivers Game Podcast, we come to you at the very first week of the year, and you tell our top 10. We look back one last time at the previous year, and we discuss some of our favorite games, uh, maybe some of our not-so-favorite games, maybe may hitting our honorable mentions or something like that, and we drop down. Nothing too crazy, but I'm excited. First, let's start with Dr. Doctors. Of course, he was the former co-host of the Easy Shivers Game Podcast on the regular. That is, of course, Alex. How are you? Salutations. Salutations. Okay, that's new. That's new. I uh, like it. I know. Yeah, I dig it. I like a little I different. Have to change it up. Yeah, yeah. Salutations. Something like um, something uh, maybe a eighteen hundreds uh man would say. Uh, but <laughs> hey, go ahead. And go go <laughs> off. Feet. No, I'm just joking. Golf king, I guess. Emmett Watkins Jr. Of course, host of so many things. Video game Utopia, of course, recently released um the top twenty three. Video game essays on Video Games Utopia, of course, that I've read is very good. You should go check it out. Emmett, how are you doing? Of course, also on um, hmm. Keeping Up With The Thing. Is that, did I nail that? Ooh. I think I did. Uh, I think I did. It, it's either Keeping It 100, Mixing With Welcome To The Thing. Oh my is that God. He, yes? I think it so, is. yeah. He just, that's seven <laughs> seven different shows he just said he was on. <laughs> he does regularly. How are yeah. you, Emmett? Let alone Spoonful Podcast. Hello. Um, Spoonful, of course. Yeah. Uh, hi everybody been a minute how's it going everyone um been so i've been, been outside a lot so i have not been in front of too many screens <laughs> year. that's good uh, that, that's that's good to hear you have been um much more adventurous in your free time that's good i'm glad to hear that as well uh you used to be a regular on the podcast and i, I took a break from just anyone being on the podcast and it was just me and the achievers for a while but i'm glad to see you're back glad to see that you were able to uh, join me today and uh just like we did last year we will be doing our top ten together this year. I'll be. I'm looking forward to saying it because I don't think any one of us have two similar lists here. These are very different people, but maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Yeah, a couple games might pop up here and there, but where they're ranked, probably not. So we'll yeah, yeah, the ranking out. will probably be vastly different. Vastly different. And I'm excited to get into it now. Just a quick ground rule set because although it's pretty similar to a, probably what many people do with their top tens, I do want to. Uh, update everyone listening to this so when i tell them i want a top 10 i don't give them any rules i tell them bring me your top 10 games of last year i don't care if it came out last year i don't care anything i really just want them to bring me the games of course you can also bring honorable mentions oh. i have brought four this year normally more than i do but i'm, I'm gonna do four this year uh really mm -hmm. three but I, th I think four was doable i hope everyone else is ready i want to Really just get into it. And uh, of course, like, comment, subscribe, share. I, I'm so bad at those things. But do you do the YouTube thing or the five star reviews and all that. But uh, we're starting the show and we're going to be starting with Alex. Alex, mm. give me your honorable mentions. Mm. We're going to be going rapid fire through the honorable mentions. So you just give me all, all right. of yours and then all we're right. going to be going to Emmett. Then you're going to end with me. Got it. All right. So I got four on my honorable mentions. Four. So I got. Yep, I got Dead Island 2. Mm. Um, uh, Armored Core 6. Ooh, mm. that one hurts. That one hurts. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Immort Immortals of Avium and okay. Lords of the Fallen. Okay, okay. So uh, go, go uh with the other pick. You tell me why they're on there. Uh Lords of the Fallen is not on my list. Uh as much as I I really enjoyed the game, like the bosses were difficult, but it was just if if it felt the combat felt great. That ending, so disappointing. 
Like it was mm. it, it, like you know how in Dark Souls bosses things like that you like you you're waiting for that boss. The ending boss for this game, it's not even a boss. It's mm. it's, ter- it's terrible. Okay. Like there's okay. literally a second ending that people say do that instead in the regular ending to get a better boss fight. And it's just disappointing, but and mm. uh, but I do love this game for it being doing the Umbral and Axiom uh, worlds. That was a really cool mechanic, so that's why I had to give it an honorable mention. Okay. Uh, Immortals of Avium that we talked about earlier. The the dialogue is just a little wonky. It's just it's 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 some of the times I'm like, uh, should you have said that there? It was just a uh, but other than that, the combat really fun. Like it actually kept me going. Uh, to keep playing it but other than that it didn't keep me to do anything like side related like collectibles it, i just wanted to main quest it and just get it over with hmm. dead island 2 if you love dead island this it's pretty much dead island again but it's you know the combat feels a little better everything uh, graphics a little better so if you love dead island it's you're gonna love it i, I must it cut all. in really quickly um with dead island 2 i i have to say that i was um there's a couple times I've been right through the last year. That has to be one of the main ones that I was heavily wrong, though. I did not mm-hmm. think that team had it in them. I thought every trailer looked horrible. I did not think they were going to be able to You're land it. For so long. I did not think that they were going to be able to do it. It was like two, yeah. two separate projects that they inha- like, and they inherited this mm-hmm. like mess. And the fact that they were able to release a game that, I mean, functioned it was yeah. incredibly impressive to them. No, yeah, and it was fun. Like I said, if you love Dead Island or uh, those type of games, you're gonna like it. Mm. Uh, yeah, I've had it sitting on my shelf for the longest time. I can't wait to play it one day when I have time. <laughs> yep, I have it downloaded. It's co-op too, I think. Yeah, yeah, it is co-op. I, I have it downloaded. Yeah. One day I'm gonna get to it. It's just I remember starting it at some point la- late last year and just not feeling it. Just not feeling it, and, mm-hmm. and I bowed out uh, immediately. Um, anything yeah. else uh, on your honorable mention you want to discuss? I want to hear about um. Uh, you Armor actually, um, Armor Core, yeah, yeah, because I cut you off. Uh, Armor yeah. Core six. So, so it was one that I almost made the list. That one okay. that was the most one that was on the list, but I had to bump it. That'd be the eleven. Was, yeah, yeah, that was just, number eleven. Just yeah, because okay. uh, just it, I mean, FromSoft doesn't miss, man. Uh, mm. Like I never thought I'd love mech games. Like I never played Armored Core. I've never played the mobile suit Gundam games. I just I've seen them, but it, it seems like. It's it's kind of like Ace Combat. It's like you try it, you're like, there's a lot going on, and I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. So, but once I played this one, it just felt comfortable. I was a, I love the different builds. Like some of the times I had like a, a big tank build, and when you were playing, you had like a nice strifer type build, and I was like, I love how different you can be and still get through the bosses. And so why did it, it not so hit the fun. list specifically? Is it is it because everything else is so good or just like there's something about this game specifically? No, I think it's just everything else is just so good. OK, yeah. there's a lot of things. Again, I'm looking through my list. And I'm like, I can't bump that. I can't bump that. Yeah. OK. Like, hmm. it, yeah. Other than that, I mean, like the only negative that I can say about Armored Core is just like I feel like there's just. A lot going on, I guess, in the fights. I mean, of course, it's a mech game, so that you. Ha- but there's, it's. It reminds me a lot of, uh, re- you know, in Returnal, like when there's so much. Oh going yeah, on. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like with Armor Core, while you're fighting the game, like, and shit. there's a certain boss fight, Armor Core. There's just there's so much going on that I I had to literally watch a video and kind of do a slow mo take to be like, okay, what's happening? Because mm. there's just so much, and then there's so many other endings. I screwed myself up, and I didn't. They didn't really specify a to get certain to get certain endings that I screwed myself up out of a, a the good ending and I got the worst ending possible. God damn. <laughs> yeah, the, the endings I feel like are to personal taste, but I do see why you would say that was a bad in quotes ending. But yeah. yeah. Well the, yeah, exactly. Like to me it was like, oh I didn't want I this it. one. I get yeah. it. Yeah, for sure. Is that it? It was close. Yeah, yeah. That all? That was like... Yep. Emmett. I want to hear yours. Ooh. Honorable mentions look for all intents and purposes, there are things in my top 10 that would technically be uh, that would technically be honorable mentions. And the reason mm. I say that is because I barely beat video games this year. I okay. beat less than 10 video games this year, oh. um, including stuff that came out from old years. Uh, oh, yeah. So that's just the year I've been having. Like I said, mm-hmm. I've been outside. Oh, uh, sh- sure. Shout out to Gabby. She's the reason for that. I love her very much. Um, but I've been doing other things. So... Um, 
I only have two honorable mentions. These are two games that I have not beaten, but I like a lot. I want to see through to the end, but it's just going to take either just a little bit more time and effort than I had or a lot more time effort than I have. You can probably tell which one it is by the titles of these. The two I have are Gunbrella and Wulong Fallen Dynasty. Oh, <laughs> Gunbrella. Okay. Okay. Um, Gunbrella, I'll start off with. Uh, I know it's a super short game. It's like less than five hours, I believe. Yeah, it's, that's what I heard. Yeah. It's super, super brief. Um, I just haven't stuck with it because mm. of a million different reasons. Other games were out at, around that same time that I was trying to get through. Um, and at the end of the day, it's its gameplay is really good. Its movement mechanics are really satisfying. Its quirky sense of humor I find really charming. But other things came up, and I do want to get around to it. I'm always on my Steam Deck nowadays, but um, we'll talk about some other stuff that I've been playing on Steam Deck that is on the proper top 10. Yep. Uh, and then the other game that I've been really wanting to get into, Wulong Fallen Dynasty. Um, that one, that's just really my lack of time to play any type of Souls-like, any game where you die over and over and over mm -hmm. again, and you got to get good. You're asking me to stay consistent with something when I haven't been able to stay consistent with other things. So it's like... All right, I'm not going to get around to this. I I started it right when it came out on Game Pass and I didn't beat the last the first boss of the game until like 8 months later. <laughs> when I finally so came back is, around. So this is this is a d d like I understood it was a Dark Souls, but I didn't know this is like it's, very difficult. It's very. more like it's more like Neo in my head in my sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, Absolutely. okay. 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 Yeah. It, it's very it's very neo even the buttons like you're not swinging mm -hmm. the sword with the triggers you're using the face buttons so mm -hmm. it is a little bit more i guess you could call it traditional uh but it's just all about the parries and this has a more satisfying parry system than even something like sekiro in my opinion oh um, wow it's, wow, diff it's wow. difficult i could i could not be like the main like main first or second boss i could i couldn't beat him dude I i'll be honest i couldn't beat him either I sat there and just gritted my teeth and went in. And mm. I also believe they patched it in the okay. following months to like, yeah. wow, <laughs> wow. Well, they probably had brutal. They probably had mm -hmm. metrics saying how many people dropped off, and they were well, like, "We gotta, we gotta nerf this guy." Yeah, metrics and just the fact that like every review was like, "Hey, the first boss is kind of like a entrance exam. Like that <laughs> to see if you mm -hmm. can even play yeah. this game." Um, but I got past that. I beat the second boss eventually, and I want to keep getting into it and play more and more of it. Plus, I kind of let someone loan my Xbox for a couple months there towards the end of the year, so I wasn't playing anything on Xbox. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, Will on Fallen Dynasty is a great game. I want to play it. I, I want to beat it. I want to master it. It's really satisfying, but time sync and shoot, I ain't got a lot of time for time syncs, as you'll tell <laughs> by most of the games on this list. All right. So, yeah. Okay. Good honorable mentions, both of you. Thank you so much. Uh, let me get into mine again. I have four, uh, and one of them is a doozy. All right, something that I mm. thought would never ever be touching honorable mentions, mm. uh, speaks to both the quality of the year and the not so much quality of the game. Uh, I want to open up with a quick one Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. I know this had come out on PC prior, but this came to consoles finally this year. Um, I mean, what magical games? One through six, of course, with Final Fantasy. Yep, yep. What, what more can I say? I immediately platinum the first one. I did not have time to get to two, three, four, five, six. I started four a little bit, got, got a little knee deep in that, but I didn't get too far in them. But that is something that will just be in the background whenever I feel like playing a Final Fantasy. Two, you know, three, four, five, six. What a perfect, perfect thing. And they changed so many things where they had the weird font that looks horrible. They they luckily have fixed that in the console release. A lot of little things. And um, of course, you could change the music to the orchestra or the classic. And just a bunch of small things that are really nice get screen filters and these things. But these games, so special. Very glad Square Enix decided to uh, give them a little revamp and get them to modern consoles. Because it, it was a shame that they weren't able to. Uh, to get their prior now we don't have to worry about it because of the ecosystem we live in now they are almost good for as far as we can see from now on next up yep. um something uh i want to quickly do i don't generally do remakes on my top tens not really a rule rule i have but i just try to stay away from mm -hmm. dead space remake um i just try not i try to stay away from the remakes on my top tens it's just a personal thing for me just because um if uh when they re-release last of us 
it, part one, I would have that would have been probably my number one of the year. But I, I feel I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to do that. It doesn't feel fun, right? So I generally try to to do that. Dead Space remake to me, the best survivor horror ever made, and uh, just no exception with this remake. It was amazingly done. EA did a incredible job um, making sure this was. Uh, from stem to stern, as beautiful as it needed to be, that De- Dead Space is one of my favorite games of all time, and they did a great job with it. Something that I think was sorely missed from recognition that we had the uh, later in the year that I feel like um, people really, really do love Resident Evil 4, and I'm just not that guy. I, I do really feel like Dead Space mm. should be our beacon for the survival horror mm. genre that we kind of talk about more, and mm. we... I don't I don't I think it's the old heads that are letting Resident Evil 4 a great game a great mm-hmm. game mm-hmm. but not we're going to talk no, about this we're oh, going to talk, talk about it we're going to talk about it. I can't wait I can't wait I can't wait I mean, it sounds I, like you're I, on the I, opposite a game I'd rather pick than RE4 but, uh, <laughs> but I really do think we 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 push this aside way too quickly whereas I've played Resident Evil 4 remake this year and I really do feel like it's shocking that people like this more. I don't blame people's tastes, of course, but it is shocking that people the play that was, and then play Dead Space Remake and are saying like, yeah, Resident Evil 4 is much better. So, okay, you know, that's fine. Um, these next two are very much a, a an 11 and 12. Uh, I'll start with, of course, 12. Di- Diablo 4, uh, one of my most played games of the year, actually, I was say, that, is that Diablo 4. And it just <laughs> speaks to the quality of the year, I feel like, where... Yeah. It it's just so is much. just not there. It okay. just isn't there. I'm a story mm-hmm. guy. This had a great story, just not enough to to push mm-hmm. it right in that top ten. Um, I really do feel like this is the best year, if not one of the best years by by none, in terms of quality of games. And I think this top ten honestly speaks for itself in terms of how good this year was. Uh, and then going straight into eleven, um, Starfield, something that oh. I thought would <laughs> easily be in a top 10 for me before coming out. Uh, I thought it was Skyrim in space and it was but Bethesda game in space. And and I, I know that sounds exactly what you want, right? But it's not. I wanted a more Skyrim-like experience. And Emmett Watkins Jr., what did yeah. we say when this was first launched? You were on the show with me. We were some of the first people saying what people are saying now. Hey, we're giving the guys who struggle with a Skyrim game, like this entire entire dearth (laughs) of universe, and we're all, you know, raw, raw excited. Look what happened. (laughs) You know, I loved the game, but it is it is a 2010 ass game. Like it is it is a. It is not even what I wanted from like a Skyrim game. It's just like a it's Bethesda through and through. And you're going to love that or you're going to wonder why are we playing a game that feels almost 20 years old (laughs) at this point, (laughs) nearly 15 years old, you'd say, in terms of the way it runs, the terms of the way it looks, the way it plays. The I don't I don't even understand the designers of the skill tree in that game. It is one of oh, the God. worst things I've seen out of a major triple A development studio is that if what you call skills in that game, when you have to unlock stealth, more like an ill tree. <laughs> yeah. More like an L tree. Yeah. Like it's, it's it. I'm shocked that, I mean, these are like, I mean, these aren't slouches making this game and, they nailed the shipbuilding. They nailed um, uh, flying in a ship. And what are the two things you do the least in the game? Those two things right there, because you're fast traveling and you only need to build your ship once or twice. So I I am saddened to say it is an honorable <laughs> mention, but it is an honorable mention with a bullet because it is it is really sad what what happened with this game. I, I do really wish it was something more than it was, and maybe it will be in five years. But I'm not judging the game in five years. I'm judging it right now. And it is it it has its moments. The Crimson Fleet mission is incredible in terms of dialogue and writing and in uh, uh, playing through that. That is great. I loved doing that. I loved finding the. Uh, I won't spoil it too much, but the clone planet, I'll say. 
the clone mm-hmm. planet amazing i've heard about uh, the storyline that, yeah, yeah that that storyline is incredible you know it ends but like you know like like it it, <laughs> it still had moments great. yeah for for moments it's great and it just makes me sad that it didn't it wasn't starfield it was just another Bethesda game that they that they made and people mm. we all bought it we played it for a week we had a blast and now we stop talking about it and i understand mm. the point of the game is new game plus a million times to see different stuff no thanks not that's yeah. not my thing not my thing um i'll look i'll i'll heart your uh twitter post saying that that's a um, 58th new game plus has everyone as sharks or whatever cool but <laughs> not for me I, I don't really not don't really care for too much so that is my honorable mentions gentlemen anything you want to say before i move on about those those four games of course as a reminder final fantasy pixel remasters diablo 4 starfield and dead space remake um i we'll talk about dead space okay but um i'll I'll say for for starfield uh i'm also look i felt all i saw the mediocrity coming with that one so i didn't even touch it didn't even play it um but it is I don't know. It's why I think I just think it's a little bit funny that it's like, all right, this is an honorable mention. I like the game a lot. This is an honorable mention. And then you said all the negative. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I understand that. So it's definitely a case of that game because that should have been a three, two, a one. Mm-hmm. Like it's a major disappointment that it's not a three, a two, a one. That's why I immediately hit it with the negatives because I got to justify why it's not on there. And I think that easily justifies it. I think it's the 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 because it's. I thought it was going to be so much more and it came out and it was like, oh, wow, they just they made the game in a complete vacuum, just like they did with Fallout 4. That's what we all said about Fallout 4. This is a great game in a vacuum. And then it comes out with Witcher 3 and you're like, wait, oh, wait, hold on. This is the this game out in the (laughs) same year. And these don't. And what happened? What happened again? Starfield came out. Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty two things that blow it out of the wall like it's not like if you show that to people they won't even think it's the same year that they came out let alone the exact same months almost like it's i don't know it makes me it makes me upset because we're not getting another game from them for another decade so it's just this is what they did and now we wait and see if they learn for the next time yeah, I mean, if it's anything like Skyrim, they'll add in slow motion kill cam, <laughs> a bunch of random shit that like makes the makes the game go up 05 percent of a point. Yeah. So like yeah. you know, we'll it'll be a better game as time goes on. But as time goes on, what's bad about it even gets worse. Mm-hmm. It's even more archaic at that point. It does, and also I just love that Phil went off record and said like, "This is a uh, this what this is what their next Skyrim." I'm like, "What does that mean? That they're gonna keep re releasing it and get like two expansions? What is that?" I mean, it's well, they're gonna release. They're gonna re-release it at least once, just so we can get sixty frames per second on a console. But yeah. then after that, they're done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, that's another. We nailed it too, Emmett. Oh my god, the amount of people who are so mad at me, and I'm sure at you, yep. you got it in your comments saying it's gonna be sixty. <laughs> Look who was right. Unfortunately, I didn't want to be more right. Like and more like she exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, who do we go to? Emmett, what's your top okay. 10? What's your number top 10? 10? Number 10. All right. So there was a pretty obvious number 10 that I thought I was going to have on here. Then I thought about it for the same reasons I put Wulong Fallen Dynasty and Gunbrella into my honorable mentions. I felt like my original number 10 would not stand. Um, so I had to think of other things that I, you know, played substantially that I liked. Now, of course, this list has stuff from previous years as well. So, you know, with that in mind, I was thinking of all these games. Oh, I love the Metroid Prime remake, but I only played two hours of it. Oh, I love, for some reason, I got into Grand Theft Auto 3 Remastered on Steam Deck, and I was really loving that. Um, played like three hours of it. But there's one game that I put double digit hours into, even though I didn't beat it. And so I feel justified in putting it on here. My number 10, mm-hmm. speaking of Dead Island 2, Dead Island Riptide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Dead Island Riptide's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 that's your favorite, right? I yeah, like at the time before, because the it's it's hard now between two because it's newer. But like Riptide is what did have over like if I ever wanted to play Dead Island, I always go to Riptide. 
yeah, Riptide, it's it's really solid. Uh, Steam Deck verified for good reason, runs perfectly on there, pretty much almost completely stable 60 frames the entire time. Oh. Uh, I, I want to say I'm very close to the end of it. I hit some weird bug where I can't, I have some weird save in a in this one side mission where the second I go into the next room, the game crashes. And mm -hmm. I, I tried pulling it up mm -hmm. on PC as well. Same thing happens on PC, so it's not a Linux specific thing. Maybe my save yeah. is just bugged. Um, so I've given up pretty much on trying to beat it. But the 12 or so hours I had with it before that, very enjoyable. It's very mindless, just hack and slash, kill a bunch of zombies. Half the time I played it with podcasts or something on. Uh, just a really wholesome, good time. It is the most, like, I don't know it just the game falls through your hands like sand like there's nothing really to latch on to as far as passion goes yeah but it is a very fun game not much of a story not much of anything you know important but it's just fun gameplay and at the end of the yeah. day especially especially when you're drained from work a lot or if you're just drained for you know exerting yourself elsewhere you want something that's pretty frictionless and so yeah dead island riptide really that's well game. said i i think we uh do often especially in games media space and i think i do too um, forget just gameplay right and that can be king and that can be kind of the center stone a lot of the time with with many a game especially if we're going into the past let alone a lot of the games right now where uh, the gameplay was is the thing about it right you, you know you have this kind of loose thread that keeps you along via a story if you could call it that but uh it, what's keeping you there is the gameplay and i do think that is a great uh, kind of thing to hear because that's what i hear about that right no one really talks about that in story right it's always this kind of loose thread of you're on a vacation and there's zombies kill them right and that's 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 good to hear that you enjoyed riptide because that is another one where i enjoyed it i love i love the insanity at first glance it's uh dead island can't seem um almost uh like a parody whereas like <laughs> there's things like uh getting a machete and wrapping barbed wire around it and then electrifying the barbed wire like it gets it gets very nutty very quickly but if you're just there for having fun you know you let your stuff wash over almost like an uh if i can bring a movie into almost like an evil dead where the absurdity is kind of part of the fun of it shit more zombie land if you ask me yeah good ah, that's a good point yeah zombie land yep. yeah yeah, very good zombie land, but like there's nothing to think about. There it's not you're not sitting there like, who do I voodoo, bitch? You know? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, that's a good but it's still good. very good. Alex, anything on Riptide before we move on? No, yeah, no, I agree. Um Dead on a Riptide is just a game that was like you don't really have to care for the story to enjoy it. You just mm. go in there. Like I'd be going in there trying to find a bunch of material, trying to make the randomest weapons and seeing like what makes does more damage. Like so I love sometimes like when you're able to just kick the zombie and they'll they'll like <laughs> either go flying or you try to kick the big brute one and he's like, Ugh. and then I'm like, damn, I didn't do nothing to him. <laughs> but no, yeah, the the game is really fun just as a gameplay perspective. Alex, you're number ten. Hmm, Phantom Liberty. Oh, okay, uh, okay, yeah. Okay. Higher than it's. It was really, yeah. It was. It um. It almost didn't make it. It was between okay. that and um, because I I know we talked about Armored Core Six, but I was actually another game which was a DLC it was High on Knife DLC almost made mm. it on the list. Yeah, mm. but it because that like even like just a shout out to that. It was just so funny. Uh, but Cy uh, Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty, just when I first started it, in my head, I was just like, ah, am I really gonna, like, I, I guess, like, care to play this? Because once I was done with Cyberpunk, I was just like, and nothing ever called me to go back. But then I was like, you know what, I'll try the DLC. The more I played it, the more I got invested, the more I cared about the characters, and then I even wanted to do the alternate endings and other things. Like, the more, it just... Just because I I thought I was gonna even just stop playing it, but then I just started enjoying it more. Even like everything was reset for what was it two point oh? Yeah, so yep. the everything got reset. Yeah, everything was so much easier to to get through, and it was just it was just a fun time. Yes, I I loved my time with that. I'll be discussing a little bit more about my time with that mm -hmm. um, ahead of uh my top 10 but i did enjoy cyberpunk coming back to it after uh, it wasn't as long for me because i actually waited for the game to pretty much get fixed until until i mm -hmm. played it so it wasn't as long as a wait for me than other people but uh having that yeah, break in between one 
coming back. I, I, I do love a good DLC. I don't know why. It just it kind of feels like you're visiting an old friend mm-hmm. when you're seeing some of these characters again. It's very nice. And and uh, Phantom Liberty, amazing story, amazing acting all around. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like almost a per. It's almost a perfect DLC in terms of what it's trying mm-hmm. to do. Yep. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, I'm I'm not someone who ever touched Cyberpunk. I saw what it looked like at launch and even like one or two things of the game, things about the game that were not bugs, <laughs> that were features. I'm yeah. like, oh, maybe I don't really need to pay attention to this. But seeing how the narrative have changed around that game, seeing all the improvements, seeing, you know, I picked it up for ten dollars several months oh, back yeah. when it was like when it was in full meltdown mode. I said, you know what? Let me slide in, get get it for ten bucks with a steel book. So I've been sitting on it for the longest time. One day it will be the time to play it. Yeah. That day did not come during the year 2023, uh, despite it yourself a trying very hard to make that so. But, uh, you know, I'm happy that it got to the point at where it is. And, you know, I look forward to playing it one of these days. Don't know when, <laughs> but one of these days. One of these days, Lorraine, number 10, <laughs> Star Wars Jedi Survivor, something oh. that I, that almost uh, cre- went through the wedges for me because, um, uh, frankly, the quality of the way it uh, functioned was not great uh, when it came out originally. Uh, I didn't have any bugs like many people did. My biggest issue was um, mm. the main hub world it was just the frame rate would just it, it could completely deteriorate at some points. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's probably why it's not n- nearly as high. And also um, just it being later in the year and everything else being so good. It's just hard for many people. I feel like to remember it. And it kept, it kept with it with me because one, the gameplay was so solid and they did a cool thing in the game where they really give you your tools from the last game. It really does feel like you're picking up with Cal again and you're, you're fine. You still have your uh, old, that lightsaber stances and, Oh, let's learn some new ones. Oh. And you know, remember the, uh, all your friends, like, uh, let's it's a uh, it's the old trope of get the bang back together one more trip one more one more uh, heist and you know we're out one the game or something ride. like that we got one last ride and i did love the narrative i know some people said they saw it coming i saw it coming but not to the extent of where it went uh and i enjoyed the ride i loved the uh, i guess you would say twist in near the middle of the game uh, in terms of a specific boss fight, I, I won't spoil it, but I liked that. I liked that it was hard. I liked that I had issues with the game um, in terms of mm-hmm. staying alive. I do like that I was able to adjust the difficulty. I think I, I think I played it on hard. I can't really remember, but I'm pretty sure I did. And I was getting uh, walloped at a specific part in the game. Uh, but the, with the how many stances you could do, I love the cross guard stance. Of course, the Kylo Ren stance from the new movies. Uh, it just feels so strong when you're hitting people with it and he, you are using it like a broadsword and it, you really do feel the weight, even though it makes no sense why it's heavier. It just but it's it's still cool where it's like cleaving people and they added so many new ways of interacting with the world in terms of um, this very Metroidvania esque way that they uh, let you utilize the environment and, and all these things. And I just really, really did enjoy my time and. Uh, Cal story ending where it is and then um, I'm a sucker for good romance you know the romance the way it happens I just had a great time and Star Wars although had its problems and it does miss there's a reason it's at number 10 it it is it's still a very very good game though respect respect anything with Star Wars before I move on Uh, it's sitting right right next to dead uh, island on my (laughs) shelf It's right on it top. It will also be one. I bought them both at the same time from it's Gadfly, right and here I am with no free time. So we'll get to it. <laughs> Gentlemen, if I may go again, because I want to say a joke, and I've been thinking of this joke ever <laughs> since one specific gentleman here had a hit tweet about this game. And, oh, it, is of, and it is, of course, number nine, Hogwarts Legacy. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> Emmett, completely destroyed this game, and it was very, very funny. <laughs> If you do, if I if I could bring you back up, I wish I had the tweet in front of me, but I don't. I couldn't find it. <laughs> but um, it was pretty much um, uh, someone is asking uh, why is Starfield and Hogwarts Legacy not nominated for anything during the Game Awards, and Emmett simply retweeted because they're not very good. <laughs> and the, and the, I think I butchered that a little bit. 
Um, I think it was actually, oh, it was like, why is Resident Evil 4 remake specifically um, being talked about more than Hogwarts Legacy and Starfield? And then you retweeted. Uh, it's a because... better game. Hope this helps. <laughs> <laughs> and my God, that really does solidify. I think what one many people do think about this game is it really is not incredible. I will be the first to say that it isn't great. It is a very good first attempt at something that hasn't really been tried before, specifically in the Hogwarts world, and that is become the student, make it feel very interactive, give you this whole open world that you can explore. It definitely does have its problems, one with a little bit of the narrative. Uh, the narrative is a bit wonky, especially where you end with the game. And also, it is very strange being a small child murdering people murdering people i have a body count that is in the hundreds over there in in hogwarts and i'm not talking about the pretty ladies and boys hanging around in hogwarts i'm talking about actual physical murder i use the murder curse on people over and over again killed a lot of them it is really weird that that's mentioned in the game but it, it doesn't seem like you kill people but you definitely do you kill straight up people in front of others it's it's a weird game in terms Talk of that legacy. Talk about yeah, yeah. The Hogwarts legacy is a there was a serial killer that went there, <laughs> and not the one you're thinking about. But I enjoyed the game for what it was. I think it was very good. I think it's obvious now, and I think a lot of people actually agree with me here that it was treated incredibly unfairly. Uh, of course, because the author had problems with uh, uh, transgender and saying just wild stuff, but. I do really do feel like the game industry treated this game quite unfairly. And I do think it, I, I, I feel like people, at least some of them feel a little guilty about how they treated this game, but maybe I'm wrong there. I feel like hopefully we'll look back and feel like that. A lot of us overreacted of what came out to be just a, it was just a fine game. It's a seven. If you don't like Hogwarts and if you do like Hogwarts, it's like a nine out of 10. Uh, and I'm somewhere in the middle where, you know, it's, Definitely not the best thing ever, but it was a fun time. They nailed the feel. You really do feel like you're in Hogwarts with the moving staircases and the um, uh, people on brooms, and you're able to uh, take care of these magical creatures and feed them and all these things. Like There's all these little things that really does feel like they push the extra mile to make you feel like you're in Hogwarts. But then there's all these other things that, of course... Problems with the narrative. Problems with, of course, if you look at it from a outer, outer, sorry, if you look at it, looking outside into it outside, yeah, from an outside perspective or through the looking glass, um, mm. you will find yourself. I mean, I don't blame you. Having outside actions affect your game, uh, affect the game itself before you even touch it, which I don't blame you. I just find casting those persons on others, specifically in this. Uh, in, in this specific situation. Uh, negative. Now, this is another thing that me and Emmett, uh, we were on a show talking about. This was also, honestly some of the best shows I think we had that year, um, at least on my show. Uh, speaking about this game, now I'm curious, feeling like a million years ago, honestly, now, because uh, <laughs> it does really does, it really feels like this game came out 50 years ago now, but in reality, it came out barely a year ago. Not even. Uh, did did your months. did anything? Yeah, ten months, I think, right? Because it was March or something it's, like that. It's February. It was February yeah. again. What did you think? What do you think about this game specifically? Uh, I, did you even play it? And did your thoughts change on it in any way? Hmm. I'll say for me with Hogwarts Legacy, it's close to the same case. I don't know if I expressed this last time we spoke about it on the show, but how I feel about it then is how I feel about it now which is I wasn't a Harry Potter fan to begin with. <laughs> yes, so it's I very that. easy. Yeah, so it's very easy for me to just not care about this game. Uh, and really, if you if you want, all of the J.K. Rowling comments were just not icing on the cake, but it was something that pushed me in a certain direction that I was already in because <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to play the game. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it, it, it really didn't bother me too much. I think you're absolutely right in your assessment of this game is probably just fine. Uh, you yeah. know, we're talking about Wait, it's not Avalanche Studios, it's Avalanche Software. I believe there's like a slight difference yeah, there. Yeah, Studios is um Yeah, Studios are the Discord folks. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um 
but in any case, it's it's a fairly new team. I believe this is the team that actually worked on um, this is the Infinity, Infinity stuff previously. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So this is their first big title. I think, you know, as far as a first big title goes, great for them. It seems like it did very well for them. Um, but as far as the cultural impact of Hogwarts Legacy, it's probably as big as the cultural impact of the last two Fantastic Beast movies yeah. or the play that came out where, you know, all the characters from Harry Potter were aged up and had kids and stuff mm -hmm. like all of these things are pretty niche products at this point, and they make their money back for the most part. And I'm sure these things are, you know, successful enough to keep happening, but they're not the half blood prince. <laughs> they're not the last book getting released. They're not yeah. any of these movies coming out. So, you know, Hogwarts legacy, it came and went just like a lot of people figured it would. I know there was a lot of fervor once it got released, but you know, when the dust really settles, <clears throat> the game didn't need any help to be forgotten in the cultural consciousness because that yeah. was going to happen already with how the game was. So it was, uh, yeah, uh, I think, you know, we'll see if we're talking about this game two, three years from now. Uh, but you know, God, I, I might not. try out the next, I might try out the next avalanche release. We'll see. We'll see how WB is. Maybe. Oh, they're making it. them. I don't know what Zelda's doing. <laughs> they're making them make another game. I mean, they sold incredibly well. Now, of course, with MPD, we don't know exactly how, but it's one, it was one of the best selling games of last year. That's uh, true. of course we don't know Legend of Zelda because we don't know digital exa you know, exa and the usual mumbo jumbo, but it was a uh, very well selling, but hard to, hard to know if it actually did. So incredible. It, said it well earned enough. a total of 100, 850 million in global sales. It's moving more than 12 million units. Yeah, I remember the 12 million unit mark. I just, I th and I think it's up to higher than that now. I think I, because of that, was that pre, I think that was pre September, something uh, like that. I can't remember. Um, yeah, that's Hocus not, I mean, Pocus so we can get a competitor. <laughs> Hocus Pocus. I love Hocus Pocus. No, it, the second one was great. Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay, I, that's how I feel about Good mm -hmm. Burger too. So I'm glad there's some. I have not watched Good Burger. Be... I still need to oh, watch Good, Good Burger, Burger too. too. It's not the greatest movie in the world. It's actually pretty bad, of course but it's not. very endearing. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't expecting it. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking it was going to be the best movie ever. Uh, <laughs> Oscar-winning performances in Good uh, Burger too. Yes, by Ke by Keenan and Kel. <laughs> now, <laughs> let's go to Alex number nine. So number nine was Star Wars Jedi Survivor. No, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, pretty close. I, I was gonna say when you when you brought it up, I literally echo everything you said. Mm. Um, I mean, I really enjoyed the game. Uh, I feel like it it was just a continuation of like you left you left off where with Cal, you bring in the bang back together. I love the the new stances. The only it, the issues was was that home world that frame rate was just I uh, I was trying to get a bunch of the collectibles and it was just. <laughs> At the time, it made it difficult for me to do that. Like, just like, uh, just going in certain buildings was just, ugh. I was like, all right, come on now. Why do you, it feels like you're loading to get through a door and then loading again to get through another door. Like, come yeah, on now. I, I, I did mention this. I, there were times where I did feel like I was getting nauseous because the frame rate was cratering mm -hmm. so hard for so long. Yep. Oh my and, God. And I was like, I was like, I have to leave this area to go to feel comfortable again. But overall, I mean, like, the worlds were fun. Like the the battles were awesome. Uh, like even certain boss fights were really cool. The twist. Um, I want to say I, I wasn't. I was expecting a twist, but I wasn't expecting that one. Mm. So it was like pretty cool. Yeah. And then like I, everything after that was pretty fun. So over overall, I mean, I I enjoyed my time with it, and of course the romance, the. Well, what do you call it? The or the 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 puzzle solving, like you know, when you gotta climb and find and figure out yeah, where yeah, to go and stuff. puzzles and collectibles and yeah, 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 that's, yeah. yeah, like all that stuff is always always fun. Like there was a there there's a part where there's like some wind shooting it. Like the amount of times that thing would throw me <laughs> off because I'm like, yeah. okay, am I going the right way or not? I love I love the wind because it would launch you, and sometimes you know, you're going to the right you. way, but it's launching yep. you. It's uh, that was yeah, fun. No, I it, that. yeah, no, but other than that, I mean, I if. It's another Star Wars game that was really fun. So, mm -hmm. got to stab people in the face. Emmett, mm -hmm. <laughs> number nine. My number nine. Let's see here. Uh, oh, okay. My number nine is, is, is a little fucked up because I think this is going to be a lot of people's number one. Um, mm, oh, I, 
I don't think this would have had a chance to be my personal number one, but it definitely would have been higher if I played more of it. I got I a solid 20 hours into this game. Now, here's the thing. 20 hours sounds like a lot. I got about 20 hours into the prequel of this game and then decided, <laughs> oh, I'm, I, I, this isn't for me. I'm dropping it. I'm good. Thank you very much. 20 hours into this game, and I'm still in the back of my head. I got to get back to that because I was very much enjoying that. Mm -hmm. And that game I was enjoying. The Legend of Zelda, Legend of Zelda <laughs> Tears yeah. of the Kingdom. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, for number nine, which I know is wild to a lot of folks, but um, I just haven't historically been a Zelda person. The only Zelda mm -hmm. games that have ever even interested me were, uh, I think, Wind Waker, the one with the water. Uh, mm -hmm. and <laughs> the one with the water. No, I mean, that is the one with the water. It's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. Um, but really, that's the only one that's interested me. So I've never mm -hmm. tried out any Zelda. Breath of the Wild was my first one. And I was like, eh, this, this is fine. But Tears of the Kingdom sparks like an imaginative or slash a creative spark within me that most games have not triggered. Um, I have not had that released out of me since like Little Big Planet 2. Um, and I don't know, it's just something about the 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 way it asks you to just figure shit out. I find it very, very engaging, uh, kind of tapping into some immersive sim qualities and such. Um, it's a really good game. I want to play more of it. Uh, and also, it was really good. You know, I came to be a massive, massive fan of handhelds this year. I can't tell you how often I, I've been thanking the Lord that I could take a game with me on the road or at least just play it from bed instead of having to walk over to the mm -hmm. couch 10 steps. Um, you know, it's it's been really fun. So, yeah, uh, what is there to say about Zelda that hasn't already been said by people? It's a great game. I'm sure I'll love it even more once I get to the story, once I see all some more of these characters. There's a lot to love. I am only still just getting started 20 hours in. And I think that speaks volumes that I want to play more. Yeah, I, uh, I'll quickly add, we were definitely <clears throat> the, uh, you were my first brethren in the Zelda Breath of the Wild brigade that I had. Um, that it was very much like this game isn't that good. Uh, everyone relax. Uh, they're not even it's not even like the top three in its own franchise. Um, I'm glad that we've at least moved away from talking about Breath of the Wild all the time. And at least people could talk about this game because that is actually something that I have felt akin with many others where I do actually feel like, OK, finally, it's actually as good as what everyone was saying is. I'm glad it and I'm glad that uh, uh, you have also found a similar reasoning in what I found too, where. Although the Breath of the Wild did not speak to me, something about Tears of the Kingdom, although very similar on paper, but also very, very different in many, 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 many ways, especially when you're bringing up game design. Although the game design feels very similar, it very much is not in very specific ways. And I'll be talking about that more later on, but um, I did love my time with that game so much. I'll give you a secret. It's not even on my list. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you didn't, you actually got further huh. than Emmett. But, I got 42 hours in, and yeah. I just, every time I told myself, I was like, hey, I need to go back and play this game, I never did. And, and what's hmm. what's heartbreaking, Emmett, is he got to my favorite part of the entire game. I'll just, I won't say how to do it. I'll just say the Master Sword. So he got to hmm. to doing the Master Sword part. And I kept saying, and I he go stopped it and I just after did. seeing how to get it, which I'm like, that didn't make you go like, yeah, I want to go do that. Like I, I was, I, I, I was blabbering. I was like, you turned the game off. Like I, Damn. I didn't know it was possible. I was like, you're never. It's over. Like you know what? if that wasn't the hooker, that nothing's hooking you in that game. Look, I'll, I'll be honest. Don't feel too bad because you know I made this entire list, and because I didn't play it, this entire list doesn't have the one Bayonetta game that came out this year on it. <laughs> and we're yeah. talking about me we're yeah, talking that's about a, me that's Emmett. so yeah that speaks a lot I, yep. you want to be real i got a bayonet in real life so i'm good <laughs> oh <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh uh, maybe that was just staying in the dress we'll find out if she ever watches this <laughs> <laughs> she has to now right oh god yes I, yeah. we'll, we'll see if she just finds me tweeting about it and then wants to click through we'll find out mm -hmm. <laughs> okay that was your number nine we're gonna stick with you Emmett, again, actually, number eight. Ooh, okay, number eight. Let's let let's get into this argument now. Um, this is a game, a lot of remakes came out this year. A lot of really mm -hmm. good remakes, a lot of quality remakes. I think this remake is quality-wise on par with, with just about all the other remakes that came out this year. Okay. But it is so paint-by-numbers to the point where it makes me 
look at the first original game in a slightly different light. Uh, and I'll go on to explain, but first let me give you the context of what the game is. The game is Dead Space Remake. Mm. Um, I like Dead Space a lot. Uh, I played the entire series, the entire trilogy, uh, back on the PlayStation 3 days. Uh, I love those games. Those are really fun. But Dead Space 1, I never really thought about the story of it. And so when we got this new Dead Space remake, it's like, all right, we're focusing, maybe not even focusing on the story, but just injecting more things into the story. Yeah. There are more characters doing more things. There are more like chess pieces in the game of the narrative that, you know, there's actually something to latch onto, something to actually stick to. I really liked how there's side missions now. I really liked how you got to get these level clearances and you kind of mm -hmm. Metroidvania your way through the ship. I like yeah. how it's all one consistent ship the entire time. I, I really enjoyed the game. I think it's, you know, very well designed. Gr Gameplay is great. Of course, graphically, it's beautiful. But I also feel like, man, this is like... I, it just felt not very inspired where some of the other remakes that came out this year just they went left when you thought they were going to go right or they don't even go a direction when you thought they would go a direction or they inject something that you've never even seen before it feels like some of these other remakes were like hey we know you were familiar with the original here's something else here's a little bit extra in this one it felt like they only filled in the gaps that they perceived were empty in the first place which is great, and it makes for a way more fully featured game, and it feels like a more cohesive product, but it doesn't feel like an exciting piece of art to me. <laughs> it just feels like, all right, that's good, that's good, that's good. The entire time I played Dead Space, I was like, I am whelmed. I am satiated. I didn't feel like I was blown away at any point, uh, but it was definitely solid all the way throughout. I enjoyed it a lot, and it's on this list for a reason. It's a great game, but it, it don't got a candle on some other remakes that I'll be talking about later. I before I give my actual thoughts, I, I do want to quickly point out um, and it is super lame, so I don't, I'm not saying like this should be the case, but um, speaking specifically on the paint by numbers aspect, you know about the new game plus thing where like if you do certain yes, things, right? OK, I'm just things, making yeah. sure I'm I'm not one of the guys to, to bring that up because I would never do that. I, I, when I heard, <laughs> saw it was the thing, I was like, oh, I kind of would like to do that. And then I beat the game and I was like. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I don't want to beat the game again. This was, uh, I, I kind of, to I, at least to me, I know this is uh, once every ten years is okay with me. Oh, uh, <laughs> I know this is a hard disagreement with people. I just like playing survival horrors one time because mm -hmm. I, I just I like experiencing it as it's scary, as it's like hyped on me. I don't want to go back because I because at that point I know I'm gonna break the game. I know I'm gonna immediately like pop, 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 like like a three hits to each thing mm -hmm. i don't know where everything coming from and stuff i just I, it's not my thing so that's why i steer away from them um so i don't blame you for that specific uh, at all it is paint by numbers but i also don't blame it specifically because i do think they were coming from i mean i know people don't agree with me but i i mean a, a nearly perfect game so i wouldn't want them to mess with but i do understand People would have said that about Final Fantasy VII as well, but people love the remake for that. And it is very specifically telling you they are changing things, right? And it does kind of seem like they're changing stuff with Dead Space 1 to maybe 2. I don't know how they're going to do that, but maybe yeah. they will, maybe they won't. I don't know, but I do agree with you in a lot of aspects there. Um, I, I love it much more than um, what you're putting down, but I respect your opinion. So I get it. Yeah, I'll say they probably made a very straightforward remake because, you know, Final Fantasy VII, you can play it on every console right now. The original yeah. Yeah. You can do that, you know, very easily or Dead Space. It very much so seems like, hey, we don't want to have to work out the licensing agreements and pay the people from the past dev teams and blah, blah, blah to get that original on modern <laughs> platforms. So fuck it. Let's remake it. And that's the only one we're pointing towards now, which is disappointing. But like hey it's it, the corporation has the right to do whatever the fuck they want i don't like it uh i can't wait until you know once dead space is like emulatable everywhere then we'll be in a good spot yeah and also let's be honest ea probably was like we need a w like just make it a yeah. make it great remake it and don't touch it and just re-release it <laughs> mirror's head remake coming soon <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. yeah it is weird it's like 
survival horrors, you think about it, you're like, oh, one and done. I don't know if I want to go back to that. Like, mm-hmm. I never, I never. And thought that's about actually that. the, like, and that's the antithesis of how you're kind of supposed to play them. Resident Evil Four, no, and yeah. Space, you are meant to replay them. They are very specific. Like, like, oh, New Game Plus is open. Do this and and do these mm-hmm. things for new endings and new achievements. Blah blah blah. blah, blah. Yeah. And not my thing. Never has been. Oh no, yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad they didn't even do that because my two favorite horrors are Fear and Alien Isolation. And I never, it was just, I've only, only ever played those once each. No one's mm. ever playing Alien Isolation twice. No, <laughs> no, no that's not that. happening. Oh, God. That's not happening. And I love the game, but like, I'm not going back to that game. That game is stressful. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, like, oh, it's like paying I, like, someone I, to punch like, you in the mouth. Like, I would, I can't wait. Or well, hopefully, because there was like, rumors a long time ago that they were going to make a second one i wish they will they will but i i'm not going back through the first one again yeah <laughs> alex number eight. Oh, i'm sorry mm-hmm. you finished Emmett? i i should have yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah, i'm you're done. done i'm you're done, done with that space. make it sure make it sure oh this man's gonna make me upset later number eight alex <laughs> <laughs> avatar frontier the pandora whoa wow. okay okay that's higher yeah. than i thought what uh, i want to yeah. hear this so when I, I I had very questionable things about this game because I was like, am I really gonna get into this game? Because like I just recently watched a movie maybe a couple months ago. It was like my wife and I both watched Wait, it. Oh, we you had like, a day and a half to spare. That's nice. I mean, yeah, <laughs> a day and a half to watch this long ass movie. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I, the the game starts out a little slow, trying to figure out. I guess it's just because it's so it's it's just a new IP, so I think they're just trying to reel you in but of course it's ubisoft so i was like how different is it gonna be from their far cries and their assassins you know but like when they when they start out starts out a little slow it's introducing you everything but i feel like in my head like once you get past the let's just say the hq part if you if you've played it once you get to do things it get it gets better as i played it like once i was able to like get certain things, get certain weapons. It it just kept getting better. Like the combat felt more fluid, more with the more skills I got. It's like, oh, is this this it, it just it kept me going and I was like I was doing a, a bunch of the the side quests and I was just like in my head I looked at the map and I'm like there's no way I'm doing all of this and I was just like I actually like went through the map and started doing some stuff. And I actually even after beating the game, I had to go back because I uh I had to get certain achievements that I missed to uh, to fix my gamer score, and I, I honestly didn't mind it as I was doing it because it was actually pretty easy. The issue with this game, there's a lot of collectibles to do in this game. Oh, there's yeah. like almost to too yourself. much. Yeah. There's like there's like six or seven gotta, different collectible lists. Gotta pad that playtime. Like, yeah, but uh, like I didn't even like I didn't even bother about that. But overall, like the game looks great. Like I don't have a a great 4k tv but i've seen like like pc uh pc of uh, gameplay from it on the like on the crazy computers and stuff and it looks it looks outstanding like uh, the game played well there was some i think there was a time i think maybe i had one crash and then there was some times where it was like a little weird but other than that the game played really well and um story wise i actually was i mean if if you enjoy the movies, it feels like a story, like the movies. Um, mm. So, like, I mean, it's just that it has that feeling. Um, but like, there's some some parts where it's like, oh, you know, they had some some decisions. I was like, questions. I'm like, oh, I'm curious that they, you know, they haven't mentioned this in a way, or they have, you know, ever again or anything. And I'm like curious. It was like, oh, future content, DLC, next game. So, like, I kind of ended the game with it was like, oh. I'm curious on what happened to this and this. Maybe we'll get that later on. So it did leave me kind of like a, on a like almost cliffhanger. So I'm wanting to figure out what happens. So actually, like if if we get another one, I'll be playing it. Hmm. Sure um, to good. quickly echo a couple things. Um, I'm very uh, fresh into this game. I've kind of again, I've been sick, so I haven't really been playing much. But I played a little bit of this and Immortals, and I played this and. I do I definitely agree. It it takes way too long to start. Um, uh, I, I kept saying to Alex, like, when do I get to play the game? Because it doesn't <laughs> really let you play the game until an hour into the game, which doesn't sound like a long time. But my God, when you're playing it, it feels like an mm-hmm. eternity. 
of just waiting and listening like to all the this Link dialogue. Too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. You're, I could have watched Avatar in the time it takes me to let this game let me play. I just want to play the game. And they're just well, go to this place, go to that place, learn mm-hmm. about this, learn about that. Here's the lore. Here's this. Here's they that. did like, put this could a have... lot of detail into everything, though. And there's they a way just, to yeah. do that cleverly. And there's a yeah. way to exposition you until like you're nauseous. And there's a Not way of doing sure. that. And it, it was it was done. I hate using the word lazy, but it was done lazily feeling at least because it's just a person staring at you going, this is the world and this is everything you need to know about the world. Avatar. And it's just that for an hour. And it's just, you just could not wait for it to be done. But once it is done, it's pretty fun because you get to, you know, you're an avatar, you're a blue cat man and you get to jump around and shoot people with an arrow. It's cool. Damn it. Anything. I haven't played Avatar. Uh, I got to be honest. I my tolerance for games like these because I understand it's it's similar to Far Cry, right? It's, Open it's, world. it's literally Far Cry with an Avatar skin over it, pretty much. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah. My, in that case, my tolerance for that is like once every two or three years, I'll yeah. play mm-hmm. Far Cry. The believe. last one I played was Far Cry Five, and that was about two or three years ago. So yep. I'm due for another one. Maybe it's Avatar. Maybe it's Far Cry Six. Maybe it's New Dawn, which I still haven't touched. I got options. It's not New and, Dawn. Honestly, it's not new. <laughs> it's not new. Out of those three that you mentioned, play Avatar versus Far Cry Six. Oh wow! Okay. In my in my opinion, I mean, some people probably will like Far Cry Six way better, but like I enjoy I from the time Far Cry, I couldn't even put ten hours into that game. Gee will it? I think if Avatar, I put what maybe thirty thirty something. I don't remember how many I put. Huh. Yeah. Well, perhaps I'll investigate Avatar. I'm sure that thing, all Ubisoft games are like $10 world, you know? within six months. So, yeah. yeah, one of these days I'll get around to it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I pretty much echo always saying I tried Far Cry 6. I stopped it like almost immediately because I think I just hit almost what you're talking about. You anyway. it's like, twice. Yeah, I picked it up twice and still didn't finish it the second time. And I played like 20 hours for the second time mm-hmm. I picked it up or something like that. But, um, uh, I do echo honestly what you're saying a little bit, Emmett, there because you were saying like I, you know, the the threshold is like two to three years. I feel like I mm-hmm. pretty much hit that when I tried to play six. I, I was like, yeah. ah, this doesn't. Uh, no, I can't. I can't. It feels yeah. like I've just played this game. I can't play this. So I immediately put it down and didn't play it. And then I picked it back up and I got kind of back into it. And then I quit again. So uh, Avatar is, I feel like, in a sweet spot where it's been a while and also it's different enough. Like it is. It's Far Cry, but it feels different enough because they're all mm-hmm. this is crazy Avatar stuff happening. The yeah. grass is moving and there's a I found a plant that was that had electricity running through it. I don't know why, but it mm-hmm. did. And it was cool. And there's, and like, there's, you, oh, there's a bunch of ant plants and stuff. They're actually traps and stuff. If you get near it, they uh, explode or they uh, like they hurt you in any way. And then some like disappear, like in the movies. There's some that you can actually grab, grapple through, and it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a little stuff like that that's cool. So, yeah, up to you if you actually end up touching it. But I think it was, yeah. fr- it's pretty cool so far. Yeah. So, I remember my number eight, much higher. And another game that's much higher. Again, if I had thought my top 10 at the beginning of the year, I would have been very wrong by the time we got to the end of this year. And that would be Spider Man 2. Spider-Man well, two. yes. Oh. So, this is dual part one again i need i need to say this i'm a i'm you guys are gonna fucking hate me by the time this this show is over quality of the year just that's that's the number one thing i need to remind everyone this is the quality of this year to me right Mm -hmm. and this was razor edge between honestly six seven eight my top Mm -hmm. five has been cemented since i made this list six seven eight have been kind of in free flow and we'll get mm-hmm. to that, but that it's hard to nail them down. Why is Spider-Man two at number eight? I think is what most people are thinking about versus, you know, Oh, it's good that it made number eight. No, most people are like, wait, why isn't it five or at least three? Mm-hmm. So, so I'm going to echo you. I'm just going to let you know that's my number seven, but carry on. Okay. That's perfect. Mm. You, we can kind of do it here. Since yeah. we'll do so this. We'll, so. we'll go to seven for Emin after this. Um, uh, so and cut me off whenever you'd like to add in here, Alex. Uh, okay. So Spider-Man 2, gr- it is, 
God, there's so much to talk about with this game. I, I do again. I do it's very much love it. No, it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's one of the worst games you've played. That's what you just said. So I love so much about it, right? But the end, it's the game is actually one of the games where I, I hate it. I hate when people say this, but this is one of them that it really, it really did do it to me. The ending kind of ruined a lot of it because it mm-hmm. feels so as a guy who reads a lot of comic books, very comic booky, very safe, very. Mm. I, I I talked with Alex before this game came out and I told him I have a rough draft on how this game is probably going to go. Mm-hmm. But no way is it going to go this way, because that would mean there's no twist or any kind of uh, left or right turn. And then there wasn't. That. It's just <laughs> it's a Spider-Man 2. That's what it is. It's not it's it doesn't Spider-Man. change anything. <laughs> no, yeah. And that's not bad, but that isn't enough to get it past anything. Right. A couple things that I love about light spoilers for Spider-Man 2. Uh, I will have time stamps below. Uh, you could skip ahead if you'd like to. Let to, me uh, ask. Oh, go ahead. I am still playing Spider-Man. Oh, 2. OK. I will. I will. I won't uh, go crazy then. Because I, I have a vague idea of something in the ending. I'll say as far as where I am, I'm like a mission or two after you surprise take control of a different character. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. So you're, and that's like one of the best parts of the game to me. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. Es- so especially what happens, <laughs> especially what happens after that. That that to yeah. me is <clears throat> the best part of the game and probably <clears throat> should have been the ending. Honestly, like or at least close <clears throat> to closer to the ending of, of what it uh, should have been. Anyways, I won't. I will be much lighter than I was originally going to be on spoilers. Then, okay. The character Miles Morales in this game is, I think, the best part. And I understand it's not called Spider Man Miles Morales, but it is called Spider Man, and his name is Spider Man. He should have been a much bigger part because he was a much more compelling part of the game to me than Peter was, frankly, at all. Um, Peter, I understand, does go through growth in this game, but I struggle to really find it. I understand what it is. I know it. I get it. But just knowing the nature of games like this and comic books like this, that is not going to be felt in a future release. And at least to me, will not make this game any more impactful from the ending. Where we leave those two characters, I think is actually really good for Miles because he um, overcomes a specific Uh, ordeal that he must overcome in order to mature peter also does but in a less extent and it feels kind of like a cop-out when you really think about it because it at any point it it feels like it could be revoked like i was just kidding i needed i I still need to do x thing to make sure this happens and to me that left a sour taste in my mouth it really didn't feel like we had a well-rounded experience it felt like we had a safe sequel that's what it felt like and Mm -hmm. It just left more to be desired. Again, I thought I had this game figured out from the from before I even turned the game on. Mm-hmm. For some reason, they pretended like we didn't know who Venom was. I don't know why they acted. They tried to gaslight us into being like, I wonder who Venom well, is. They made like, well, me change my answer. It, it's like, well, uh, <laughs> I know who it is, right? <laughs> like, why, why are we acting like yeah. Why are we acting like we don't know who it is? You've yeah. showed us who it is. So why? It's like they, they they made it seem like it was like it wasn't. I'm like, but it was. And I was like, you made me second guess myself. And to me, I think they soured the experience a little bit because it's like, oh, well, I'm expecting a twist then. And there never was one. So why did they pretend like we weren't told who it was the whole time? It's just strange. Like, why Why did we pretend like it wasn't this person the whole time? Like, it was just such a weird way they marketed this game. I was always going to buy it. So why did they pretend like we didn't know? It's not important. But now, Emma, did you finish that? That where you're at right now? That sequence? Yes, I there was a I'll, I'll you guys know there was yes. a death. OK, yes. I yeah, yeah. So, so, so you know that's about that. Was, OK. Yeah, 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 and that is, I'm, yeah. I'm just I'm a little disappointed in that. Really, I think that's the best mm. part of the game, frankly. And then it goes kind of downhill from there. Be honest. Yeah, with you. yeah. <laughs> well, well, I think we'll the opening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just stop, and no, no yeah. I, it, I. And again, I'm not trying to be like, boo, like it sucks. I'm just, I wanted the sequel to Spider-Man One, 
in terms of quality, and it almost got there. I loved the story in Spider-Man 1. I love it. It is torturous to see a character, Dr. Octavius. They make you like him, and they and you know what's going to happen to him. And it hits you just as hard, even though we know how the character is going to end. We know it, but it still hits us very hard. And mm. we kind of get that with a character in this, but not really. And also... There were cool things being hinted at Craven that aren't that does not come to pass, which would have been, yeah. in my opinion, much cooler than what oh, than what shit. we do. He at least gets a cool end. Um, I'll uh, light spoilers really quick since Emmett already knows. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Okay, so light spoilers for the game. Craven does have cancer, and he gets sick, and it's hinted that Venom latches on to people who are injured slash sick. So I'm like, oh, so it's gonna be Craven at first, maybe, and then maybe it'll be Harry later. So, no, no, that's never that's never hinted at or never or sorry, it's well, hinted at but never done. I don't know so why they even hinted at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, he probably saw the promise of a twist. Yeah, exactly. yeah, and and then exactly. and but they and then they also acted like we didn't know who Venom was. So I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So it's gonna be Craven at some point. He's gonna grab that's the symbiote. Opinion. He yeah. that's gonna maybe make it crazy, and then maybe Harry gets yep. it, and maybe he. But no, no. I thought it might have been My Miles or something. Uh, no, nothing. I won't spoil mm -hmm. another twist that happens later on, but there's a twist. Mm. <laughs> oh my God. It, it, it's, it's frustrating because it's a twist that gets resolved in about five minutes, and that is some of the worst writing you can oh do my God. In, uh, in anything, is give your character a problem and have them fix it just like that. There, there was never any problem. No one was ever in any danger. Everything was fine. No, let's just say the game mm. shows you a problem. You don't even fix it. it yeah. I, yeah. Kind, you, it, 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 kind it, just of resolves. It. it just resolves. You kind of fix. That's not important. But mm. anyways, it, uh -huh. the, a specific thing that happens, it was very frustrating. It was another thing where I was like, oh, wow, I thought that was leading somewhere. And it just it just stops. I will say mm. the ending of the game is very cool. Except mm -hmm. one specific part. Go listen to the spoiler cast for Spider Man Two. That both me and Alex, we I, were on a I, I audibly laughed when something happens at the end. I think you will too, Evan. I don't oh, know. God. I, I audibly laughed. Like, why is this happening? Anyways, <laughs> I've ranted enough. Spider Man Two, fantastic game. Yeah. Just left a lot to be desired from my point of view. Mm -hmm. Very quick though, has one of the best openings in the entire year. Like if I had to vote for like fucking if I had to vote for best opening, it's that. I mean, wow. They really Maybe missed God of War three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my god, yeah. That is a great uh, way of bringing that up because I remember that was my first kind of wow game. But uh the way they opened that Sandman fight and, and you being I mean, and really them just flexing PlayStation 5, just throwing it and, oh, yeah. and everything just loading as he's as Miles is like cradling backward. Oh, so, so good. There's so many good things, but there's a lot of things that sour taste in my mouth. Mm -hmm. And again, quality of the year. Got to remind, remind everyone. Back of your head, quality of the year. Like, this is a great year. This is not to say it's a bad game. Just had a couple more negatives than others. Yeah. Alex, I talked to quite a bit here. Anything you want to bring up? Because this is your number seven. We'll be using the spot, of course. As yeah, no, I, I mean, I agree with everything you said. I mean, like, I, I love the game. I love doing everything in the game. The cav like I said, the... I hated that they try. They make me second guess myself on, like I said, who Venom was, because there was a twist that could have been done. But it's like, oh, it's like, oh, me, me and Elijah were both were like, it's this person. No, it's this person. But like, yeah. no, because yeah. you know, we were trying to figure out, you know, it's 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 this person because you know their their physique or they, you know, maybe it's this one, maybe it's this. And I'm like, and it, it just made me say, I was like, I should have just stick with the original. And they just, they just, they just kept it safe, like you said. They yeah. just, it was just, just a safe. little too safe, which is fine. Like, it's safe for I, a sequel, and you know, I know a lot of people didn't uh, go into the Insomniac leaks, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it definitely, you look at it and you're like, I mean, I get it, but like, I mean, come I mean, on. It's, it's <laughs> how I felt between God of War 2018 to God of, War, God of War Ragnarok, there was a specific moment in the game where I was missing in the sequel, where I was like, I, I need that. A specific moment where the, it hits me right here in spider-man one you get a moment you're like oof it's oh. very it's very heart, heart it's heartfelt you don't get it here 
And you yeah. think you do. You think you're about to. And then you don't. Yeah. And then they're like, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> and then we'll just go keep it safe. We'll keep it safe. And you you thought so we were going to be bold. It's just, Stop. So it's just a little like disappointing. I was like, come on, take the risk. Like, like, what you like in my head, I'm like, oh, they're not going to do it because they're, they're going to have people upset. Do it, man. Like, that, take risks. Yeah. Hmm. But other than that, I mean, I do love the game. Like, like you said earlier, the power of the PS5 is incredible. Like, that Sandman scene with everything loading oh, in. Oh, so the, cool. the, the, the fast travel thing where you could just pop in and out between the two characters and you just fly. That is mesmerizing. I glided so much. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the God. gliding is oh. amazing. Web yeah, wings I, are incredible. I, the web wings are so much. I like the. It took me a couple of tries. There's a trophy to get from the bottom left to the top right of the map without yeah. like stopping, and I got it. And I was just like, it felt so like uh, uh, what's the word? Like you, you once you did it, you're like, yes, thank rewarding, God. Rewarding, man. Yeah, rewarding. Thank you. It's just like even though it didn't really give you anything it, other than the trophy, it's just like you did it. You're like, oh, that that was great. And Evan, anything just, you want to say about Spider-Man 2? I know you're in uh, the midst, but... Yeah. I mean, you've played most of it, so... You... Yeah, yeah. I feel like... I mean, before I got to the sequence that I've hinted towards, um, they said I was at like 66% of the main story. Mm, yeah, so you're nearly probably like 80 or 90. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, yeah, uh, as far as my thoughts on it, you'll hear more thoughts about it later on um, in this list, of course. Uh, but look, Spider-Man 2... Spider-Man Miles Morales is top five, one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, so by yes. default, mm -hmm. by default, Spider-Man 2 was going to be a game I like a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about how much I do or don't like it in a little bit here, but okay. it is a game that I very much so enjoy. Sounds good. Let's go to you, Emmett, for number seven. No, I'm sorry. Wait. You've done eight? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. that... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we that started seven. seven. Yeah, yeah. So I technically started seven, so now it's eight. Yeah, so now yeah. Emmett, number seven. Number seven, from Spider-Man on to something absolutely completely different, not even this year. Um, <laughs> this, this is a little indie game that I think, you know, this is from a developer known for one franchise that just decides to be a different genre every other game. Um, but they said, hey, you know what? Fuck that. Let's just make a different genre and not have it be in that franchise. Let's make a completely new IP. Let's get a, a Rooster Teeth person to be a voice. <laughs> and let's go ahead and put it on out. I liked it. It's very good. It was on Game Pass. I beat it right before I took a vacation this year. And that was The Gunk. Um, oh, my God. I was trying to get oh, the whole been... time. I was like, what the <laughs> hell is this game? I kept looking at that game, and I almost jumped into it like four times. I just I, I kept looking at it, and I had it downloaded. I just didn't know if I should commit. And let me tell you, you should commit. Um, I want to say, uh, well, it's changed now, but last last month in December, it was on the Humble Monthly Choice. Uh, mm -hmm. So for 12 bucks, you could have got that and like Nobody Saves the World and a couple other games. So mm -hmm. great deal. But when it comes to the gunk, I like this game because it is the type of game that I talk about wanting more of. I want something short, sweet, to the point. Give me a good time in less than 10 hours. That's all I ask for you. And this game was like four, maybe. No, it was almost like literally 4.30 um four hours long it's very you know it kind of has that power washing simulator vibe where it's just sucking up a bunch of gunk as you walk through yep. has a nice little cute story it, it it's one of those stories where it's all it gives fantastical me revenant vibes it gives you revenant vibes yeah mm, i, I wouldn't why maybe just the, the, maybe just the, the 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 worlds itself the way it looks i don't know it, it's similar to the remnant or the remnant it's similar to remnant in that it's very colorful but subdued with darkness sometimes okay where remnant has pops of color in mm. the midst of the darkness where this game it is aggressively colorful but the the gunk is literally a corrupting force that takes I the see. color out of the world and you're slowly gotcha. removing it um so it, it's just really satisfying to just go around and suck things up it's kind of like an uncharted like where it's a lot of there's not much platforming but it is a lot of like yellow colored ledges that you're climbing up on <laughs> uh, that type of thing. But, game you know, it's, it is it is very game design and it's very <laughs> like, oh, you go around and you can scan different wildlife and there's like you get upgrades based off of the things you scan. It's one of those games where you're not getting headshots. It's not about aggression. It's not about the craziest, most action packed combat, but it is fun. It is chill. It is like one degree higher than something like a little knot 
or something where it's just about slowly exploring and whatnot it is tickling that collectathon center of your brain without it being much friction in the gameplay and i played it right at the right time it was something that i actually played most of it on my steam deck through the little game pass app um it's just a fun little time I, something i recommend to anybody if it's still if you can get it on game pass i think it's still on there definitely try it out there if not I think it's worth the, I think it's like $15. That's it's definitely worth that asking price. $24.99 so. on Steam right now. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely worth that. So give it a shot. It's a great game. Yeah, uh, reviews, very positive like you are. Um, the Gunk is an action-adventure game in which you play as Ranny, a part of our a part of our duo of gritty space haulers. As they're struggling to bring in funds, they chance upon an untouched planet brimming with life. They came in search of valuable resources, and it looks like they hit the jackpot. It's pretty good little summary yeah. there. I, uh, this is intriguing. It's on Game Pass. Hell it yeah. is on Game Pass. Wow. Okay, yeah. I might touch yeah. this now. But, uh, I don't know, touch it. I might. Um, is it co-op? Nah, no, it's, it's so. strictly okay. single player. Okay. It's 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 one and done. But highly recommend it. And also, <laughs> it looks very cute and all. This is definitely like a like a Disney PG thirteen, which is to say, there's some like surprise a oh, surprising amount of like swearing and whatnot where you're thinking there's like a little Pixar like. But it's not too crazy. No one's saying, "Oh, you, you bitch made motherfucker." Not, no one's saying <laughs> shit. <like that. laughs> but it's 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 surprisingly mature for a game that looks like this, and I found that a little bit refreshing as well. It's like you know, adult adult stories can have aesthetics and art styles that look mm. like this too. So it, it's good in that way as well. The it looked like something I couldn't put quite my finger on because I don't play these games. I just know of them. They, these are uh, image and form games. These are the same people who developed. Uh, uh, Steam World Dig, all the Steam World oh, games, hmm. Steam World Heist, Steam World, you know, all, all the Steam World games. So yeah. very, uh, very Steam company there with them, because uh, I know a lot of people love those games. Very much going to be trying this game out. This looks very cool. And when For you sure. said Power Watch Simulator, it very much looks like a very satisfying, mm-hmm. like like a yeah. vacuuming, and you know, you'll see the fruits of your labor. Um, the trailer had like a part where you cleaned and like grass started growing and stuff. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. you that clean a like... chunk out. You clean a chunk of the world from the gunk and like everything starts growing again. And oh, yeah, blow, like flowers and stuff start growing. It's really good. Really. Yeah, fun. that's my stuff right there. I want that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll be trying this. Very soon. quick oh, thing, because yeah. uh, that reminded me, it kind of if going back to Avatar, there's areas in the game where it's kind of polluted and it's all grayed out dead. And once you get rid of that, like an outpost in Far Cry, everything comes back to life. Wildlife comes back. Everything's green. Mm. So it made me remind, it reminded me of that. Oh yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. What a great mechanic. Every game should have that. Oh Let yeah. Let me heal yeah. the world with a gun. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> just, just feeling like you did something right. I'm going to heal the world exactly. with the blood of my enemies. <laughs> Number Venom seven. Be like. Venom be like. <laughs> <laughs> Let's heal the world. Uh, number seven, Final Fantasy 16. I had a blast mm. with this game. Huh. Again, six, seven, eight. Constant influx for me. It's so hard to mm. really pinpoint these games down. Um, it's one of those any given Sunday is what they say, say it in football. And, and, and really any given Sunday, the, these three would ch- change up. But I feel like Final Fantasy 16, a very safe spot in this number seven list. I it took me longer to fall in love with it than many other people did. I remember lots and lots of people loving the combat and all these things, and it very much took me a while. Um, and t- um, not to spoil too much of the game, but um, until I got about like the third uh, icon is before like I really felt like like I could really do something with combat. Um, and, and before that, it just felt like I was just using the same two abilities over and over again. Whereas until you really get to flex your muscles and really try out mm-hmm. a bunch of different things, it really does feel like you are playing a great, great, great action combat game. And I know it had like the small, small C controversy of like, it's still a Final Fantasy game. And that's just people who don't understand what Final Fantasy is. If you don't think it's a Final Fantasy game, it very much is. Uh, but uh, mm-hmm. I had a blast. I loved the story. Although I don't love where we ended on the narrative, I think they did very well in uh, uh, specifically with the writing and the dialogue of the two main characters um, with Clive and, of course, his brother. And there's a lot I love about the game. A lot I love about the game. I do hate that we very, very quickly, almost out of nowhere, made it made, made it a Final Fantasy game in terms of story very much, where it's... Oh no, we have to kill God. Like it's happened again. We got to do it. So like we go and uh, and try and kill God as we do in every Final Fantasy. And I, we had a very very intriguing through line of this this um 
country is fighting this country and 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 this is why this is happening in here and i really did get very deep into the lore and it does kind of feel like it ends a little too fast you just kind of jump into the the high fantasy very quickly in like in that mm-hmm. world versus staying with that that uh human very human conflict. conflict yeah but i love the game i love where i eventually ended up uh and again quality of the year i wish it was a little higher because it does deserve that i mean honestly the soundtrack alone uh it almost justifies its number um seven spot so it should be Mm -hmm. just a little bit higher but again other other games uh just just enough to push it down a little bit but i loved my time with final fantasy 16 loved the uh dialogue i loved ben Starr's um clive (laughs) rossfield i loved uh so 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 much of this game just little little took a little long for me to get in it and that's why it's a little lower than it i think most people's list Mm -hmm. respect respect it's Uh, it's a little higher on my list Uh, we'll get to it once when i do it but i'll let i'll say this it is my favorite final fantasy Mm, yeah i i it's not even in my top three but i loved the game yeah it's just a, that's the only one that I from all the ones that I've played. I mean, I played a good handful of them, but this is this one's and other than like 10. And I mean, I'm getting into seven. I, like maybe because I never played the original. I've been playing the, the remake and I'm getting comfortable with like knowing everybody. But like character wise, this is this one I've connected to the most. Hmm. I'll say okay. for me, as someone who does not play Final Fantasy at all, if I was to make a tier list out of where I think this game would be, it would probably be number one out of all the Final Fantasy games I've played. Mm-hmm. If I played it, um, I think it would absolutely outrank both uh, this. What is it? The City of Final Fantasy and Street oh. Paradise. It's oh, going to be better than both of those. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the City is a wild game. I mean, that that's like Smash Brothers, but with Final Fantasy characters. But um, hey, when I had a PSP, that's all I had. Hey, like five hours. for some reason, and, everyone had that with the PSP. I don't know how mm-hmm. we all had that one game, but we did. It was bundled. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, <laughs> and Strange Parents isn't too, isn't bad. Yeah, I'm actually getting back into it. It's on PlayStation mm-hmm. Plus now. So it's like, yep. oh, I don't have to put the disc in? Bet. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Um, I'm going to actually steer us with this number six because it's not very exciting because it was already brought up. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get it out the way. Um, Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. Um, I fell in love with it much more than I think a lot of other people did, although I do think a lot of people loved it. I, I really did love the narrative. I loved it so much that I, the moment I finished it, I was like, all right, well, I need to know how it ends with the other ending. And then I immediately revert my save, played that as well. And and they really they really do make you feel like you're making a choice. And they stick to it. And I do commend Cyberpunk. That is one thing that they do really well in their narratives, was when you make a choice, you make that choice. There is no, like, half step. There is no uh, uh, feel-good moment, right? It's Cyberpunk. Like, it, it's the, the actual nature of it is that it is a bit of a downer. And... They make no excuses here with how uh, much of a downer it is in either way, right? Like either outcome you're doing, it's gonna you're gonna be like, oh wow, that I hated that I had to do X thing, and yeah, there I do have dies or you die, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much like that. You could sum the game up pretty well that way, but I loved the combat again. Alex brought it up earlier. Cyberpunk 2.0 was a great addition to the game. It very much simplified isn't probably the word I'd use, but it streamlined probably a lot of things about the game that made that that made it a bit of a slouch to overcome at first. And now you're much easier to know, like, all right, I want this skill. I OK, so I need this much. Th- OK, so boop, 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 you know, and you level it up as you level up and you know where to put your points. You always the difference between this and and their original skill list is like i wouldn't care too much when i leveled up in this moment i get a skill point i'm immediately in my things like okay i remember i know i wanted that and this and that and then i already have my skill points like i've already spent 10 skill points and and thinking ahead of this build and it really does feel like you're making a v like you're making a v that's good at net running or good at mantis blades or is just a shooter or you know what just punches people it just has the gorilla fist <laughs> and he just punches people in the face that's all i want you know like and it it, it feels great and each v is gonna feel a little different because there's all these little upgrades you can give them along the way the com I, the combat is what i really did fall in love with because i actually replayed the game a little bit after that for achievement cleanup i was just grabbing random achievements i love my achievements 
and that uh, got me another uh, got me into another playthrough that I started and I was doing different endings and et cetera, et cetera, doing all these different things. I cleared the maps out between two playthroughs to get those achievements. So I was doing every gig and every side mission in that area, uh, which is, uh, you know, Herculean task on itself. And then playing the game and all this to get the specific endings to get those achievements and all that at a blast. I loved my time with the game. A couple small little nitpicks throughout, but in reality, I had a blast. I love and commend CG Project Red that they stuck with this, right? Let's not forget they lost just about everything when they released this game, right? They didn't win. Uh, they had a mass refund scandal. Uh, their stock price, I mean, cratered. cratered. They lost giant sums of money. What did they do? They didn't do what Bioware did with Mass Effect Andromeda or Anthem. They sat there and worked on the game. And that's what they did. And they and they fixed the game. I mean, I really they really did. Now, you can't change the past. They did screw you. If you never go back to Cyberpunk or buy a CG Project Red game ever again, I don't really blame you. Uh, they really did uh, try to pull the wool over people's eyes with that release. But at the very least, they no man's guide it. They, they stuck with it. They didn't change their name. They didn't make a new studio. They didn't they didn't. Uh, creator of this game and be like, we're just going to make a new one. Thanks for the 60 bucks. And they moved on. They made sure your value was held. They didn't make you pay for anything else other than this expansion. They they made you pay for this. But aside from that, you didn't have to pay for any other updates or anything like that. Everything else is free. So I commend them. I think they did a good job. I think people should look forward or at, at least look to them as an example of how to fix a completely foobar situation like they were they everything they did quite literally everything wrong when they released cyberpunk 27 but at least they fixed it even though in the first place it probably shouldn't have happened to begin with but it did so i respect them. looks I respect like for that. yeah it looks like everyone is giving me the nod so let's go to let's see and it, we're on six right yes mm -hmm. we're on six okay Perfect. Um, here's a game that I, for a few years at least, have been saying, oh, yeah, this is a disappointment. You know, I got a, like an hour or two in and I was like, all right, I'm not playing this. I'm not in the mood for it. It's just not exactly what I wanted. But then I picked it up on Steam Deck and I was singing a different tune. I still That's think this. Yeah, that Steam Deck, that Steam Deck effect is that, on that, something. Yeah, um, I want I want to keep saying uh, I'm reminded of when you posted your play stats um yeah i i did a tweet and, thread of like yeah my um, playstation review nintendo xbox and uh, steam, steam like murdered everything. murdered yeah. like cleaned up th this year last year yeah, steam steam deck was the mpp uh this past year um but this is a game that i picked up because it was so easily accessible on steam deck and i didn't think i'd ever pick it back up but once i did i realized oh wait the thing that this game like the the headline feature of this game is still done very, very well. In fact, I think this does that feature better than the last two games or technically three games, uh, even if I still don't like the story much at all. And that game is Borderlands 3. Oh, my God. I was like on the edge of my seat. I love making people anticipate. It's great. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Borderlands 3. Uh, I finally beat it this year. Uh, once again, say thanks to the Steam Deck effect. And the gunplay in Borderlands 3 is fucking phenomenal. Oh, um, I mean, that makes me so happy. I remember you were very disappointed when this game came out. Uh yeah. I remember we talked a little bit about this, uh, and you were just not into it. I remember wow. Uh, and and it's funny that uh, this this far away you got back into it. Yeah, I think what I'm realizing, and I think Borderlands helped me start me on this track, but I've been thinking about it a lot more recently. Uh, expectations can really fuck something up for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. When when you're just expecting something to be different or just not to be what existed, that's going to very heavily color what's in front of you. Oh, yeah, Spider-Man 2. Borderlands, <laughs> yeah, well, Spider-Man 2 is one. Uh, Borderlands 3 is... Of, is still ultimately a refinement of what it's already been doing. Mm -hmm. It does not yeah. make any big revolutions in its formula at all. But at the end of the day, I still like that gunplay. That gunplay, I, I have been on record saying I think Borderlands 1 has the best gameplay. Uh, I think Borderlands 2 kind of went in a negative direction. Borderlands 3 just jet engines right past Borderlands 1 as far as the gameplay is concerned. 
every gun feels good to shoot. Yep. Every single gun feels good to shoot. That's and something that is, I remember about the game. Mm -hmm. yeah it's insane and you know that's one thing and then on top of that the movement's all, way better you got slides you got ground pounds you got a lot of stuff uh it's just a lot of variety on that standpoint the skills the upgrade trees so many ways to be rewarded in this game and now your money actually has a place to go once you buy all the guns you need and then you just be left with like billions of dollars at the end of most borderlands playthroughs now it's like all right spend that in the in the S sdk you can upgrade backpack slots ammo slots just really great you know, gameplay systems in this game. I do not give a shit about the story. Oh, some yeah. Parts, yeah. So, some parts were good. Some parts were interesting. I'll say that. Some parts were interesting. And you can tell there's parts where you're supposed to be like, oh. And I, I remember playing the game be like, that's yeah, cool. Can I shoot stuff yet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of like, all right, I'm just listening to a lot of dialogue right now, or I'm yep. walking through this big empty space while you're giving me exposition. Like, yep. A lot, a lot of moments like that and didn't love that even the ending I, I i was like all right they have this big i don't want to say the word actually it's been a couple of years i'm not gonna fully it. spoil it That's there fine. is a sacrifice that happens at the end of the game yeah and i'm just like that didn't feel earned and not also, at I all don't, yeah and also <laughs> i don't feel enough of a connection to this person for that sacrifice. Uh, to i didn't give two shits i remember Absolutely. i know exactly i was like all right. I, I was like, come on. I don't, I don't care. I don't yeah, care. Like, I know you want me to. I just simply don't. And and it's one thing because I remember Borderlands 2 was kind of known for its, oh, my God, I can't believe this person died moments. But Borderlands 3 tries to do that again. And it just feels like, all right, I feel like you're just doing this because that's the franchise staple. Mm -hmm. That's the expectation now. Um, rather than, oh, it's a compelling story. Um, so that's why it's only number six. But God, the gameplay in Borderlands 3 might be some of the best gameplay experience all year. Uh, it is immensely satisfying. 60 frames per second on Steam Deck once again. It is a whole lot of fun. I actually, the reason I played it on Steam, uh, I had got it on sale on Steam. I think it was a pricing error. I think I got everything for like $17. And that's all the DLC with the base game um and then turns out that was a price error and it went back up to like what i think it was like 20 30 it, it was it, it wait no it wasn't even 17 it was like 12 that's what um, i don't know that's what immortals it was, yeah. it was a price fuck up. Yeah. exactly so shout out to that um so that's the reason why i picked it up and got back into it so shout out to that price error for reintroducing me to a game that mm -hmm. turns out i do love a lot so yeah really good did you ever try tiny tina's uh, that you mean the middle game right before Borderlands Three? Yeah, well, it came out oh. after. The, yeah, the it came out one, after. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't played it yet. I also have it on Steam. I want to play it on Steam Deck. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to it. But gotcha. it's, we it's played one for of those... a bit, but we at the, mm -hmm. I, I think we fell off of it. Yeah, it, I think I do. I will get around to it at some point. But it's that thing where I just beat Borderlands Three to base game, and I was like, mm -hmm. all right, let's get into the DLC. And then I saw down the well of like, oh, there's no yeah. bottom to the well. You know, <laughs> if I yeah. keep going. It's 47 playthroughs. It's, yeah. You know, they're eating you seven hours of DLC. Yes. Yeah, like, uh, let me stop here. So yeah. uh, once I get through all of that at one point, I think I'll feel enough umbrage to go on to, you know, the other Borderlands games. But, mm. you know, I'm content where I am, but I do want to try it out one day. Mm. I've completely lost the plot. We're on six. Yes, we are on six. Yes, indeed. Alex, number six. Which is funny enough, uh, you said Umbridge. Let's uh, let's let's bring it into that <laughs> world. Yeah. Uh, that um, really good. Hogwarts Legacy is oh. number six. OK. Yeah, I, uh, I enjoyed the game I, uh, I'm a, a lot more than you guys, I, I, I assume. I mean, um, I played it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my line. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, no, Hogwarts Legacy. I just enjoy. I I, I enjoyed a lot. Um, just being uh, being in that. Uh, like my wife and I are really big Harry. Um, that you know Harry Potter fans. Like in that being in that world, uh, making your own character and you know getting housed, uh, being able to explore the uh, the castle, the world. Everything was just uh, like I we we uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Uh, the music was just makes you like feel like you're like there. Um, I. I, I it felt new it, it also felt new because you know it's like set in a different time so like at first of course my mind is like oh i'm gonna get to see familiar faces but 
you don't because it's not set in the same time period. Yeah. But uh, so it, it so it, do, it does feel a little fresh. But like um, like the spells were cool. The go- the combat was I when I first saw this game, I was like, how are they gonna make this combat work? Uh, but like being able to like you know flip your wand and do all the all the spells and stuff actually feels pretty good. Um, in my opinion, at least. Um, I read some people that were like, oh, this is terrible, and I was like, it's not bad. Um, the 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 creatures are really are really like um. Uh, the that you see and stuff like that. I was like, oh, that's cool. What else is there? Like you know, like they like I like to explore and seeing what other creatures I could find. Um, a lot of things that they advertised was like the room of requirement where you you were able to like do things with the creatures, things like that, be able to feed them, take care of them. I didn't really get into that. It was just uh, wasn't it wasn't my my thing to do. Um, my wife said that was the only thing she wants to do in that game is that she, that's like that's her thing, so, but yep. she hasn't gotten there yet. But like she was like, that's all I want to worry about. Um, I couldn't get into it. I just like literally got on my broom and just took off and started just flying everywhere. Like literally it's, you can literally just like literally cast your broom you fight, and you just take off. And it's like, it's, it's surprisingly how quick that was. Um, and uh, the story wasn't bad. Like I, there was some parts where I'm just, um, I, I didn't, couldn't really get to uh, like, uh, I was like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like the decisions that they made. And it was kind of like uh, a little messy, but Overall, like so, like the some of the characters I did get, I did get uh close to, and I like towards the end, it's just like I, I I was I was satisfied towards the end. Like I was just like, oh, this this was really this was really fun. Like uh, I actually thought about doing another gameplay, but in a different house because you don't get to see the other common room. So for example, I'm Hufflepuff, and I only saw that common room. You don't get to see anybody else's common room, so I want to do like a new, a, a new uh, playthrough with a different house, so I can see their common rooms and see what their stuff is about and stuff like that, and maybe play the character a little differently. So if I was Slytherin, make him a little more evil or something. But overall, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I had the the outfits and everything that you could put on, and you you, you can look crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's definitely yeah. something you can do in that game. I, I I think the name of the game almost for all was Legacy was atmosphere. That is something they kind of nail. Yeah, they nail the atmosphere and they nail the actual feeling, right? And that's mm-hmm. something with even a game like Avatar could do too, where it's like the mm-hmm. more you like the the product, that world, and the stuff. more you're going to enjoy the game, right? And the, mm-hmm. the, you're going to be able to attach love to it like a lot easier too, because yeah, for sure, of just the nature of one, that, like they nail the song which is crazy. That's probably, mm-hmm. I think the best thing probably about Harry Potter, I think to most people is the songs. That's probably not what they think of, but once the music yeah, yeah. plays from Harry the Potter, music, that's, yeah. that's the one thing that probably attaches. Well, music is really the key for everything. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the one thing that really brings it together. And they were able to, 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 to weave that into the game. So expertly. Get that magic in there. Yeah. They sprinkled fairy dust and all these things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But good, good for them. I mean, like Emmett said, this was really, I mean, it wasn't their first, but it really does feel like their first time making anything close to this. And one, they were able to nail it in the environment that they had. And two, they were able to uh, release a game that was as good as it is. is pretty impressive because Mm -hmm. um, I'll say it again. They were the Disney Infinity people. I mean, you you look at Disney Infinity and this and you're like, that's the same people. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, no, for, and, good yeah, for them. No, that's what I was. Yeah, that's why I was like, I was pretty like, uh, I was like, hey, good for them. They are able to make from Disney Infinity to this. And so I was like, you said earlier, I was kind of like, it was like kind of like they didn't really deserve the criticism it got just because they had like it's it's from like for example the J.K. Rowling thing. Certain people didn't play it because of that specific thing. I was like, you know, even though she had nothing to do with the game, um. Like people didn't give it a chance, which is kind of like unfair to them. But either way, yeah, I, really I think we liked, I th- liked it. I think we've cemented that it is yeah. unfair what happened. But again, I don't blame anyone for not playing it. I just blame yeah, you yeah. if you try to you like, want. cast yeah. dispersions on others. But I think we've talked this game to death. I, I remember when Emmett was like, "Yeah, we're uh, you know, let's see if we're still talking about this game in three years. I'm a fucking hang myself if we are. I pray that we never talk about this ever again. <laughs> Maybe we'll I'm talk about a sequel. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. 
Anyways, yes, uh, Hogwarts Legacy, like very, very fun game. Um, number six, I already did. So we're on number five. Am I correct? Mm. Did I'm, you already do your number six? Yes, it was Cyberpunk. I started us off because okay. uh, yes, it was uh, yep. already said. Uh, I'm going to start us with number five because there's another one where it was already said. And I feel like we're already moved on from it. So I'll be the quicker one. Um, okay. Armor Core six. Uh, I loved this mm. game. I loved this yeah. game. This is this is actually a funny story where. I originally started it, played the first, I want to say, two to three missions, completely noped out. I think Destiny 2 stuff was happening, and I was, like, doing something for that or, or prepping for, like, the day one raid or something, and that had took most of my time, and that's mm -hmm. why I didn't play it, I believe is the reason, <clears throat> and I completely noped out of it and, and didn't really have time to devote to it. And then upon second viewing and really digging deep and finally having the time is like when everything was done, I was like, OK, well, you know, let's give this the college try. Right. I haven't really sat down and played it. So let's try. And boy, was it amazing. I'm so glad I went back to it. I love this game. This game is great. I mean, the gameplay solid. It really does feel like you are in a mech and it feels like you have complete and utter control of everything you do. If you dodge, you're dodging. If you're moving right, you're moving right. You have completely different builds. You want to be a tank, like Alex said, and, and have a bunch of health, have triple, quadruple the amount of health of some other uh, armor cores. You definitely can't mm -hmm. you know, have that much health, but you see what I'm doing with this. Uh, you want to uh, be super fast, which is my thing. I love being the quick, lightweight builds. I don't like a lot of stuff on me, right? So I'm a glass cannon. I do a lot of damage, and I'm really fast, but you hit me a couple times, I'm done. And I loved that giant dichotomy. And then there's, of course, the middle area where you have a little armor or or not too much. You know, you could be anywhere in between. And I had a blast. And also there's different legs that you can, like, use to hover. Or there's a missile mm -hmm. bolt where you're, like, you're this little boat guy that flies around. I mean, there's so many little crazy mumbo-jumbo things. And I didn't even get into the weapons where there's assault rifles, there's pistols, there's lasers, there's rocket launchers, blah, 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 blah. I can keep going. The gameplay was amazing. The story, albeit obtuse, just like any From Software game, it it is, you have to pay attention. I know that turns people off, but you do. Yeah. But if you From do... Soft games have story, like LaCroix has flavor. <laughs> Pretty much, where, like, you really have to find it. This is much mm -hmm. more in your face, but it's still obtuse because you do have to you have to remember what did this character say when this happened? And then you have to rem remember that that's that's them for the game. Then you have to remember what happened in this. You know, there's a lot of things and there are things you can find that you can read that tells you more about uh, the story. And I understand that's not appealing. Everyone it was very appealing to me. I did love that. I love having to really dig deep and find these little nuances of all these characters um rusty i know everyone's favorite is also my favorite i love that guy mm -hmm. i love his um uh i love his voice actor like the way he acts throughout that whole game is very fun he's like mm -hmm. your kind of partner in crime if you do a certain ending kind of sort of um and it's it's so good it had three different endings it's very rare i do that it doesn't really feel like you're playing the game three times because there's a lot of different missions throughout and i did them all three times had one of the most challenging experiences i've had ever in games with the ending of the the ending of the game on the third playthrough the final boss of that playthrough is the hardest boss i have ever beaten in a video game and it was so rewarding when I finally beat him. I, it really did feel great because there's not a lot of videos online because, you know, not a lot of people do it. So, like, less mm -hmm. people made videos about it. And it really does feel like like you make an accomplishment when you get to that guy and beat him. It felt great. It mm. really did. And I, I loved my time throughout. Loved unlocking all the things. Loved getting new um, equipment. Loved the arena, which is, like, just a 1v1 against an AI. And you get, like... uh you kind of get like new parts if you beat the person and then more of that arena unlocks on the second playthrough and on the third playthrough there's even more like it's just it just keeps compounding where little things are different every playthrough and keeps it fresh and new and i enjoyed this game so much i really loved it it is on paper i probably shouldn't have i'm not the biggest action guy i love a good devil may cry but i'm not very good at them uh, and this is action-y to the actionist action. Like, you are jumping around in a 3D environment. You are trying to be quick. You are dishing, dodging, zigzagging. You're everywhere if you are doing the builds I'm doing in it. And I am. And 
I liked being lightweight and fast, and this is the game that is doing it. It had the the uh, what is it the 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 FromSoft kind of flair of of combat, and it's and it's there, and I loved it. And I really hope people try it out because I I really think that first playthrough is fine. It's subsequent playthroughs that you really kind of feel the difficulty, but I hope people give it a shot. It does look like actually a good bit of people played this game uh, because he had everyone freaking out about the first boss of the game. Uh, gave everyone kind of a wall up there, but I'm done spewing about the game. Um, let's move on. Unless someone else has uh, anything to say about Armor Core 6, but we should probably move on to... Yep. Okay. So let's go to Emmett for number five. All right. Number five. Uh, I did not play Armor Core, unfortunately, but number five is a game that we talked that length about twice, it seems. Actually, not it seems. Definitely twice. Um, <laughs> is a game that, you know... It's a great game. It's on this list for a reason, but I'm going to make a comparison here to another property within the same general sphere of this. Okay. Uh, when Wakanda Forever came out, and I was like, oh man, everyone's excited about Wakanda Forever. I wasn't really excited about it because I was like, all right, how are they going to do this? And there's a lot of problems I have with Wakanda Forever, but the thing that's relevant here, Disney made a awards baity movie with black panther one on accident <laughs> yeah they and definitely then, did that yeah yeah and then the second one they were like oh shit we can get oscar talk about this <laughs> well, then we definitely are gonna lean into that shit now and that's what the vibe of spider-man 2 is to me <laughs> okay okay that's where we're going yeah where i love i'm having a really good time with spider-man 2 of course i'm not done with it yet i'm I, i'm sensing i'm pretty close yeah. Um, but Spider-Man 2 is great, and I'm probably still going to love it. It's probably still going to be one of my favorite Insomniac games of all time. Um, it will ultimately be one of my favorite games of the year, you know, as it already is on this list. But I can't help but feel like Insomniac put out the first Spider-Man, and it was the first time that people were looking at Insomniac like, oh, shit, Insomniac's got the juice, because they weren't in the trenches with Ratchet and Clank all PS3 generation like I was. Yeah. They weren't in the trenches for Sunset Overdrive. You know, now they're just Shame paying on attention. Them. Exactly. Well, I, I won't say shame on them because I understand there's other games coming out and Insomniac, yeah. they are still in some ways making the same or similar games to what they were making in the PS2 generation. So I understand why Pretty folks much. write them off. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people looked at them during this first Spider-Man and said, oh, shit, something special here. So Insomniac said, all right, well, we're going to that first one. We were making a game just because it's cool and we like it, blah, blah, blah. The second one, we got to blow people the fuck away. And I think that is what informs the not only the oh we gotta twist it but not really. Yeah. It it also informs the all right we're behind the back and we're talking to we're talking to Mary Jane about <laughs> oh this bowl of fruit I gotta throw out oh like, yeah <laughs> all, all these little like super grounded moments that are great in any game and honestly it's a good idea for a Spider Man story but when I play an Insomniac game I'm looking to just get not necessarily even get into the action, but get into the gameplay. Yeah. I am looking for gameplay, gameplay, gameplay all the time, every time without a doubt. And them trying to take their time and tell this story in this second game. It's number one, you're not the last of us. I'm not looking for Oscar level cinematic storytelling yeah. from a Marvel game, period. Like, that's just not what I'm looking for. So when you try to force yourself into a lane, I have a little bit of issue with it. And also, you know, you, you want to have your cake and eat it, too. You want to be the serious story with, like, deep characters and deep conflicts and blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, there you're hitting quick time event buttons to lift people off of cars. Like, you're, you're, you're having a video game as video game, but you're also trying to be, like, prestige about it. It's it's a conflict that I see throughout all of Spider Man Two, and I'm gonna keep playing it. And I am having a blast. The traversal is great. Yes. The combat is great. Yes. You know the the new abilities you get is great. The new costumes are fucking oh, incredible. They're so oh, good. The That's one thing we didn't mention. Yeah, is the costume. yeah yeah yeah. I, again, I was so negative on it, and I don't mean to come across that way. I was just explaining I mean, why we, it was I number mean, eight. We platinum the game, so yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Clearly, I like the game. It's just. It. There were yes, it's a great platinum too, and oh, they did sure. so 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 much. And that's literally the exact feedback I have from Spider Man One. Curate the game, D don't put everything in there. 
Le- mm-hmm. Something can be left on the cutting room floor. In Spider-Man 1, it really does feel like they were like, put as much as you can in the game, follow mm-hmm. pigeons, X, Y, Z, do this, do that. Oh, no, this pollution. We better fix it. We're Spider-Man. Like, and they Six really... Times of every fucking district. Yeah, and they really... Like, 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 a, like a delicate rose, like pruned away at all that in, in Miles Morales, even though it's not the same thing because it was a smaller experience. So let's not even talk about that. Let's just go straight to that to Spider-Man 2. And they really did prune away and, and, and make a very, very great 20 hour, which makes me sad that I didn't love it as much. <laughs> like, it, it yeah. sucks because um th- th- that makes me sad because because they did exactly what I wanted them to do and they did it brilliantly. It's just they messed up in in key areas that 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 made that would have made the game it for me. If can I say the can I say a spoiler for Spider Man one? You think that's cool for people, right? That was a while ago. As long as you're giving proper heads up, I think that's fine. We've all beaten it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. let let's do let's do a slight not even <laughs> slight. It's a major spoiler. Ah, my God, no, I can't because I mean, it hasn't you played. Can tiptoe. <laughs> Oh okay. yeah, if 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 it's relating to something at the end of Spider-Man 2, yeah, hold on. It's like it's like a it's like a it's like a spoiler for it not existing in 2, but I I won't say it. I won't say it. It's oh, funny. okay. I think I have an idea. There's a big okay. moment that happens at the end of Spider-Man 1. Okay, it seems thank like you. there's no big moment that exactly. happens at the end of 2. Yeah. Correct. You would you okay. would have heard from Understood. Twitter if if there was. And there wasn't. Yeah. And so, but and there isn't anything matching even if we're just talking about Doc Ock in 1. There just doesn't mm-hmm. really anything feels like it matches because yeah, you're able to write it away in a very convenient mm-hmm. way because of the nature of what something is in two. And it's like, OK, well, then there doesn't feel like there's any payoff with the character then. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I mean, I'll go further in, in Spider-Man one. I feel like there were moments that were meant to be emotional. There are moments where people told me they cried at certain scenes. I didn't have that with Spider-Man 1. I damn oh, I well did. had that with Miles Morales. Oh, there's, I did too. There's yeah. there's one big moment towards the end of Miles Morales where oh. I, I was like dripping. Like Is it, it the was, sky? I'll just say that. It, the sky when you're in the sky. Oh my fucking God. I was a dribbling mess. <laughs> exactly. But that was from a perspective of I care about these people and I see myself mm-hmm. in these people a lot more than I ever did with anything on Peter Parker's side. Yeah. yeah. So when crazy, when bigger deals are happening there, didn't feel it as much because it's harder to put myself in these shoes. Spider-Man 2, the story is just there's so many more elements going on in Spider-Man 2, just like in one. It's just harder to latch on to things. There's a couple small moments here and there. I just got to the grandpa scene. If you know what that side mission is, mm-hmm. that's really nice. Oh. And I, I had a moment. I had a moment where I was like, I'm going to call my girlfriend right now. <laughs> <laughs> Honey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So like, you know, there, there's great things in Spider-Man too, but it there just is. feels like you could tell, like we, we eventually the, budget for spider-man 2 got leaked it was like what 400 million dollars it was feels yeah yeah, Yeah. it feels like a 400 million dollar game when insomniac is a company that could make a game for 100 million and it's still game of the year yeah like it it seemed so bloated with too much it was trying to be too fancy when they could absolutely get away with making you know a game for half that price a quarter of that price and because they focus on gameplay so well it would have been up there with the greats. So um, that's the only thing I'm conflicted on about it. I'm going to keep playing it. I'll see the ending. I'll see if that changes my feelings on things. And also some of the side quest stuff, once you hit the end of those threads, yep. there's a lot of you know really cool twists and stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just slightly conflicted. I, I still feel positive overall, but there's a reason why it's like maybe like second or third in the tier list of Spider-Man games from Insomniac rather than the first. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I did love Miles as well. Um, a little more than two. Um. Anyways, um. Alex, anything about Spider-Man Two? We kind of, I feel like, talk it to death. Anything before we get to your five? No, I mean, no, I mean, there, there, like, there was a like, key moments in the game where I was like, "This is great," but like we said earlier, it just, it just, it, it just ended too safe in my, in, in my, in my, for my taste. Mm-hmm. Alex, what's your number five? Hmm. I wish I knew the choreography, but it's out. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Do the, the, yeah, the, the yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I don't know the choreography, but no, it's Alan Wake 2. Oh, I got to um, play that one. 
No, oh, the, wow. the game... you, still, you haven't played that either? Jeez. Dude, That's look, great. I fell in love, all right? <laughs> <laughs> we, get, we get it. We get it. Yeah, uh, we, yeah, yeah we um, do. We're all married here. Yes. Yeah, we're married, um, so we get it. No, yeah. Um, Tell me, Alan called? Wake 2. Yeah, no, I just... What I got from Alan Wake 2, it was not what I was expecting. Mm. I, I feel like I was expecting okay. more of Alan Wake 1 again. It's that, but add in a like time like a times four with thriller and more suspense. Like it was, it was so much better than what I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, it's both Partly thriller, like, both thriller, the suspensefulness, and thriller, the music video. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I love, I love, I loved it. I love it. Yeah, movie. yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad <laughs> you um you're liking it so much. Now, I I remember. If you remember both the audience and myself, we left mm. you on you kind of being soured on the game because of the ending. Yeah. How do you so, feel now, given some distance from the game? So I like me going back because at the time I was just like, ah, oh, I'm a little disappointed. And I, th- I think I was a little disappointed just because I wasn't gr- I wasn't really understanding the story and what it was trying to do. And once I thought, went back and thought about it more, I'm like, oh, okay. I started grasping it a little more. I it's supposed to be the tw- this twist. It's supposed to be this. I'm like, okay, I get it. Like leaving it the way where it was, it actually made me feel. I'm like, oh, like I was like me get not getting. Oh, am I frozen? There. You're good. You're good. <clears throat> me, uh, like I didn't. So like when I played it, the ending, I left it. As I didn't understand like what happened at the end, really. So I was a little disappointed because I was like, I'm not understanding what happened. But uh, to me, I, I like after I thought you thinking about it, I'm like, I think that's the point. It's like me and not trying to, f- f- you know, not knowing what's going, what's happening. And like, it's like a cliffhanger. Like, just like, oh, like thinking back, I'm like, oh, this happened here. What happened to this? Who happened to that? I'm like, oh, shit. I was like, can I? when's the next one coming out like i made me more excited the more i thought about it and then thinking back i was like oh the gameplay was great like the the characters that you that you like um uh interact with and stuff like that was really cool certain scenes i'll just say hotel uh it was su- it was frightening and it was super cool like everything was just uh, like I, I like even the the first like five ten minutes of the game i was just it, like already made me f- jump <laughs> uh but i did enjoy it like i like at first like oh, i just said i i left it soured because i wasn't understanding but after i th- went back and thought about it and thinking it was like okay this i like this is what it was i'm like oh, okay that was really good it's good to hear i i i the ending was quite you had to really be in the you had to really for the understand game. what like or know like even the like what was going on? Yeah, and when it hit me, I went, "Oh, yeah. you know." Yeah. We had very different response. Yeah, that to the ending to me because after I thought about it. Yeah, yeah, you had to really sit on it, and you do because of the nature of it. And also, that mm-hmm. specific line is said prior in the game, so you do kind of mm-hmm. have to pick it up too to be like, "Oh, so it's X Y Z, not Y X Z." Yeah, you know? like it's, see, it's, I think it's... I was more into other things. I was thinking of. I was like, I was more focused on other things that was happening versus what was actually was supposed to be focused on. And to be fair, they pretend you've played Alan Wake five minutes before turning on Alan Wake 2. So, I mean, they really yeah. give you no, they, they yeah. <laughs> like, you really I have to remember your recap time. And thinking there was going to be a recap, and I went in Alan Wake 2 with no recap since, like, what, 2010? Like, I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, I think it was 2011. I don't remember. It's somewhere around but, there, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I, I definitely feel you with that. And uh, I, you did echo something really quick, and I'm, I'm going to leave my full thoughts, but I do want to quickly add, I do enjoy that they did mess with the gameplay quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I liked the new take on it. It is pretty much Resident Evil, and I do love a good Resident Evil. It's just I'm not the biggest Resident Evil guy, but the way they were able to adapt it in this and they took, frankly, like the, the best parts of Resident Evil and left the bad parts of Resident Evil. I love that. And the way they were able to design the game around a specific thought process, I guess I'll say, without trying to spoil too much about the game, is so intriguing and something that is very 
newer to the space, we do see things like this with kind of like Hideo Kojima and these other kind of art tours that kind of see game design and cinematography in a different way. We kind of saw that with God of War as well. With them, they, they kind of approach both the design, the cinematography, and the actual nature of the narrative almost in one versus three that we've gone to or at least come to accustomed to in the way we play video games and i do respect that Alan Wake 2 was able to join that echelon of a god of war of a more hideo kojima like experience and was able to kind of instead of instead of three parallel lines twisting them and and having them work together uh instead of having this kind of this or that mentality they were like let's do both and they stuck to it and nailed it i don't know how they did uh but they did it oh boy i if there's one game from last year that i most want to play like right now immediately drop everything it is alan wake 2 everything i hear about the game and this is someone who loves control only played max pain 3 and dot alan wake was pretty mediocre like i yeah. I, I have like look alan wake's fine Playing it what <laughs> ten years later, like I did, it's it's. I don't blame. Close, I mean, I don't blame you. You are not the only one that thinks that. But I mean, people don't like Alan Wake one. I don't get it. I loved mm-hmm. it. Um, but people don't like the gameplay. I get. I guess I get it because yeah. it's like, oh, shine a light. It's okay, you can shoot him now. Like I get wait. it. But, yeah, it is. But I don't know. I like it. I don't know. I don't. Know. Look, I I understand what people <clears throat> see in it. I just didn't see it as clearly. Yeah. But <clears throat> even despite that, this is the conversation alone on Alan Wake 2 has made me want to boot up my copy of Quantum Break. It makes me want to <laughs> yeah. play Max Payne 1 and 2 mm-hmm. finally, mm-hmm. Um, which if I'm being realistic, I'll probably wait until the remake comes out. Um, it it yeah. makes me want to go through all of Remedy's catalog and finally experience all these things because, hey, I played enough of Remedy's catalog. I played fucking Crossfire X single player. <laughs> Oh Jesus! So you played the yeah. worst thing out of it. Oh my God! <laughs> Look, I they, I heard that they were making a shooter campaign, and I was like, Oh, uh, what what's Call of Duty through the lens of Remedy? Turns out, still not that great. No, um, not at all. But <laughs> in any case, I really want to play this game. It sounds like it's doing something unique. It sounds like it's doing something bold yes. and crazy in a way that I can't help but respect. And as soon as I play it, I know it's going to be like top twenty five games of all time for me. Yeah, I, I think you will. I really do feel like you will appreciate it. I do really think you should give this a shot. I think this is a game that Emmett should definitely have played before. Like, it, mm. I don't know. I, 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 think, I think since you're so intelligent with the way games are designed and the way they are r- written and experienced through it. Again, I don't remember. I'm talking about specifically experience through the view of a player. And the way they play with all three of those and kind of twist and turn and the way they, they act upon them and the way that you're one of them, but not, but sometimes you're in the narrative, you know, it's, it's, there's mm. so much to, to really go mm. on. So I it's, very it's much giving hope Nier Automata. I'm excited. Oh, it's giving near Automata. It's giving near Automata. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. I did all the endings for that. It was so good after that. I still got more endings to go, but one oh. day I'll come back around to it. I got Just the main endings. one. That's all you need. Just three endings. That's all you need. Yeah, I, I beat I beat all the three endings. I'm not okay, going okay. for all 26. No, 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 don't do all 26. <laughs> <laughs> number four, Alex. Mm. We're going to you for number four. All right. So this is the first time I've ever done this. I had to put this DLC in my list. Huh. The God of War Ragnarok DLC that came mm, out. Well, well, uh, Valhalla. Valhalla. What timing on this one? Because I don't so, have Valhalla on here, but I got this game on here. So, from Elijah. Knows, oh my God! You finally I'm... played it. <laughs> you finally beat it. Damn it! All right. <laughs> so, I am not a roguelike person. I I've never been good at them. It's not my cup of tea. Like I tried Hades. I couldn't get into it. I tried Returnal. It's difficult. Like I it's just it's it's just some. Huh. I have not tried Risk of Rain. He doesn't um, like Hades. You think Risk of Rain so, he's gonna so enjoy? He's gonna... So here's the thing. I just I just couldn't get into <laughs> into souls into roguelikes. I played this. This is pr- like I love this DLC. Like it made me want to go back to Hades or back to Return and try these again because I'm like, oh, maybe I I I gotta give it a chance again. But like going like I don't want to spoil too much because I don't know if yeah, have you played the DLC? I uh, haven't Emmett? played the DLC. I've just been the base game. Okay, just the, the the things that you go through in this DLC, it's just very nostalgic. 
Do you know the, and the do you know the premise of the DLC? Do you, yeah. Uh, uh Emmett? not entirely. Okay. Uh I I'll say this. I saw one screenshot okay. of the DLC that made me heavily consider like are they really when you say nostalgic i saw okay. some old shit that i'm like either that's real or that's a crazy ass photoshop okay so you he knows i feel like it's okay to, to kind of breach and let, let's not go too okay. far into well, if, it anything i mean what, you, what is it that you saw i saw a you saw the version button. of a main character yeah. Yeah. okay that was like okay. yeah okay so let not to spoil too much you deal with kratos's past Correct, and, yes. and we'll just leave it at it yeah, mm-hmm. but just just being in that nostalgic field, it just it, it felt wholesome in a way. Like I've you know we've pl- uh, I've never finished one and two, but I've dabbled them in, like good hours into these. Played three, never played Ascension, but I did play the PSP one. So like you know, I'm pretty familiar with God of War. Really I'm enjoy it. More. Yeah, like I, so okay, it's gonna be even more wholesome for you. I feel like than if you beat them all. I'm yeah, you'll definitely you, you'll t- you'll touch you'll get more of a. Yeah. Yeah, it'll touch you much deeper. I it, I yeah. it touched me because I knew all the events they talked about. Correct. I just yeah. I didn't I'm not in the world as much as that is, but I still knew everything because of they mm-hmm. they are pre- they're pretty thorough in 3 in kind of telling mm-hmm. you everything that's happened in the past two games like literally <clears throat> like per moment like they tell you each yeah. thing. So, I was still able to experience it, but I feel like it will hit you even even more. Oh, even yeah. Yeah, for I mean even like I like I've just seen things about the past ones, but just playing and just the the. I never thought I would say God of War with a roguelike works, like it, I, I like me like doing that doing that that section picking what I want and there'd be some hard decisions like I'm like oh do I want this do I want that, I stuck with the with the chaos blades more, um what do you use Elijah you use the spear more. The spear by is my yeah. baby. Just like doing certain things, getting to a certain sp- uh, area, pa- getting through through all this, you know, like it can get diff- it can get difficult. Oh, yeah, yeah. But like, like towards the end, like I mean, it's a between like six to ten hour experience, depending how uh, how depending how good you are. Be honest. Yeah, it depends how good you are. I'm not gonna lie. Lately, I don't have time to play games because of these crazy things like as call, we call <laughs> children i have to put things on easy just so i can enjoy the time that i have mm-hmm. i put it on easy towards the end it still gave me trouble i mean i might suck at it but it was it was still enjoyable even it, like like uh overall i just towards the end it just gave me more i was like it's just more more kratos and i just i i, I want more again i'm like and it, at the end it was just like why didn't they charge me for this I would have gladly paid twenty dollars for this. That's probably yeah. the craziest like, thing about the DLC. Like, Not even like, like, why, like what happens crazy. in it. It's that you didn't pay it's for free. it. Yeah. it I, I don't. Maybe they were testing to see if like how how does free DLC affect a game sales or something? I, but, you know, this could have just been an experiment, but I really if, don't understand. If why it was like if it was this. like a thing where I was like, oh, a tip jar where I could just be like, hey, if you enjoyed it, do it. I'm like, I would have gave like I said, twenty bucks here. I mean, it also could be, you know, there was a roguelike mode in the original game. And as far as I understand, that same mode or something like it did not ship on disc. So mm. maybe this is them just being like, all right, now we're in parity with the original. Let's yeah. put it as free, something like that. But from everything I'm hearing where it has a lot of narrative hooks this time, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, no, this is maybe this is more way more substantial. So it's not a parody it's, thing. It's a hey, we're just being generous. It's just uh, for the. For it being free, I'm surprised you get. It's pretty much you're still playing Ragnarok. It's the whole one shot, the, the cutscenes, like the the gameplay. You feel like you're still playing Ragnarok. You don't feel like it's DLC. You feel like you just really picked it up and pressed continue at the main menu. It's literally what it feels like. So it doesn't even feel like a DLC. It just feels like you're just continuing the story. So like when it ended, I was just like, "Fuck, I gotta wait for more." <laughs> Have to wait a couple for years that. actually Five yeah years no, for sure yeah probably be 30 dollar atreus adventure or something <laughs> god maybe uh, actually we'll see. It, I, uh, I wouldn't be shocked if there's a miles morales-esque that, cra- I, that like atreus I adventure kind of thing i don't know yeah hmm. i don't know but overall loved it if uh, it, you, you if you played all the god of wars and this is on your like oh i should try it 
go 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 play it this is right behind alan wake and as far as like things i need to play the shit out of god i so. can't wait for you to play mm-hmm. alan wake whenever i hear i i need to hear what you think what you think we we, we we need we both need tweets tagged be like hey i'm playing this because we're gonna be on top of you now <laughs> yep all right all right i'll i'll get around to it like i look i got an anniversary, a birthday, and Valentine's Day mm, to get through no, the next couple months. So, no, yeah, I tell them get to around do them the one day, yeah. sit around, and then why, and then we, you just do everything right. in, at once. Oh, and I went back to school recently, so that's gonna be mm. fun too. Oh, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not happening. Emmett, hmm. <laughs> number four. My number four. Let's see here. Oh, okay. See, this is why I said, oh, great timing and talking about Valhalla right now, because I finally beat God of War Ragnarok this year. And that's yeah. my number four. Um, well, I guess last year now, but uh yeah, mm-hmm. Ragnarok, uh, another Steam Deck champ oh. played it, played this and almost the entirety of Spider-Man 2 up to this point on mm-hmm. Steam Deck remote play. Oh um, my god, this maniac. I love it. That is cool. Yeah, that is so yeah, cool. I am Thank God for that little device, because I don't know if I have the stomach for these games uh, otherwise. (laughs) Um, But Ragnarok is great. Uh, I said it when I first beat the game, and I'll go ahead and repeat it here. They finally made a God of War game better than God of War 3. Um, Mm. Took them long enough, but God damn it, they did it. Uh, It has, I think the combat is great. I think the combat is so much better now because there are more options. It's not just Axe Blade Fist. It's Axe Blade Sphere and instead of it being, you know, they still have some unhanded options, but the mm-hmm. unhanded options in the first game felt like a very limited move set. It did not yeah. feel like a proper, you know, class of play. Uh, now you have three full armaments and the feet and the fists you can still use a little bit. Um, so they flesh things out there. They put a lot more interesting moves in there as well. Uh, but then on top of that, I feel like the epicness of this story matches what i missed in god of war 3 i think it is just as epic they don't always go violent with it which i think is really cool there's some really cool sequences where you're playing as atreus where it's like yo this is playing with the scale that i expect from god of war Mm -hmm. in a completely different way um very little nightmares without spoiling it too much um yeah the game is just great yeah 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 yeah, people remember yeah. yeah um the game is just great. I like a lot of the characters where in the first game, I was like, all right, these characters take it or leave them. There are so many like non enemy characters in this game that I found fascinating that I kind of like, there's one side character where I hope she gets her own side game. Mm-hmm. Somehow I would absolutely play the fuck out of a game. If I'm playing as her. Oh, for sure. Um, exactly. And Oh my God, when they got this little black girl in here with her locks and everything, I'm like, Oh fuck. Oh, I'm, she was I'm, some I'm of gonna... the coolest part. Yeah, she was like one of my favorite characters the whole fucking thing. And, you know, I'm everything they did with her was great. Exactly, exactly. Um, the one critique I'll have with God of War Ragnarok, and it's weird to say this because, you know, God of War, we know this to be a brutal franchise. People are dying left and fucking right brutally mm. often. In the original series, you know, characters would leave the story at not at a rapid rate, but like they wouldn't really pull any punches when it came to that. Ragnarok mm-hmm. so clearly felt like we're going to be very tender about who dies, who lives, blah, 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 to the point where some, I'll say at the end of the game, it felt like there should have been a greater cost to the core cast than there ultimately was. It felt like it was, uh, oh, happy days, blah, 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 blah. Yes, I know something happened right before that final uh, battle. Okay. And yes, something and, happened right at the end of the final mm-hmm. battle. But I feel like maybe one or two more felt like would have been a proper cost for the scale that they kept implying this battle was. Um, the, I mean, they spent the me whole personally. they spent the whole last game and this game. Slight spoilers for the game, kind of, but clearly the, it doesn't happen. But um, they tell you the entire time. Oh, Kratos dies. Kratos is gonna die. Kratos is a guy. Oh, we yeah, swear. True, true, true. We swear. And then it well, just doesn't happen. So it's like, yeah, that was kind of weird that they just kind of really try and yeah. fake out, but they don't ever really try and fake you out. It was weird. I don't know. It was a weird narrative thing that they did there. Yeah, it feels like if you're gonna have that promise, give me something else that is also that. Because at this point, I'm expecting something devastating. Devastate mm-hmm. me in another way rather than just saying, psych, just kidding. We want you to have fun. Yeah. For a God and, of War game, especially. And let's not mm-hmm. forget, like, the ending of God of War, again, slight spoilers, but not really. Um, the ending of God of War shows the depiction of of of, of Atreus birthing a snake. That just straight up yeah. doesn't happen in the game. The way it's portrayed. 
So it's like, why was that even in there? Did you like cop out or something? Like, what? what it doesn't. I mean, there's just little things like that bur- where he he birthed not birthed a snake, right? But the picture depicts specific no, yeah, events yeah. happening that do not happen, regardless well, of him birthing yeah. a snake or not. It does not happen the way they show it to you at all. Not even close. Like not e- that person, the character Kratos wasn't even there when it happened. So why was I'll he say, in the mural? I'll say get, birthing a snake is maybe similar to breathing life into a snake. And I feel like that interpretation is a lot more directly of what happened in the second game. That, but yeah. it was clearly yeah. coming out of his mouth. <laughs> The painting had was coming out of I mean, Kratos's body. I get where you're coming. No, I get I, it. I get it. I, I, I thought it was coming out of Atreus's. No, I think the implication he is was, that it was from Atreus, even though Kratos was there. You're right. I thought he was on That's, the ground, yes. and then the, the the snake is coming up, and Atreus out is of doing Kratos? like yes, and Atreus is doing like clear like magic stuff to make it happen. No. Oh yeah. No. So the picture is. Uh, I have it right here. It's it's the snakes coming out of a trace's mouth, slithering, and it's going into Kratos's chest. Or uh, if it's coming out of Kratos's oh, chest, even, but they're both intertwined. Oh, that's even weirder. <laughs> it's even it's, weird. it's, it's 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 Kratos on the floor, a trace behind, and the and each snake end is coming out of the chest and mouth in, and going intertwined. So I don't know. So I like can't tell which one's the kind of thing. Kind of. Hmm. I'll, I'll, you know what? Okay, that that's even a... crazier than what than than it what I thought think it was. The pick is like maybe they were saying the god of war dies. You know, no. maybe. <laughs> I, look, I'm not gonna give them too much credit nor look into it that much because at the end of the day, this feels like a s- s- recent Star Wars trilogy issue where they started a story and didn't really oh, know yeah. all the details of how it ended. So that's like, a good way of putting you know, it. Yeah. I, I think it's that situation, but ultimately the gameplay was fun. The story was engaging, even if I feel like the ending was a little bit too MCU for a God of War story. Felt mm-hmm. like, a, oh, the gang's all still here at the end. Um, it does, but yeah. Even, even with that, I still found the ending powerful, mm-hmm. where after they get over the final battle and people are going their different ways, the ending they give Kratos specifically mm-hmm. at the end of the main game that's what got me as someone who's been there day one that's the shit that made me start like tearing up a little bit his reaction to the mural is what got me yes that's the one that's that's what i'm talking about yeah yeah and then valhalla is going to even go further into that it makes no it is it is yeah if that hit you if that hits you this is going to beat you to death (laughs) oh oh my fucking god i'm so excited (laughs) oh for sure dude it's great but no between rev like when I said, I think I mentioned it earlier. It's just uh, from 2018 to Ragnarok. I I had that. It was missing that that sense. Okay, 2018. You know, we all know the the blades. Mm-hmm. Yes, that yeah. that that whole thing. You that that the moment. I feel like I was missing it, the moment in Ragnarok, and that's my only pet peeve about it. It's like I felt like the game overall was great. You know, you get the spear and everything, but like it didn't feel like it hit the same way as the first one. And I was, I kept waiting for one, but I just never got there. I'll say the problem, I think the critique you have is that in the first God of War reboot, uh-huh. the time bomb was the past. When is the past going to get addressed in this new world? In the second one, the time bomb is the future. When is yeah. the future? gonna finally be reconciled with between these characters yeah and the problem yeah. is it does get reconciled but it, it ends up not meaning much of anything anyway because that future yeah is not maybe that's past. yeah and now see it, made, it was made it irrelevant now mm-hmm. if this dlc was in ragnarok i feel like maybe that would have been the moment honestly mm-hmm. but that's what made it's the dlc so point. great yeah. that, that's what made the dlc so great to me but like if we have that if we had this whole DLC maybe prior to the ending battle, I feel like it would, or even like I feel like it would just been it, it may it would have made it more complete. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> it felt pretty complete to me. Henceforth, number four on my list. <laughs> yep, yep, oh, for sure. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. My number four, something. Uh, this is a game actually that was on the radar, but I it damn sure didn't think it, it'd be on the number four list. And it was a game that I wasn't even in a hurry to, but Alex himself made sure I got to this, made sure mm-hmm. I got to this. And 
very, very thankful it. because it was actually right around Starfield, and I do really think this that's what happened to the specific game that I mean, and I really do think not enough people played this game. I don't think enough people bought this game, and it really, really makes me sad because the the studio behind this, very similar to Hogwarts Legacy, have no background in this type of game. And e, I mean, if Hogwarts Legacy like jumped over a hurdle with 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 that studio specifically, Avalanche, uh, jumping over a hurdle to make Hogwarts Legacy, they like jumped. Did seven backflips, jumped over five more hurdles, like matrixed over f- six hurdles, and like won the race and they got like Jamba Juice after. Nailed it. And that is huh. lies of P. This wow. game is fantastic. Is it just a Bloodborne ripoff? Not really, but it kind of is. It and let me explain. Does it borrow heavily? It does. It actually verges on probably what you would actually call a ripoff of something, but they do enough different to me that it didn't sour the experience. I understand yeah. some people were kind of negative on it because it is barring so heavily from Bloodborne. I mean, damn near it. It feels like it's the same Honestly, noise. I love and the UI when they... you're picking up uh, like items and things. What were you saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, sorry. I was going to say, I think it's because we've been eyeing so much for Bloodborne too that we got this and we're like, <laughs> this is so good. Maybe, and maybe it's just because I was so hungry, like Alex is saying, that oh, yeah. anyone coming around offering you a water, I I drink it and think it was wine or something, I don't know, but this game really did hit me, and just to be clear, I was head neck deep in the Starfield, enjoying my time with Starfield, not really mm-hmm. paying attention to anything else, I was like f- just finishing a playthrough, and Alex kept bugging me, hey, you uh-huh. gotta play Liza P, hey, you gotta play Liza P, hey, Liza P came out, make sure you give it a shot. Yeah. Don't let it pass you by. And he I was, was like, fine. P. And mm-hmm. I, he was pushing. He was pushing Dude. P. And it's because I'm the and I'm the big like Dark Souls bald from soft guy. I was like, I've day one. I was there. I played all of it. And he was on Starfield or in Destiny. You were getting ready yeah. for the raid or so. No, no, like, that was already after the raid. OK, OK. I was like, I was like, at first I was just like, I don't know. This feels indifferent. It feels like grungy. The more you play it, the more comfortable you get. I'm like, dude, you have to play this game. Yeah. And right. the moment I, I picked up the sticks and, and that first opening Sigmac with the butterfly comes to Pinocchio and awakens mm. him and you just get up. I don't know what I don't know what specifically you could call this, but I, I was in. I don't know what specifically or why. Maybe it's just the but specifically Pinocchio himself. Maybe the noises that he was getting up when like he gets up, maybe that the the specific echo that touched him i i don't know but something about that act right there i was in in from like minute one and yeah. the walk forward i mean i can picture it in my mind right now walking forward picking which sword i wanted yep. uh, out of the three builds that they kind of like give you like oh do mm-hmm. you want to be strength or quick and stuff of course i pick quick little quick stabby weapon that i that use for the majority of the game I loved my time. I had a mm-hmm. blast with Liza P. Again, I want to remind everyone this was a Korean studio. I'm Wait, blanking on the up name. All essence of what you're saying. Didn't they make like DJ Max or something? They like made. That? They made. It's Neil Wiz mm-hmm. and Round Eight Studios. Neil Wiz in collaboration with with Round Eight, and they made um mm-hmm. a bunch of random games. They were made. They they made um. I mean. The games you, you would think, of- think a Korean studio would make. I mean, I that's the best way I can put it here. But like the, the, a game called Blade Assault, Bless uh, Unleashed, a, Unsold, yeah, Unsold, Skull, the Hero Slayer, oh, Skull, yeah. Plebi Quest. Like it's it's <clears throat> nothing anywhere close to something like this. I mean, I I'll I'll go as far as in terms of sale through and sales and frankly, I, I haven't played any of these, but I'm assuming quality. It just kind of came out of nowhere. When I looked at their catalog before, it didn't feel like they were due for a Liza P, you know, or a, a an upper echelon, a hit. And they nailed it with this. They blew it away. Brave Nine. That's another game I remember hearing about. Sanabi. Um, and, and Neil Wiz killed it with the narrative. I think is incredibly compelling. It is not anything like a Dark Souls game where you really do have to pay attention and read these little things. That's there. That's just for additional lore. This game is Mm -hmm. telling you the story. This is a classical telling you a story. You are Mm -hmm. a character that doesn't talk. You are told things. It is straightforward. It is a through line narrative that is very, very Mm -hmm. good and very well told. 
I'm sure there's plot holes in these things and, and blah. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about my experience with the game and it was great. I had a blast. I mm. loved um, the lie mechanic in the game. Uh, there's, there's of course, the more lies you tell, the bigger your nose gets. Now, of course, not your character's nose because that'd be silly looking. There's a portrait that um, is has magic properties that that nose gets longer and if it gets long enough you'll get a weapon out of it there's like a bunch of little silly things in this game like that um there's constant references to mm -hmm. old style um uh hans christensen sort of uh yeah if you th i mean if monsters you just think pinocchio. i guess you say like pinocchio like and i think there's a, a beauty in the beast reference uh, uh in the game that that I, um i think that it's clearly one the ending uh hints at what the next mm -hmm. game is going to be about which is i mean oh, do you know what the ending yeah. is have you like been spoiled uh, about this the red slippers that's all okay you saw it you saw yeah. it so yeah like that like it's like i mean that's a brilliant way of ending a game like that is like top 10 like great ways of teasing what the next game will be about like type of things and you're already kind of like minds racing and like how's that gonna work how mm -hmm. how is how is this thing gonna gonna work Can, will, mm -hmm. will, will the the heels click to to like teleport back to like a bonfire like you already or something think, well, like, a like you already think gonna be mm -hmm. yeah and and they were able to get this world so tight of an experience that it really does feel mm -hmm. kind of lived in crate feels like a character in this game mm -hmm. uh, i know that's such a cliche garbage thing to say but it really does feel like crate is a character in this crot. world it uh is yeah that is crot you're right crot. it is crot um hey, going from like point a and, and at the end of the day it is really just a robots revolution kind of story but it's it's different in a lot of ways uh so it is kind of simplistic if you think about it that way but it gets <laughs> complicated very quick with a lot of the mm -hmm. story, um, especially when you tie in ergo and what that is and mm -hmm. and the the uh, uh, and then I, all this talk, I haven't talked about the beautiful combat system in this game that mm -hmm. that uh, changes with every weapon permutation and you can change the way every weapon works, um, standard mm -hmm. weapon yeah. with the handle and Blade, blade mechanics in the game you can, you can have so many combinations yeah you can take off a handle of this this weapon and put it on the blade of this weapon and now you have the move set of the previous oh, weapon from one, the handle yeah. but you have the damage and kind of weight of the uh blades oh, the weapon. new one and mm -hmm. it's in that and then you got combination. the arm that you have like different types of arms that you can do. You add like a, like a Bloodborne parry system or almost like a Mega weapon. Man, honestly. Yeah. Uh, that's what yeah. I thought about it is where it's your, you yeah. can change your arm out. Like you the have, most like, one I used buster. was the electric one where I, I sh I'd use a, is like a shock and then there's a flame one where you cause burn. Like I liked hmm. the one where my hand is just a gun and I just it's shoot like people with my hand. It shoots them, yeah, it just throws yeah. them back. I <laughs> use that the, every chance I get. Uh, love yeah, I mean, love if this you, game. I mean, if you think of Pinocchio, you're like, and like there's so many been there's been different adaptations of movies, cartoons, things like that. But like in my opinion, this is like my favorite adaptation of Pinocchio in that world. Like say Geppetto, like a little hint uh, of Monstro, or like you know the the fox, uh, you know the all of that. There's like every, there, every little detail. There's things in it. It's all it's like it's, it's like I I beat the game and then played New Game Plus and. They so they had to patch the last boss because how difficult it was. Yeah. Uh, they had to patch it to make it easier, and we actually got to beat it before they patched it to make it easier. So it was God like, damn, it felt yeah. good. It, it, it felt good. Moment. That felt good when <laughs> when they were like, yeah, we're patching it to change it. And I, was like, I already did it. I almost gave up because I was like, oh, I gotta keep trying. I tried the next day. I text them. I was like, hey, finally beat it. And then I think it was like a day or two after they patched it. I was like, oh, thank God. It was like I could say that I beat it before patch. Yeah, and <laughs> the, the bosses, end. Oh my god! The, yeah, I mean the bosses. I I won't go on too long because I know we're going to talk about this again with yeah, Alex. Yeah. But um, yeah, for sure. The bosses are great. The end, I think, is very well done. Um, which I don't think many of the From Souls games do well. I think the the ending to this game is actually very moving, especially if you pick a specific mm -hmm. ending, and you have a specific revelation with certain characters. 
Um, and just the very nature of Lies of P having multiple meanings, if you look through the lore of the game and you tie in the end sequence to this game, you find out Lies of P means more than what you thought it would mean originally. And I could go on and on. I, I will stop here because I know we're going to bring experience. it up later, but it was a highlight of the year, clearly because it is my number four. And again, a very strong year. Mm. Oh, yeah. Was that everyone's number four? I'm I'm uh, I'm all messed you, up now. I did mine for you. And, and yeah. Emmett, you did God of War. So now we're on yep. three. I'm gonna go ahead and do three because we already talked about this game. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I'll, I'll I'll give my piece because I know um, it's not on Alex's. Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom. Oh wow! There we go. All right. Yeah, I. <laughs> it it was really something coming to this game, right? I and. And I do what I preach, you know, I kept an open mind, even though I didn't like Breath of the Wild half as much as anyone else. I really did keep an open mind for this game, and I'm glad I did. This game is the hype. It matched it, overseeded it. And if I want, actually, I want to bring something up. The next three games I kind of have been molding in my mind. Um, gameplay really is uh, mm-hmm. gameplay and game design and how those two married each uh, each other are going to be kind of the highlight of the next three games I'm going to be talking about. And that's no exception, of course, with Legend of Zelda. The way, and I said this a lot when it came out, the way they've designed the game is to have m- made it possible for you to break everything they've made about the game and every challenge that they can because they have no idea when you're going to get to any of it. And that shows game design that's so intelligent to be able to have a foresight of like the character can solve it in any number of ways we're gonna give them four to five tools (laughs) yeah (laughs) and you're gonna be able to take any challenge you want and at the rate you want once you start this game about mm, what would you guys say eight hours and you have your tools for the game and you don't get anything else. I would I would say that's pretty pretty close estimate. Eight hours. You have every have tool to. you're going to get for the f- rest of the game. You have every mechanic. You can Even tackle. I, I get my camera at hour forty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't need the camera, but I know what you're saying. I still so, don't have the pre build thing. Yeah, the pre build. You never got that. Oh my god. <laughs> god no. I I originally was like I don't care about the pre build, and then I was like, oh no, I love this thing. I can immediately make my like little hover car, and like. Just just with that, like we all kind of um, a great game is something that's social and you can and discuss about. Mm-hmm. And that's something that Legend of Zelda was right there in front of everyone. Everyone was social about, hey, well, you know, what are you using to get around? Oh, I'm using this combination of a of like the, the, the remote stick and two fans like, oh, well, I'm using the remote stick and the surfboard and, and two fans mm-hmm. or, you know, et cetera. And you can go on. Infinium with the mm-hmm. amount of things that are in this game. Yeah, some people creations you can do. Yeah, yeah. Some people just did a fan and a thing. Like you, can, it's very unique in terms of how creative you can get in this game. It is oh, yeah. almost like a. Do I dare say like almost a Minecraft, but instead of <laughs> the environment, it's like the thing you're using are builds specifically in your inventory versus making like a monolith you're making almost like the i'd say converse of that of like a rocket or something i i'd say closer to banjo kazooie nuts and bolts <laughs> than <laughs> minecraft yeah but, something you know, the spirits there the open worldness of it all and all yeah yeah no, the, the, yeah go ahead oh i was gonna say yeah uh, throughout the game that i even though i didn't i didn't finish it that was the highlight of my game of what my gameplay is creating something to get to a certain spot like when there's water i'm i literally just got like a pl- piece of wood or something added a fan and try hoping it works and i was like that wasn't supposed to be this way but i got it to work and it was awesome like the randomness that you can make t- and it's like i'm sure somebody else created like a whole ship i'm over here on a fucking log <laughs> I, I made <laughs> Yes. And but you can be awesome. as in as ingenuous as you want. Of course, Alex is saying, you know, he went as simple as possible. And like you said, conversely, you can be as difficult as possible. If you want, hey, make a ship every time you want to cross the river. Make this make a thing where you like you you put you put like the 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 car part down and then makes mm-hmm. the sides and then have three fans <laughs> to kind of direct you and have them move around and 
and mm-hmm. they they give you many many tools to be able to do things mm-hmm. like move like movable things um yep. i know there was a thing where like if you turn it on it'll go up and down or something like there's a mm-hmm. bunch of random stuff that people do there's a whole subreddit called hyrule engineering that it's just people just having fun mm-hmm. just oh, making yeah. random stuff there was the meme culture that around the game that was always fun too where it's like they were sacrificing the bean people that was really yeah, funny the koroks. yeah the koroks like there's a mm-hmm. lot of little things about the game i haven't even talked about the story which is something i've i've had a problem with for mm-hmm. a lot of zeldas in the past because their stories really haven't in my opinion gone through and really lived up to the links to the past and all these other games where the the story albeit secondary when you're playing a zelda it was still important and that was my biggest deal with breath of wild where like in reality you're not really experiencing a story you're finding these these flashbacks that aren't very compelling and when you find them they're like these little clips of and it wasn't very fun and in this one you're finding the adventures of a i guess i won't spoil it you're, you're finding the adventures of no, no, that's not really a spoiler. You're you're seeing what Zelda is up to during your adventure, I'll say. Oh, and yeah. You're finding those uh flashbacks and that is much more compelling to me and then once you thread all them together and I really do think I I like <clears throat> experience the game in like the golden path way because I was able to like find flashbacks and I was able to piece things together. I remember talking to my wife like Oh, you know, I found this flashback, and I think this is happening with with Zelda, and and I think this is this, and, and I think Link's gonna find this there, and and it, you know, I, just theorizing, and the, this game really makes you think in more ways than one. It makes you think with the actual raw gameplay, and it makes you think uh, narratively with a lot of the choices they make. And I will say, the final boss was sick, and the Master Sword I think is the best Master Sword we've gotten. The the actual <laughs> moment of getting that master sword, I think it's the best master sword, and it's not even close to any master sword I've gotten in any Zelda I've ever played, and I've played almost all the mainline ones. Um, I think I've talked about it enough. I really, really did fall in love with this one. I put in probably a hundred plus hours or something like that, uh, something yeah. uh, annoying, annoyingly long, and I had a blast. I loved it. Loved my time with it. I cannot wait. Uh, to see what they do next, uh, because I devoured this game. Maybe they'll do DLC or something. I don't know. We'll have to no, see. They, but... they confirmed no DLC. Yeah, so. they confirmed no DLC, but people are lying. They also said no DLC for Final Fantasy 16. Um, yeah. So, I like, feel like we it feels. Heard about I still, DLC I still by now. buy that. It, yeah, but I feel like, you're probably right. I do agree. It's just <laughs> annoying that it feels like we're back into the time period that we're lying about DLC. Mm-hmm. Why are we lying about DLC? Yeah, it's Dave just Jeff weird. He's not going to be at E3. Here he comes in a sweet tooth truck. Yeah, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the rant. I needed that. Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom, my number three. I loved every single second of that game. Emmett, your number three. Well, my number three had a lot fewer seconds to love. <laughs> But I loved it all the same for each and every one of those seconds. This is a game. There's another indie game, another short but sweet. I want to say this was a four hour game as well. This came out this year. I don't recall a single mainstream outlet reviewing it, talking about it, nothing. I am so sad to see that because this game is truly great. Uh, it does feel like, all right, this is their first step at it. But God, if this is their first step, they're going to blow whatever's next out of the water. And I've talked about it before. This game is basically what if Insomniac made a Princess Bride game? <laughs> <laughs> and that game is on guard. Uh, on guard. Uh, I've, I've talked about it a couple times on other shows uh, on Twitter and whatnot, but it is a fencing game where you play as this little kind of not Zoro Zoro character. <clears throat> um, you're getting in trouble with the conquistadors and the law and whatnot. And it's just a nice little linear narrative. You know, you're jumping around, doing a little bit of light platforming, a little bit of climbing. But the main focus here is defensing. It is, it's, it's, it's very endearing. And it comes through in the tone of defensing where you're, you're poking at guys and whatnot, but no one actually dies. Whenever you take down an enemy, there's no like violent decapitations. There's no, there's not even blood. They fall on the ground and they're just like, like just, 
laid out unconscious just be, and then as you're fighting you'll hear like oh she's good oh <laughs> like like they're actors in a stage play and then on top of that you can use your environment in the most <clears throat> cartoonish ways not only are you fencing and there's a really good there's really good mechanics with like dodging and slow motion dodges and last minute parries and whatnot really good like kind of batman-esque combat there but then using your environment, let's say there's a cauldron in the environment or the arena somewhere, you can kick an enemy into the cauldron, they get burned a little bit, and then they bounce back and open themselves up for a hit. You can throw a little lantern into the cauldron, blow it up, goes into the sky, and stays there for like half the fight. And then when you have one or two guys left, it comes back down on someone's head for an instant kill no matter what class of enemy they are. And just like it's in a Tom and Jerry cartoon, you can pick up a pot, put it on pick up a bucket, put it on someone's head, get some free hits. You can kick them down the stairs and they just topple over like it's in a cartoon. I keep saying cartoon is very cartoonish, the combat, in a way that's like very reactive and also very refreshing mm -hmm. where you can have this much combat opportunity. It's kind of like, what is it? What's the uh, what's the Hong Kong GTA? W which one is that? Not China Sleeping, sleeping dogs. dogs. Thank you. It's I very Sleeping Dogsy. It's very sleeping dogsy, just without the gunplay, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, where it's a lot of environmental interaction. And then of course, the story is the story is kind of just cute and it's whatever. You're you're playing mm -hmm. it just to like have a good vibe. It's not the most groundbreaking story or anything, but it's fun. It's <clears> just <throat> very wholesome. The entire game just felt like a breath of fresh air. They don't make games like this anymore, nor do they even rarely come out nowadays. So mm -hmm. it's really good. Steam Deck verified. I want to say it's 15 bucks. Uh, mm -hmm. There's an arena mode that I want to get into as well. It's the combat is that good to where you might want to replay it a lot. Uh, it's just a really solid video game. It it checked every single box and it, it it was just short enough to where I have spent more time reminiscing about it than I have playing it, which I think is the hallmark of a great game. So mm -hmm. there you. Yeah, go. It looks like the they made Sifu as well. I see. No way, they did not make Sifu on guard. Uh, fire, on guard fireplace with games. The, with, yeah, fireplace games. It says on guard is the it has the woman with the red hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, made making... they made Sifu. Ah, oh, there you know. Maybe they worked on it, but let me, let me see. Because I goodness, where it said developer slow clap. was Fireplace. Um, no, slow clap developed. Sifu. Yeah, slow cap. The people they have who the made same publisher. Maybe oh, okay, maybe it's a publisher that popped up because they're just saying that you can buy the 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 games as a bundle. Yeah, yeah, they buy it as a bundle because they're oh, both see, developed, see, see. Do a published yeah. by Kepler. Interactive. Gotcha. Okay. That's it. That's it. But yeah, on guard is their oh, first game. It. Like, yeah, I got you. I remember seeing clips of like their college project back when it was, you know, still in that realm and it was way more dark and broody. Now it's a lot more colorful, a lot more, you know, vibrant and just lighthearted. It's a great game. I think everyone should play it. Uh, of course, it's higher than the gunk. You, you guys said you tried to gunk out. Let me tell everybody listening right now if you're going to play one, this is the one. It is good. It is so fucking good. Um, so yeah, that, that's all I got to say about it. It's really good. <clears throat> I, I've been holding my tongue. I, I wanted to let you finish. Um, so first off, very positive reviews. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Emmett has good taste, of course. Um, it's already out, of course. It's 20 bucks. Uh, Unguard, the swashbuckler, action game, battle graceless guards, and a fairy's nobleman. And fast-paced fights <laughs> full of spectacle. Use the environment, your wit, and your blade to teach them all a lesson. Uh, this is an insta-buy. This looks great. Uh, yeah. I, it doesn't make me sad. This is another Liza P situation, although very different <laughs> in terms of like <laughs> how few people have talked about this. I have not heard about this at all. No one has talked yeah. about this. No one. I, I, I don't. I would be surprised if I even see a review from any major site. I've not even seen reviews of this thing. So I am very much going to try this out. This looks very good. Um, I'll be honest. It doesn't even look like a game. It looks so good. Uh, like it looks like almost like a Pixar short like in terms mm -hmm. of quality of art. Uh, so this looks great. I am definitely going to try this. This looks very cool. Very, very cool. And you said it was very short as well. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Very short. And and I keep, I keep harping on that gameplay. It is so fun to just toy with these enemies, throw them into a, a rack of knives and then it all falls down on them. It's very like Jackie Chan fight choreography, the <laughs> game. Like, yeah. It does it, look slapstick. Like you said, it, it, once you said Looney Tunes, it kind of hit me. I'm like, Oh, this does look very Looney Tunes. The trailer even has, like you said, she would, she twirled a bucket into her, um, her rapier and threw it at an enemy and the bucket was on his head and, and she was able to beat him up and stuff. And this looks, this looks great. I don't know how I haven't heard about this. This, this looks un, unreal. I, uh, I'm assuming not on consoles. Doesn't yeah, look not like on it Steam. is. That's literally what I was looking for. 
yeah, yeah it doesn't look Steam. like so it's just on steam that's fine i will very much pay the 20 bucks to play this yeah, uh, just on Steam, uh, you know, get it on your third party stores. But I have a feeling this is gonna come to consoles before too long because this is the type of game that deserves I hope the so. brightest audience. It possible. has oh, yeah. it has a full controller support. So mm-hmm. yep, get I it on it. Xbox, y'all. Get it on Xbox. Uh, hopefully bingo, bingo. they're working on that. But this screams th- game pass. This oh, yeah. definitely screams game. I mean, this screams ID at Xbox. How are they not on yeah. this? How are they Absolutely. like? How did they not jump on this? What? Are, well, who is sleep at the wheel? Letting this. I, was gonna say, I feel like IDX at Xbox is like it been misses lately. <laughs> like, 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 get in there and 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 pay for their publishing. Like, just get pay <laughs> yeah. it outright and get them on the store. That's crazy, crazy that I've not heard of this yet. This is great. I will definitely be trying this out. Thank you, Emmett. Um, this no is problem. definitely going to be a must buy. <clears throat> that was your number three. We are going to Alex for his number three. My three is Final Fantasy 16. Okay. Oh. Much higher. Much higher. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot higher. Like I said, this game spoke to me. Like, just like in a, like, every time I think of like a Final Fantasy game, my mind immediately goes to like the traditional, like, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it would be traditional. In my opinion, it is, but like, it goes back to the more medieval ish, you know, old style games, like instead of this future, like, you know, you got, the, everybody with the guns and like a more cyber or is it cyberpunkish? No, uh, what's the word? Uh, steampunkish. Like Thirteen and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, like four. Yeah, like seven. Like everything's more steampunkish, you know, futuristic type of things. Like I like more of the medievalish, you know, old older style swords. You know, everything. I like that type of style of Final Fantasy, but more. Um, when I played this one, I was like, I immediately like enjoyed the characters. Like you know, um. Although the fight, the the combat was pretty fluid because I I loved 15s and like I, I I don't mind the turn base which apparently you uh you can do, you can turn like into like you could turn like a uh, turn um like a um uh, turn based battle system. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, you could do. I think you could switch it on or something like to where you could do that. I don't know how, but because I think you could be able to do that on in 15 as well. Yeah, you're but, able to um, do that in 15 for sure. I I don't remember uh, it being okay. in 16 though. Yeah, I don't remember. I'm not sure. <clears throat> but the combat was really fun. Um, once the story progresses, you know, like, this is probably the, I mean, it's probably the, the first time you actually do the big icon fights. Like, those were awesome. Like, the, the, yeah, um, sick. just the, the way the animations are, like, it feels like, like, you know, you're battling in the cutscene. It just, everything was so, like, colorful everything was crazy going like i loved it like every time we got to one of those fights it just got better and better i'm like oh, how are they gonna top this one and they did mm-hmm. and then it's just like the the one thing i did uh, like i always i always loved when i don't know i guess i don't know if any of any of them did but like i like when games like you're able to change the outfit or the sword i don't remember if it i think the sword changed sword I changes remember, yeah you do yeah, not change anything change. about the outfit. The outfit did not, I just wish you could change that. Like you were able to change somewhat of the outfit, but the outfit changed. That was uh, one negative for me. Is is there is no real choice in the game uh, in terms yeah. of uh, it's really all only abilities. Um, the sword, you're just gonna pick the strongest sword. It doesn't matter, right? So there is sure. no choice. Armor, there is no armor in the game. Uh, bangle, you're just gonna pick the best bangle. So it's like it's, it doesn't really feel That's like you're the, making uh, that anything. Was the, uh, that was the downside of me. Was just the the stud the, the apparel or the stuff that you wear other than like for the skills wise like i love the skills i was able to like do so many combos with the icons like l- being able to do oh i'm gonna do th- this icon's abilities and then this one and switch back to this one like doing all the other stuff i mean i i loved it i played beat it all the new game plus got platinum i got the platinum for it um i mean i really enjoyed this uh for some reason the characters in this one just i got close to compared to the other ones like i like cloud and sephiroth i just i just feel like it's like because i never played the originals i feel like it's this i don't know them like i like i yet so like like i still like you know played the first final final fantasy 7 remake i still don't know so much about sephiroth and where i'm waiting for two more games for i can fully understand him i mean i i can go back and play the remake but i don't really want to play with polygons um I mean, other than that, other than that, I mean, maybe once they fully come out, maybe all that'll be my favorite. But for right now, sixteen is my favorite just because I just, 
just I just enjoyed those characters more, joined the atmosphere more. I mean, like I was uh overall, I mean it was just a great experience. Oh yeah. Yeah, I one of these days I want to get around to playing Final Fantasy 16 specifically because even though I haven't played much of the franchise, mm. uh, I love Devil May Cry 5. So I was just much. about to say, you love Devil May Cry 5, so yeah, you would definitely, yeah, so like this. same combat director. Yeah. I should mm-hmm. be fully seated once I get time, and honestly, once the price comes down for me, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I realized DLC came out, I need to go buy that because I definitely want to try the DLC. I do too, I, I, I want to see what it is. And- <clears throat> Although it is much lower on mine for various reasons, again, it's still a, a memorable experience and something that I'm going to keep with me, especially with the, the the nature of the icons and what they are and how they're treated in the game is very different from a lot of Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. I very much enjoy them. And mm-hmm. I really did fall in love with the interactions between the characters. I do wish it was a little bit more because it does kind of feel like mm-hmm. you're stifled yeah. throughout the game um, and you only really get to hear them talk to each other in a handful of times and the side quests yeah. are a bit yeah like um, I want more out of it like you said yeah yeah and the side quests are uh, <clears throat> very run of the mill of what we expect from kind of a game like that where it's just I need <clears throat> this thing okay <clears throat> I'll get this go pick it up come back here's the thing okay thanks here's just you know and it's just that a lot um so I wish they were going to be able to iron out the side quests a bit more in that one. But I do remember a lot of them being very good. It's just some of them leave a little bit to the desired. Anything at the uh, home base, uh, yeah. I loved. Anything with the, um, yeah. I won't spoil it, but Torgal specifically, he has a oh. little thing in the game that is oh, also awesome. amazing. Hmm. Uh, and it's very tear jerking at the end too with certain things in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and also it leaves you thinking which is a, a hallmark of a great game. The ending makes you go, huh? And it doesn't answer it. It doesn't cop out. Yeah. It it makes you go, wait, why is it? And then the yeah. game ends. And yeah, I, you that, know, like, that's great. Me qu- in question. As, yeah. yeah, they left you with a question that I hope never gets answered because I think that's the cool part. Of yeah, the no, like I like it, like in a good way. Like I, I, I like. <laughs> Who do you voodoo, like, bitch? Who do <laughs> you voodoo? Yeah. Who do like the way you voodoo? That is just like, yeah, like, I don't want them to, like, tell me. I want, I just, you know, think of my, you give my own ending in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get to to write it in your own hand. Very much like the hit TV show Watchmen. That is on mm-hmm. HBO Max right now. God damn, I go watch that, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Emmett. Look, uh, look I, I saw Strange Planet. I watched a whole season of Strange Planet this year. Watch proud of myself for that. That's a great show. Gabby would like Watchmen. Watch it with her. She probably would. She, I mean, she's not like a comic book person, but I think you she don't got to be for the Watchmen. But like, she like, I know the types of themes they're talking about in the Watchmen TV yeah. show. I think you would she'd know. be down for that, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Give that it was, a try. That Give it a try. supposed to be. Yeah. No, okay. It's on the That's list. good. It's on the That's list. Good. Okay. <laughs> you need to and smoke on my ass. Um, <laughs> that was <laughs> number three from. Alex, that was number three from Emmett, correct? We got you got yes. your number three. All right, let's go to number <clears throat> two. You said your three? Yes, it was Legend of Zelda. That yes. is true. Yes. Yep. I, I started it off because uh, uh, we already talked about it. And guess what? I'm going to do that again because we already talked about my number two. And my number two is uh, Alan Wake 2. Um, Alan Wake 2 just misses the number one spot. And I'll tell you why. The number one spot is almost a perfect Elijah game, and that's just straight up unfair to Alan Wake 2, but that's just the reality of the situation. Mm-hmm. But we'll talk about number two, my number one later. Uh, this is for the number two spot, though. Um, Alan Wake 2, um, I kind of said my full thoughts with Alex's bring up of Alan Wake 2, uh, but I will reiterate them with saying what was done with Alan Wake 2 is something that I love about video games and something that I think we should very much praise people who tackle narrative gameplay and you as part of the story as you viewing it as different and unique as possible and Alan Wake 2 does that very well I don't like one does it very well um as well but Alan Wake 2 is times 20 how extreme Alan Wake 1 was uh mm. we we're, we were playing this novelist that has to make up the story as he goes kind of thing uh it's it's all the supernatural <laughs> thriller etc cetera, etc cetera. i won't go too much into the story there i feel like i could tell you the story you wouldn't even understand what i was saying so it wouldn't matter but i won't <laughs> spoil it um 
the way that they're able to remedy themselves, by the way, remedy, I think is getting up there to, to one of our bests, Naughty mm-hmm. Dog, Insomniac. They're, I think they're up there now with how good they are being and how consistent mm-hmm. they're being. Ignoring Crossfire. Ignoring that. Ignoring that. Sometimes you just need to check. <laughs> you know, sometimes you, you got to get hit with the with the cease and desist. Um, <laughs> but, but with Alan Wake 2, it really was a unique experience. Something that I know for a fact I'm not going to probably play ever again or or until they make a DLC slash a three. Uh, it was unique whole onto itself. It's something that you say when you experience a Hideo Kojima game. It's something you tell yourself when you experience your favorite auteurs thing and whatever thing, a, a TV show, a movie, etc. This is our single yeah. player. Yes, this is this is our uh, uh, inception. You know, this is our look at this. This is what games are now. And this is how they've evolved from when you saw them 10 years ago. This is how someone with a very thoughtful mind sat down and crafted an experience that only a video game can have. Let's let's remind ourselves that you can't really have this experience in TV. And that's what makes our medium very interesting. They can play around with certain things. They can make you interact with the environment and make you feel like you're actually pushing along the narrative because you are a part of it, not stationary with it as a TV show or a movie, but you are a part of it and you are actively driving it with along your character, your narrative, your etc. And I think Alan Wake 2 is the antithesis of that and much more. It does something that few games can do. It can uh, make you think longer than the game actually takes to beat because this is such a thick narrative i mean it feels like a Mm -hmm. rind of cheese is around this game Mm -hmm. of how thick it takes and how much there is to really absorb and i'm so (laughs) glad they um got this new game plus with a new ending because i can't wait to get back in so i can pick up on little things that i missed um i love the dark place i love the mind place or her mind palace. I love little uh, gameplay uh, hints along the way of what's happening uh, in other planes of existence. I'll say um, I love the character of. Um, um, oh, my God, I'm blanking on her name. Um, oh, uh, sick oh brain um, starts with an S, please. Someone God, the main I'll character. Them, that's not the Alan. Chick? Yeah, that's not Alan. Oh, um, my Jesus. sickness, my sick brain is killing me. Saga, thank you. Saga, saga. thank you, myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> saga was a, I, I think probably the the best written character this year. Um, mm. at least one of them. She is great. I I really do appreciate what she does for the narrative. I love her power or lack thereof. You know, I'll I'll leave mystery there the way that you they use her to interact with the narrative because Alan is constructing said narrative and just the whole through line of when you're playing this game in the back of your mind, remember you're playing a game that was crafted and written by a man who stuck in the, in a supernatural palace that he needs to write himself out of literally because the place feeds on art and you have to use art to manipulate it. And there's rules and there's depth and there's mm. lore and there's so oh, much. Fuck, I gotta play about, this. And there's so much about the game that makes you think and makes you go, Oh wait, did Alan try this? And you, you and you find a manuscript and you're reading and you're like, wait, he did. Oh wait, who wrote? this play who wrote this movie and there's little mysteries in the dark place that I won't spoil here, of course. And I could go on and on, but this game is something that I really feel like we should all kind of put on a pedestal a little bit up there with the last of us and, and our, in you know, insert your favorite game there and really show to people be like, Hey, this is what video games have become. <laughs> and when you ask yourself, what makes a video game different than a TV show or a movie? You show them this. Guys, thank you so much then, for letting me uh, rant. And then you have the moment. Yes, and then you have the moments, which, again, we'll spoil Classic here, but many. there's many. We Everyone, if you're on Twitter, if you're, you know, you know what we sing is. I won't spoil it here, but it is I, some of the most fun I've had this year. Oh, 
in terms of a of level. Very fun. Gee Willikers, I can't wait until I know all the things you guys are hinting towards. <laughs> I can't wait. This time, by this time next year, I gear, I'm gonna play that game this year. I guarantee it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I am very excited. Maybe we'll if you do it and you're free, let's do a spoiler cast. I'll replay it for you, Ooh. and maybe we make some content out of it or something. <clears throat> um, I might do that. Uh, I'm I'm done with Alan Wake Two. If no one has to say anything, we can move on to let's do Emmett's number two. My number two, my number two is a game I'm surprised no one's talked about yet, but also a game that I understand is one of the greatest games of the year. So maybe it's about to come up. I don't know quite yet. Um, but look, I I came to the original game very very late. Oh, uh, this is yeah. You already know. You already know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I came to the original one very very late, and I thought that one. You know, that's top 25 game of, all, game of all time for me. So this remake is now pretty much replacing that game on its pedestal that I've put it on. Um, the original is still great, but I think it's really hard for anything to top my number two game, Resident Evil 4. Um, and- you are among uh, anarchists, but please, I don't want to interrupt you. Emmett, Emmett you, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want the best boss fight? In the remake that we had in the original, I mean, with 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 uh, Which with one? <laughs> the one I'll that they cut out in the remake. Look, look. Here's here's the thing you about have Resident a Evil Four. Puzzle to solve before the boss fight. Here's the thing about Resident Evil Four, both remake and the original. I love the original. Basically, the reason that I thought Star Wars was cool is the same reason why I like the original Resident Evil Four. Or yeah. I watched the original Star Wars like. 50 years after the world saw it and maybe yeah. a good 30 to 20 all years same. after yeah. all the people my age saw it. So like I I was already when oh, I saw it, I was like, yeah. oh man, every movie is like this. That's pretty yeah. cool that like yeah. going backwards, you know, they were doing this shit from the beginning. Um Resident Evil 4 has the same effect where it's like, hey, this feels a little bit like Uncharted, a little bit like Gears of War, because this is the game that they were all looking at and trying to copy. Mm-hmm. I find that really impressive. I yeah. could not tell you beat for beat the stories that happen oh, in yeah. the remake or the original, if I'm being honest, because that's not why I'm playing these games. I'm yeah. playing it to have a fun mm-hmm. gameplay experience. When it comes to this remake, you know, yes, they cut out a bunch of stuff. And yes, I understand in the separate ways DLC, which I did purchase, but have not played yet. They added back a whole lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like this game <laughs> because it reimagines the original Resident Evil 4 And basically does away with, like, the one imaginary problem that I had with it. Resident Evil 4 feels old. Like, it feels great if you've never touched it. But the second you try to touch it again, I didn't have a 15-year gap in between when I tried to go back to it right before this remake. Oh, yeah. I I played the original last a couple months ago to last year, and then I played the remake when it came out. Yeah, well, I played the original, like, somewhere in the PS4 generation, so it's been a couple Uh. years. But still, like... It hasn't been a huge gulf of time, but when I tried to go back to it, it felt like, oh. all right, this is this is a different world. Yeah. So, no, like I said, I played it last year, and I was like, this, I, and I restarted it like three times because I tried playing mm-hmm. it on the the three or the Xbox One time or, or just yeah. 360, and it was just like, it was just, I could not get past the first, second, two, three hours because it was just, I, it's, it's just dated. Yeah, it, it's very dated. I tried the what PS3 version. I also tried the PC version. Finally, did it on PS4. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this game just feels so aggressively modern without sacrificing, you know, the survival horror elements. Yeah. And I think the the fault that a lot of survival horror games have, they're like, oh, we want it to be scary. So how do how can it possibly be scary if we have smooth controls? We have to make things you know tedious or we have to make actions difficult to take so that there's tension there what i like about resident evil 4 the gameplay is so fucking smooth it is like pretty much flawless third person shooting gameplay in my opinion um but they still Mm. match that tension by giving you look i'm not gonna say okay flawless is strong (laughs) flawless is very strong (laughs) very strong but it's very 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 good third person shooting but the way that they kind of fight back on that tension is they overwhelm you with enemies they overwhelm you with the force coming towards you and you have all the tools possible to stop it 
but you are still whittling away at resources. And hey, if you run out of your knife to deflect things, you better be good at timing the quick time event of that dodge button. So, you know, there's different yeah. ways to get across things if you're good enough, but that's the question. You have to be good enough. And if you're not, that's where the health starts getting chipped away. That's when this, the resources start getting used up. It's very, very smart. Also, we talked about Steam Deck a million times. I've talked about Steam Deck a million times. <laughs> Played this entire game on Steam Deck. Ran at 60 frames a second most of the time. Yeah. And a game that looks like Resident Evil 4 does, doing that on this little thing makes no sense. And so yeah. that felt like the biggest magic trick of the year for me, where it's just like, how is this even running? Um, it's just really good. It, it carries over a lot of the really cool design things that I liked in the God of War games, like the most recent ones, uh, with the kind of open worldy sections and the side quests and how everything... I finally saw... Resident Evil 4 through the lens that everyone else saw it originally, where there are freaks about Resident Evil 4. They're like, oh, you see, oh, you want to get that treasure up there? Well, you got to shoot down the well and then block off mm -hmm. the well so the treasure can fall down here. I never saw the original game through that lens where it's like, okay, I see how everything's firing and I'm just doing every single thing in the most frictionless way possible. On the first playthrough of Resident Evil 4 Remake, I was doing that, where it just felt like, all right, I can see right mm -hmm. through how this game's supposed to be. I can stack up all my upgrades. I can really min-max my time with the game immediately. And I found that to be incredibly fun and incredibly compelling. I think, you know, the, some of the ways they expanded on the game, I really like. I like that minecart sequence. I like some of the... Uh, I actually like what they did with the Krauser boss fight because I kind of more understood the motivations of Krauser in the first place in a way where I didn't in the mm -hmm. first game. Oh, yeah, no, um, I, I like that fight better than the original one. The original mm -hmm. one is like, why do I need a puzzle in between in the in the boss fight? And, yeah, exactly. It felt very strange. So oh, they made a lot God. of good choices. And even the stuff they cut out, like I said, have been added back into the DLC for the most part. So, okay. yeah, the game is great. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it. And I still can't believe I was able to play that whole thing in the palm of my hand. So, yeah, Resident mm -hmm. Evil 4, my second favorite game of the year. Well, I'm glad that cave creature part wasn't in the end of the game ah uh, that's true too uh, i that's hated that too. thing yeah <laughs> absolutely that was a little oh. frustrating may i interject please mm, go ahead so i'm coming at this critically for first and foremost and then i will get personal um remake resident Evil 4 remake was a fantastic remake i think authentically just like that space remake it should be viewed from a lens that uh <clears throat> pretty much how to remake a game right because i'm not trying to say that we as a <clears throat> art form are new to remaking but i do think one the term has gotten close to meaning nothing i actually feel like it's gotten a meaning this year which kind of feels nice because remake has kind of just been slapped on things and remasters have been slapped you know it's a, who mm -hmm. knows what anything means anymore but in this aspect, it really does feel like we kind of nailed like a theming in, which is nice. Um, and I do feel like uh, Resident Evil 4 seems, as a person who had not played the original, let me make that clear, seemed to remake it in a near perfect way. And I haven't heard really anyone say any negatives. I did hear people upset about the Ada Wong thing. I did hear people upset about, you know, a couple of the, the bosses that Alex had mentioned were taking out the game. They didn't love that, which, you know, I get it. So critically from all that point, um, they did a fantastic job on modernizing it, I feel. As someone yeah. who played yeah. the original Resident Evil games, um, the worst thing about it is as soon as you move, the moment you move, the entirety of the game feels like the controller will break and brittle into your hands and crumble to dust <laughs> because you're playing something out of something out of. It's not even made in the century. It's like three centuries ago. <laughs> it's it, it's an eon old made. Like the the moment you try to move, it feels gross. And Emmett astutely and perfectly pointed out why that is the case. If you are a badass sniper, uh, it's not going to be a very good survival horror game because you're going to be one shotting everything in the head. And uh, if you could do backflips on command, it's not going to. It's going to be pretty hard to give tension into your video game. So of course mm -hmm. you do. You have to stifle the player in some way forcing you to react in with the tools that they give you versus uh interacting them in a way outside of what they want you to do <clears throat> right <throat> survivor horror is kind of figuring out what you should be doing not what you want to be doing because uh that's how they'll develop tension you have to figure out what to do then do it 
very much of a Dead Space, very much of Resident Evil 4. And I do want to echo, when I played this game, it was very clear. I was like, that's why people love this. <clears throat> Got it. This yeah. came out in a completely different landscape. You really do have to go back, read about when this came out, read about other games that came out, which is the most important part. Read about what other games are coming around, around this and then have this enter the picture. That's why it was so important that this game came out when it did and how different and unique it was. And you uh, you were brought up Uncharted, which is when you play Uncharted, you're like, oh, wow. Yeah, they 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 saw that camera angle and were like, send it. That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You see Resident Evil 4. We want to make that, but we want to make an action game. Uh, so it's going to be Tomb Raider and it's going to be this game. And you kind of push them together a little bit. And that's what we're going to do. Um, Bingo. And that's and that's what happened. And that game is very important for that that matter. What immediately kills it for me, and what confuses me when people say how good of a game it is, is mm. when we actually play and I listen to what's being said and the things that are being said out of the characters' mouths, especially in the original uh. one, and some in this one. The dialogue is some of the most campiest things I've ever heard. <laughs> it's it's the True. camp is not even nice. nth, in yeah it's to the nth degree back then they're saying wild stuff leon is borderline sexist the entire game like it's just except for like the last five seconds the last five <laughs> seconds of the game he's like situation to right <laughs> he's like yeah you all right i guess and then the game <laughs> ends and we're like give him an enemy like i don't know i i am at a loss for what people see out of the entirety of the game. I get historically why it's important, but people saying this is the best survival horror and the best video game ever made. That is when I, I get a little lost. It is a very important game. I, I will be very clear about mm -hmm. that. It's the same way we talk about Mario and other games. These games are important, but being important doesn't make it good. And I think the dialogue is some of the cringiest stuff I've heard in a very long time. The modern one, not too crazy. Um, you do have to ask yourself, and again, it comes from a point of view of this was the first to do it. So when it does cliches, you have to go like, well, it, it made it. Like, you know, it, it kind of made it popular. So it makes sense why they're doing it. Right? It's mm -hmm. like when you watch Lord of the Rings or something, it's like they're doing the trope of goblins. And it's like, well, they made goblins. So it's like, hey, you don't blame them for using them. To end to end this, yeah, I get it, but I I'm puzzled when people say it's the best game ever made because I definitely don't see that, but I do see the importance. Emmett, um, I think when it comes to horror, you're grading if not on a curve on a different scale entirely. Yeah, when it comes to horror, even with films, there is a the bottom the floor of horror is so much lower. <laughs> culturally yeah. overall than any other genre <laughs> of any other type of fiction so when you talk about the corny dialogue in resident evil 4 and everything which it absolutely is corny as the king of corn as you've probably heard a couple instances here on this episode yes it's corny i agree and i like a lot of stuff yes but it's that compared to just the compared to ill bleed on the dreamcast <laughs> yeah like those are the those aren't the direct contemporaries but those are the other things in the genre that are in people's heads while they're playing it we're talking about shit like what haunting ground on ps2 yeah. like other things that were being compared to it and that's a good point and you and it would also kind of be hard to have the same gameplay sequences and have the same pacing but have the tone of a silent hill 2 you know, it's it, just it crazy be, because Resident yeah. Evil 2 is right there. Like, that's True. not even the best game in its own franchise. It's just confusing to me. It's like I played Resident Evil 2 and I was like, oh, I get it. This is amazing. Wait, Resident Evil 2 remake or remake. original? OK, well, I think but that's different. That is true. At, if you're looking at Resident Evil 2 remake compared to the original Resident Evil 4, absolutely. You know, there's no contest in which one's going to win that one. If you're looking at both remakes. I think Resident Evil 4 edges is out, edges out in most contexts because the nostalgia where people like both the original and the remake for Resident Evil 4. Okay. Most people did not give a shit about Resident Evil 2 until the remake. Yeah. And even if that game is absolutely better, probably even better than the remake, which I haven't played to to be able to judge myself. 
I, I feel like the nostalgia is the fact that it takes it to another level for there. Uh, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Resident Evil 2 is like a masterpiece as far as everyone yeah. I know says. So okay. I don't I'm not gonna take anything away from it. That that's what I that's just my major confusion. You saying nostalgia, I'm like perfect. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, this is a fan of Final Fantasy X and Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I understand nostalgia, all right. I is an old friend, so I get it. I just that's what I guess I needed to hear is like, oh, no, it's probably nostalgia that pushes the reason before, because when I played two and I was like, oh, I can't wait to play four. Like people say this, like this is not even as good as four. And then I played four. I'm like, P-. I heard the uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even remember her name, but the the president's daughter, whenever Ashley? she Ashley, Ashley. Yeah. Yeah. She when she talks, I'm like, shut up. Like, <laughs> like, like and, yeah. and Leon is like <clears throat> Leon looks dope, but like he's not a compelling character to me. Like he doesn't even seem like he wants to be in the game, let alone let let alone like me feel anything towards him. Yeah, the 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 entire game is a little bit corny inherently, um, but you know I think that ties into the action, the fact that it is a more action packed, more over the top game overall. I think it makes sense totally with those, but to compare it to the prestige of Resident Evil Two remake, or you know even some of the other Resident Evil games, yeah, I understand the disconnect there, but for the dumb idiot i am yeah i love that shit <laughs> i want to play resident evil 6 now for some reason so, oh I, I did too the other day i was like i should try six because yeah i never when really gave it a shot we hated it. it so we did but also that was around the time it came out and i mean I it's, e- it's it's so easy to show I mean, we could try again i literally remember nothing of that game no i don't I, I think there's a school when you play leon i think or something like that yeah so i Everything- wouldn't mind trying it yeah, yeah, everything about it just makes me think I would probably like Resident Evil 6 if I played it. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, that the UI is horrible, and I don't know. I don't like remember the, much like, about that game. I don't know. The inventory system that. or something? I, I liked know. 5. Did you ever play 5? Yeah. Uh, 5 is the first Resident Evil game I ever played. I mean, to, me too. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> All three of us. Me and cool. him co-opted together. That was the first time I ever played it. Yeah, yeah. When it came out, me and my dad played it, and me and Alex played it back to back. It was yeah. fun. Oh, I loved yeah. five. I don't know why people. I was like very it. uncomfortable during most of it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine why. For me, why. Reasons, <laughs> that will be clear to you if you are not a podcast listener. <laughs> oh my awesome. god! Good job. All Quick right. Thing I did not know that Resident oh. Evil Four original release and Fear came out the same year. Crazy. Wow, well, that they doesn't feel. Two thousand five. That doesn't feel real at all. Yeah, I looked it up. I was trying to make sure that it was the original RE4 and Fear, and it both came out in 2005. That's God crazy. Damn. That doesn't was, even feel like the same game. Dude, the same game like, came out. Well, in my head, because I was like, oh, best is psychological horror. And I was like, well, Fear or fear is just a shooter horror, but it's not a really a survival horror. But I was like, I didn't know if I could count it as that. Yeah, so, definitely action horror. But yeah, you would say action, action horror. horror was like that, action you know what that horror. means? I mean, we need we, we're we're needing a remake for that one, right? God, who even owns that, that anymore? I need, I, I need Alma back. Uh, it was Monolith. So yeah, that's still WB. They WB still then, it. yeah, they have yeah, Monolith Productions. And that means they don't even. That means they have no fucking idea that they have that. They have no idea they have Fear. I yeah. guarantee you. If I go over there right uh, now, it's like, hey, who owns Fear? They're like. I don't know. <laughs> Straw Zelnick already sold that IP. <laughs> yeah, Straw Zelnick. Straw Zelnick uses it to wipe his ass. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, two. Oh. We need yeah. Alex's two, and then we'll move on to our ones. Hmm. Yeah. So I feel like this is your number one, Elijah. Hmm. But I'm going to cut. Um, I put this on my list, even though I have not finished the game. I'm currently still playing it. You pulled an image. But I'm enjoying it so much that I had to put it on this list. Mm. Baldur's Gate 3. Wow. It's so... I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I was. And, like, I like when I first started, I was like, oh, you know, creating is it's, it's very D&D-ish. It's like, I've never played something like this Who before. I've never played the original. <laughs> I've never played the original uh, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. I, every time I saw the trailer for this, I'm like, oh, that looks cool. As soon as I started this game, I was like, okay, created my character. Ooh, excuse me. The more, I, like, when I first started playing it, I was like, oh, this is fun. I'm, like, 10 hours in. I gave it a break. And I didn't get it. Like, I started playing other stuff. And then Elijah played, like, what, four fucking playthroughs? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to Baldur's Uh-oh. Gate 3 in a little bit, but I've, I'm on my f- third playthrough. 
yeah but God, um damn. yeah but like i was just like i need to go back and beat it before before because i had beaten everything else i was like what else do i got you know what go back to Baldur's gate i'm it was at, i think it was at 4 10 yeah i was at 10 hours when i stopped i'm at 31 hours now and i'm finally hitting act two and i was just oh i'm in i'm loving it i i keep texting him in the middle of the night I'm like oh i'm doing this what the fuck do i do like it's it's so good on like the decisions you have to make the storytelling I went into this game. I was like, "Oh, I'm not gonna do everything. I'm just gonna mainline the main quest, uh, the the main story, just so I can experience it, play it, you know, just say uh, get it done with." Because I was like, "I feel like it's just so big of a game." I literally have done everything for the game. Like I like, there's three acts. I just got to Act Two, and I'm 30 hours in. And I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> you will and, and I was like, I thought I was gonna finish it before we did this podcast, and I was like, "No, I'm not even halfway through the game." <laughs> <laughs> But like this, like the characters, like I'm already trying to figure out who like, like I got a romance going on. Don't know if I'm going to fuck a bear. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this game is really Talk good. Like, bear you, skin. Yeah, right. Um, like, <laughs> but if you like, if you Harry for your place, it's, it's there's more to it. But like, if you ever think of it's like, oh, Dungeons and Dragons, the tabletop game. If you ever think of what a video game of that would look like, this is as close, I feel like, as you could get in my opinion. Mm. But, like, it's uh, it's such a good game. Like, I had to go up there on my list just because, like, I'm still playing it, and I'm probably going to be playing this for, like, the next month until Prince of Persia or the next thing comes out because it's just, like, I want I, I want to play more, and i actually already thinking of making a second playthrough as a, like, rogue or something. Then I'm like... Uh, so I'm like, I just want to try it and see what other things I can make. I want to make me play my character differently i'm already thinking of doing different things but like it's so fun like it's you God, can see it. like all these people are loving it it's like you know got game of the year it's like i i can see why well i'll say this Baldur's gate 3 wins the absolute number one award for a game that i probably the best game of all time that i will never play <laughs> i just don't <laughs> Is is the genre wise? It's not for me. Yeah. I'm not too much of a medieval person. I like more contemporary or sci fi. Yeah. And I, you talked about that Borderlands Three DLC well, where I can just I can't see the bottom. I cannot see the bottom of Baldur's Gate Three. Yeah. So it's just you very can't scary. see the bottom, and you might bottom by the time you're playing the game. <laughs> yeah. That's a fucking loot league. <laughs> so yeah, that's um. We'll we'll see. Maybe one of these days. Maybe if I I've talked about maybe this year I, I do want to have a week where I just take off the entire work week and don't have any plans, so I can just be a hermit and play video games. Maybe that's the time to do something like that. But I got fifty other games I could think of before I get there. So Godspeed. Yeah, no, I the game came out on PC first, and we got it, and I was like, okay, played it for the ten hours, stopped. Came out on PlayStation. I was like, I want to play it on console. Bought it again on console, and I was like, "Oh, you know," I was like, "I'm not digging this UI. Like the way it just feels. It feels like a mouse and keyboard type of game. It's like you know, it's much easier if you click and click. It's it seems much easier. Like or like the way everything is like on the bar. Like if you think of Wow, you see they have all the little squares at the bottom. Hot bar, yeah, yeah, the hot bar. Yeah, it just it. Uh, this game is perfect for that. But then I was like, "Oh, I couldn't really get into it." And then the game, and then it came on Xbox. I was like. I bought it again, and it's all cross save. And I was like, I was like, now honestly, I'm glad that I did because the last couple nights, my wife uh, was watching TV. We were watching a show and stuff. I literally just put my phone on my backbone, remote played, and just that game is perfect for just handheld. Like I was just chill. I played on my backbone for like three hours, and my wife had already gone to bed, and I was like. Oh shit! I could use the TV if I wanted to, but I was just so comfortable just playing it. And I was like, I if I wanted to, uh, let's say she plays Disney Dreamlight, um, so she was playing that on my Xbox. I went on my PlayStation, had the cross save, just remote played it. Or if I wanted to be on the computer, I came over here, cross save, played on my computer. I was like, I'm glad that I bought that game three times because I can play it anywhere, and that's how how much I've enjoyed. I've been enjoying it. We gotta get y'all Steam decks also. <laughs> Oh, oh, dude, one dude, day. The, the more you talk about it, the more I'm like, uh, 
Mm, One day it's just like I gotta drop five hundo on that motherfucker. Like, like, ah. It is worth every penny. I, I know. I was playing I Burnout Three ten minutes before we started recording. <laughs> I know. I need. I need. I need to just suck it up. It's just Jesus. Like, yeah. I, it's hard to justify. It. I'm like, am I gonna use it? And I, I know I am. It's I just, like save for that one because I'm already looking at like, oh, Switch Two might come out. It might be four hundred bucks. I'm like, well, fuck that me. Too, yeah. Look, unless there's like a really good launch game, fuck a Switch 2. You could play. Think of the That's backlog true. you could kill with this thing. Dude. Think about it. Especially think of all the me, legal games. Like of games. Wink. Uh, <laughs> if you want to just remove that, the emulation element, I am playing so many of my Steam library. I got Epic Games on here. I got my GOG. I got my Amazon Prime, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's crazy. So, yeah, you could, you could get a lot of gaming done. Trust me. It is. Yeah. Really, I need, especially I, I, that I, OLED. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, that's what was once like, the as... OLED came out, and I was like, "See, and they're already mm-hmm. talking about a second one." So I'm like, "Do I wait on the second one?" Like, I, nah, it's the it's second hard. one, two ish, three ish years at least before the second one, because they kind of tricked us with this revision already. So yeah, I don't that, think that and that's and that's when I saw that I was like, "But well, that makes me not want to want to buy this now." It makes me want to. What do I are you, like a two when, already? Like, and see, whenever I decide to hit the bullet, and I have money for one. I'm coming to you and be like, "All right, which one do I get?" <laughs> yeah just get the i say get the oled now and then when they announce the steam deck 2 maybe wait for the one year later revision of that yeah, and yeah. then jump to the next one maybe someday yeah. Emmett, um i'm not the guy to like try to talk you into things that you don't want to play i do want to say if Baldur's gate 3 or if you ever wanted to try a crgb or crpg Baldur's gate 3 is the one to try because it does have it's it has as low of a barrier of entry as one of these games will ever have. So if you hmm. ever want to try one, one, the quality is there. Two, the... It's easy to get into. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, and, and that's coming from Alex. Alex is not one of the I guys that, that are in these. I'm not that type of person that type of game. Like, I, so, I'm not much of a strat person, like, like, that, hmm. like, but I'm loving it. So I would say one day, open mind, Same or eventually at some point, I'm sure you'll get it free somehow. From your genie ways, so yeah, just keep an nah. eye out. If, Look, if genie perfect, ways means perfect Steam Deck, Game Pass, right Pass. yeah, or Steam Deck, yeah, maybe it'll be a really cheap discount one day. We'll. I don't know if you guys saw, but it was weird that Baldur's Gate One and Two Enhanced Editions are coming to Game Pass, and it makes me go like, I saw that. Are you guys it, gonna put three I, on Game Pass? What that I, is it is it's not going to. Look, they said they're not going to and probably don't expect it there for the next year at least. But I Maybe. think what they're trying to do is say, hey, you like everyone's buying Baldur's Gate 3 outright on all consoles. Mm-hmm. Well, Just how about we put these? Two. How about we make one and two available to you so you can see if you like the whole franchise? Or maybe, hey, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 for $15 on Game Pass, a lot cheaper than getting the $25, $30 yeah. bundle of both of those or something. What's funny yeah, so. is 1 and 2 are so different. I think that would be a bad oh, idea because they're, they're so, so well modernized in 3 that I feel like mm-hmm. it would turn somebody off. That's why I'm like, no, why I, would you add? Because well, I would almost hide with. them. I would almost no, like, you, don't play these like because you, you're going to you confuse yourself three and go back to one and two. I think that's what they're hoping, because then oh, the passion's there to oh, push oh, you through. Oh, oh. OK, that yeah. makes a lot more sense. I would hope that they don't plan on trying to convert people from one to two to three, because that's not half. That's not happening. It almost deterred me from three before three came out. I was like, oh, maybe I should try one and two. I watched a little bit of one and two. It's, no, no. 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 it's like it's like watching Fallout uh, one or yeah. two. <laughs> hundred percent. A hundred percent. And then you go to three and then you're like. Don't play one and two. Just like nowhere close to the same. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's so different. Yeah, watch the Noah called Will Gervais videos on them instead. (laughs) Exactly. Um, I want to. Hmm, So we're done with twos. Hmm. Do you want to go ahead and do your number one? Yeah, yeah. Let let me. me, That's (laughs) been my theming. That's been my theming. Uh, going and when people say they're they're my list, so. Uh, shocking it's Baldur's Gate 3 um that is my game of the year and I would (laughs) love to tell you a story why one of the first games I ever played was Dragon Age Origins and I have been chasing that high ever since (laughs) like being able Mm -hmm. to create a character being able to select an origin right the exact same naming scheme they use in Baldur's Gate 3. Being able to select an origin, make your character, really personalize them. Uh, very Bioware in, in a lot of ways. Uh, 
that they continue, of course, in the Mass Effect. What are two of my favorite games? Dragon Age and Mass Effect. There you go. So it becomes not puzzling at all why this is a number one, right? This was almost made for me, right? I thought of what what would be a perfect game for me? It would be Mass Effect, a sequel to Mass Effect, and you're able to pick any race, just like <clears throat> fucking shocker, Baldur's Gate 3 exactly what i'd want out of a game you get to pick out of a bunch of races you get to pick out a bunch of classes and it's straight up D. &D. you play D. &D. gaming returns to its roots of the rpg scene of literally ripping out the character sheet from a D, &D game and putting it in a game that's where we all started from every well, you're RPG. A big critical role guy too of course yeah i'm into critical role as well um but uh, going back to the roots of RPGs and video games, right? We find ourselves in D&D. Mm -hmm. That is where it all starts. The character sheets are literally the exact same thing. The first thing I brought up, character sheet, strength, charisma, wisdom, intellect. These are all things that have completely mirrored wholly in every way in things like Fallout and Oblivion. Souls games are pretty much Soul that. Souls are exactly it. You, you are literally using a character sheet to upgrade your character. Like it, it is one to one. And to see us come full circle and, and, and work around to where this, and it's almost like a, it, it's like something out of a fairy tale. This team in Larian wanted to make a Boulder's Gate game from the beginning. They were told no. They're like, all right, we're going to make games to talk you into it. So we're going to make Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2, and we're going to show you how these games can work, and then you're going to let us make a game. And Wizard of Coast was probably like, all right, whatever. They go, they do it. They pull off Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2, 2 being one of the best games to people ever made. It's it, I remember it getting 10s everywhere, Yeah, and it, people lauded the game. I never really got to it, but people lauded this game and they larian finally gets the okay and a lot of people keep saying that they're funded or something they're not they they spent all their money on this game which means mm. they got they got a lot of money <laughs> by the way yeah. they've made a lot yeah. of money off of this they make Baldur's gate 3 and they all tens of persons kick it out get it out apart this is a marvel of a game this I've been saying, where's Mass Effect's competitor since Mass Effect 3? No one's tried it. Even Bioware themselves can't even match their own studio in terms of quality in, in the same series that the game is originated from. They're able to knock it up with Dragon Age very closely to the originals with Origins and with Inquisitions. They got very close, not quite, but very close. Mass Effect and Drama, complete, utter mess. Can't e they can't even touch their own games. Complete disgrace in, oh, nearly in the industry. And they're going to try and piece it together with the next Dragon Age games. Let's pray that they get it together. Larian comes out, completely upstages every other RPG around the scene. Again, let's remind ourselves. Starfield com came, comes out. They were the wise ones in this scenario and came out before them. Let's not forget mm -hmm. that. They originally had a release date of a month before, right around that Starfield window. What did they do? Nah, we're going a month early, and we're going to release it uh, PC first. And guess what? They made out like bandits because they knew they had the quality. And my God, if I was in that boardroom and they were like, we're going to go before Starfield, I'm like, you guys are fucking crazy. <laughs> like, we're not doing that. We're waiting. But they believed in the products, and they release. One of the best games I've ever played. This game is fucking awesome, guys. Like uh, being able to yep. start your own origin character, have uh, s nine different ways of playing the game because there's six origin characters, a creative character, and the dark urge. Yeah. So I think eight or something like that. I don't know. There's like eight different ways of playing the game each with a unique way of experiencing it through the origin character or your own creative character, which you can headcanon your own thing and make up stuff uh, for your character to have done. Then you, of course, have your backgrounds. Then, of course, you have the Dark Urge, which is a whole different part of the game that you play as a... Uh, like... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll... Not spoilery, but not... I guess kind of a spoiler, but not really. Um, slight spoilers for Baldur's Gate 3, I guess. Uh, you play as the son of a murder god, like it, it like it oh. gets it gets Fun. nuts. This game is nuts in terms of how different it is, 
Alex's experiences are probably almost wholly different than mine because oh, we did, sure. diff- did whole different things. His some characters have died in his playthrough and mine. And in reality, this all mm. comes back to some of my favorite games ever made: Mass Effect One, Two, Three, Dragon Age Origins. Finally, finding something that competes with those games in terms of breadth, quality, and accessibility isn't the right word, but approachability the approachability probably is closer yeah. to what i want to be um well yeah, although there are a lot of systems going on to me at least they're, they're easily they're easily grasped they, yeah, they got easy I, after you yeah. explained everything that i had because like even like i'm not much of a like top down type of guy like i like like where it's like or mouse click to click type of thing in console you don't have to play it that way you can but you don't have to like I can move the camera like literally to where you're just playing a third person game, which the other day you were even like, whoa, I never played mine close to my character mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, it actually looks cool. cool. It looks like yeah. I'm literally playing a third person game and I can move the analog mm-hmm. stick and move my my uh, my character freely or I could click the stick and do it move by move if I wanted to. But I wanted more of a RPG third person feel. Clicked it, moved the camera forward, and now I'm playing a standard RPG, uh, third-person RPG, and that felt like it. And if I wanted to, actually, like, there's areas in the game where I was like, oh, I wonder if I could see further down to make sure I'm not screwing myself over. I can click the stick to back to the move-to-move, move, zoom out, and move my ma- uh, camera farther just so I could see kind of where I'm going. And then go back to my character. I'm like, okay, I'm going this way. And I, wow. I've been doing that so much, it's been helping. And this is also, huh. like Alex is saying there, this is kind of I a marvel. This is a marvel of engineering in a lot of ways. Now, this there are just mm. full-on, this is a static map. So mm. it is going to be easier to load than something a much more dynamic, yeah. like let's say a Star Wars game or something. But yeah. being able to freely move around a camera while while... Mm-hmm at least to me on console, I'm experiencing zero to very few frame drops, very few loading mm-hmm. problems. I understand there have been problems on people on console. I have been incredibly lucky and have barely seen anything in terms of lag or anything like that. I had a couple, I had a couple, fidgets, had a couple uh, uh, frame spurts in my three playthroughs of this game, by the way, it just says, remind everyone three, a few spurts, by the way, out of three playthroughs. I've got, I had a couple bugs, but nothing, Nothing crazy at all. Um, and to me, this game is quite magical. I mean, this is literally one of my dream games uh, that I made up in my head. It was Mass Effect, and I would be able to pick a species of one of them for the next game. It, you know, Back then, it was just Mass Effect 4. When technically, it kind of is still now, but not really. Um, and they, they, I mean, they just straight up nailed it. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite things, because uh, I follow the subreddit for Baldur's Gate 3, um, the little things that Larian thought of, like, I won't get too specific here, but the si- situations can be solved unconventionally, very very similarly to Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. They can solved in ways that you don't, you wouldn't think of at first glance, but if you, th- you think of in hindsight, you're like, I wonder if that would have worked. Nine times out of ten, the answer is yes, it would have worked. If you can do it in the world, it's gonna it it will happen in the thing. And there's other little things like you can surprise attack anyone in the game. You could be a freaking psychopath and kill anyone you want. The in this roles game. honestly are my favorite parts. <laughs> yeah, you have the added um I guess you could say anxiety of uh yeah. of am I gonna yeah. pass this check? Am I gonna be able to talk this gold demon into killing itself because I need its gold that it has? Am I going to be able to talk this um guy into helping me during this fight so it's not as hard? Am I going to be able to scare this guard away so I can steal something from behind a counter? Am I gonna and you know on and well, on and the, on. The trick yeah. you told me, I mean like if you like living on the edge and just sticking to your decisions you can like you know you have the decision and you roll or if you want to be safe like i do sometimes and with with specific parts in the game i'm like i want to make sure i pass you can save in before you make the decision of dialogue you can save right there and then 
you pick one, you roll. If you fail, just load save back to right before you pick the decision. Oh, and pick so a Fallout different decision. dialogue. Yeah, Fallout dialogue. Yeah. Any dialogue, you know, Skyrim and these things where it's yeah. like, I didn't, like you well, roll, that came across know, too mean. mean. I'll revert and, and pick another option, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, so like I've been loving that because like there'll be times where I'm like, oh, okay, I'll stick with my decision I got. I failed it. I got it. But like if it's like something I really wanted to pass, I'll just load save. I'm like, I have to pass this. Hmm. And it's it's just been so fun. The game is just wholly unique, and I fell in love with it from from I can't I won't say moment one because I actually started the game and left it for other games that were coming out. So I actually started it I, yeah. and immediately was like, not right now. Like I like I knew it'd be a long game, so I was like, not right now. I got I got too much other things. Bowed out, came back a month about a month later, fell in love. Boom, boom, boom. And mm. I can't sing the praises of this game enough. I was I I mean I won't I'm not gonna lie to you I was predisposed or predisposition to like this game so I'm not gonna sit here and be like this thing did anything crazy but it still tried different and unique things to get me there and although the UI isn't the best on a console it's pretty close to being very good for a experience that is clearly mm. not meant for that no yeah once you understand like when you the little tips and tricks of what to do. It becomes very simple. Oh, and and I I said I was a hopeless romance early in the show. This game <laughs> does oh. my favorite thing. It lets me have my perfect ending. If you want it to be a dark ending, make make a make a dark ending uh, choice. But oh. I was able to have. I literally told my wife, I will love this game if they let me do this with this person. Guess what the fuck they did. They lit. They oh they got God. in my head and did uh. exactly what I wanted. And I'll tell you guys off air because it's not really a spoiler. And Emmett's never gonna play this game. But, um, I got. I mean, I got to have a happy ending with someone who was clearly not meant to have one. It's just little things like that in this game that make me really happy. I I l- let me ask this: Is it has everyone here played The Forgotten City? Yes. yes, I played it on your recommendation. I remember. Yes, Good. same. Great, awesome. If we're talking happy endings, if it's anywhere near that, then you might have oh yeah the first drop of like maybe I should play Baldur's Gate. Oh no, it is. So even there's even <laughs> clearly the, <laughs> there's even clearly an ending choice that's supposed to be a big deal, and you're supposed to, for lack of a better word, lose someone in quotes. But you can just be like you oh, can just you. completely be like, nah. And they're like, all right, <laughs> like it's, it's like it's just little things like that. Where I'm like, wow, I wanted a happy ending, and they let me have it. That's crazy. I love that. I love that they let me do that. That is, wow. I know to probably some people a cop out, and that's actually something I had a problem with in Spider Man Two. Is is they probably gave me too much of a happy ending, but in this situation, I wanted that because I fell in love that's with the characters, and I didn't even talk about the safe comp- ending. Okay, yeah, yeah, and I didn't even talk about the companions in this. The companions wow. are some of the most real, well-written characters I have ever played in a video game. They are incredibly deep. Their depth, the way that they feel real. I mean, th- props to the Game Awards. They let mm-hmm. no one talk for longer than 10 seconds, but goddamn, they let Asterion win an award. That dude is mm-hmm. insane. Everyone on the yeah. mic, they should all be called MC and then their name because they're the they're the best on the mic now. Like, it's just <laughs> no question to them. It, it, it was brilliant. It, it was really a brilliant. Normally with these type of brilliant games, game. I, I, I like certain companions and I'm like, OK, I'm gonna stick with like like with like Mass Effect. I'll stick with like, you know, my main character and two companions that I have. And I'm sticking to those for the rest of the game. This game, I don't know who to choose half the time. I'm like, I just finished a certain act. I had to keep a certain person. I'm like, do I want to get rid of them or do I want to go for the other character? Like, I, I want to keep all my characters together. But you I, attached. I have to pick. Yeah, I'm attached. To I was them. attached I was like, I... to each companion by the end of the game, and yeah. I was like, "Well, I don't want anything bad to happen to them, so I got to make sure yeah. like they're all safe." And you know, yeah. you make like, sure that they're all part, safe. Like, there's a character I don't really use, but I'm like, I want to use them because I don't want nothing to happen to him. <laughs> oh, oh, I think sounds I'm like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it's surprisingly <laughs> like like it got me a surprise. I didn't think I was gonna come back to this game. I thought that was like, nah, I'll pass. I'm good. I'm like. Literally looking at the time, I'm like, "Fuck, I'm not gonna be able to play Baldur's Gate tonight." <laughs> Let Let's end with Emmett, and we'll we'll have Alex go next. We'll right. end with the guest. All good. My number one 
Lies of P. Ah. Silas was coming. Lies of P. Like, I'm a big from soft souls like souls type games i love all these type of games i've tried a bunch of the other ones to me lies of p is probably the closest you can get for a souls souls like game that's not from software hmm. that that like if i, if like I may soft- immediately i yeah, apologize I, I have to ask. no no yeah go ahead go ahead how would this rank against other from soft because i i remember people mm. saying and that was kind of the hot button topic some people okay. were saying, and I'll give my opinion later, um, that this ranks higher for them for from for some from soft games. Do you I think they like were to able sure. to? Yeah. I would like to also add, uh, number one, I'm going to run and get a drink real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah. Number yeah, two, yeah. how does it rank in the Surge franchise? All right, I'll be back. <laughs> this I've never guy, played it. This fucking guy. Play the Surge 2. Ignore him. Great. Ignore him. There's no way the search two is good. Okay. I refuse to believe uh, that. No, <laughs> the search Liza. two looks like if Tom Cruise was given a game franchise. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, now, no, how does it no, rank you? No, Lies of P is probably in the top either four or five of all the FromSoft games. Like, if I had to okay. put it as a FromSoft game, so I got, I have Elden Ring. Definitely. I have Bloodborne. Yeah, uh, same so far. Uh, pro- probably Dark Souls three. Yeah, same. And, and then and then Lies of P. Yeah, yeah, I'm exactly and the then, same. And then, and then Dark Souls one. Uh, oh no, I sorry, mean, uh, Sekiro. Wait, and see, I love Sekiro, mm-hmm. but like maybe it's because I I don't know. I just I enjoyed the other one. I mean, of course, Sekiro is probably after Dark Souls one, and then there's Demon Souls, and then of. Uh, Dark Souls 2, of course. Yeah. I mean, like, I enjoyed Dark Souls 2, but I didn't love it. Yeah. We got well, no, Lies what, of what P, were you saying? Lies of P could be like, could, could, Lies of P and Dark Souls 3 are like there, like yeah. between, for number three. Like if it was a FromSoft game. But Lies of P is like, the world of Krat is so awesome. Like, every, uh, get, of course, it's the, gives me the iRobot feel, you know, there's all these. Yeah robot puppets everybody you know they're supposed to command or follow every command and then they go nuts you play as pinocchio like a, like you said coming out of the the thing you train pick. car yeah yep your train car you come in and immediately just starts when i i first played this game i played the demo i was horrible at the demo i couldn't beat the first little area after the game came out i actually was just like Okay, I'm gonna try it again. Keep playing, and like, because I, I guess I wasn't used to the the combat. I got more comfortable with it, and it felt so great. It does. Like it just like I like once you start getting used to it. Once you get pe- the bo- the first boss, you're like, oh, this was so cool. You get certain like I had like the bosses are so like different in a way, like so, and I like like even certain phases that they completely change. You're like, this is a whole new other boss. Like I love it. The like, I love that it's not that the story is very like linear. Like it tells you like what's happening. It's not like where you got to find the story, like from soft games. You like, this actually is like, Hey, cutscene. Hey, this is happening. Let's go on to the next area. Cutscene. This is happening. Like, I love that. It's very like story driven. Cause I love, I play games for the story. Like, like I love gameplay and stuff, but like, I love that's why. So I put it on easy most of the time, just cause I enjoy stories. I'm a big like TV show movie guy. Like I love stories. Mm-hmm. so like it's just what i is i'm like it's just how i am i've watched so many random ass shows like uh, he'll be like oh i told him i said i didn't watch this one be like all right what shows next <laughs> like um uh, oh yeah I'll- like like i thought i never would watch uh expanse love that show hmm. yeah um, i'll say when it comes to liza p i actually did pick up liza p i played like a yeah. good hour or two of it and it's one of those where Look, the the conditions got to be perfect for me to get into mm-hmm. a Souls like I yeah. played a lot of Elden Ring though I didn't beat it. The, mm-hmm. the Surge Two, of course, is like my goat when it comes to Souls likes. Which mm-hmm. I know people look talk all the shit you want. The Surge Two is a legitimately really great. Yeah, game I'm just giving game. you shit. Oh yeah, um, just, we've played Remnant too, and we just, I we never finished it, but we're like that was really fun. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So. You know, there's some good Souls likes out there. Mm-hmm. Um, Liza P, I think, could be one for me. It's just like it is just a tad bit different. Feels just a slight bit different than some of the other mm-hmm. souls like I'm familiar with from software or not. 
Um, so I gotta mm-hmm. get used to it. But yeah, yeah I the more you get you play it, I feel like the more comfortable it'll be. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, it's definitely it's on the docket to come back around to, mm-hmm. but you know, it, it's one of those where it's like I didn't play the originals that it's inspired by in the first place. So maybe I should go back to those. Like I picked up Dark Souls for the first time this year. Mm-hmm. Um Elden Ring, I still haven't touched. Bloodborne, I put like two or three hours into. Like, I could go back and play some stuff. So it's now in that pile along with everything else. I've I've been in Elden Ring five or six times. I, I know people will be Christ. upset and they can blow me. The real <laughs> the the only must plays out of the from software because of the way they have been surpassed is Bloodborne mm-hmm. and Elden Ring. Mm-hmm. You do not have to play, I feel like, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3. Because if, if you don't like Elden Ring, you're not going to like Dark Souls. So like, there's no point in even trying yeah. at that point, I feel like. But oh, no, not I liking like Dark Elden Souls. A lot. Yeah. Okay, you did like Elden Ring. Yeah, I just haven't beat yeah. it. But I got 40 hours into Elden Ring. I was, oh, the wow. one, I was not I expecting that... you to say that. Holy shit. No, you got 40 like hours Elden into Elden Ring? Yeah. <laughs> Steam Deck, wow. man. It's the effect. Uh, that's, a, that, that's a good bit. Yes, I, it is. Yeah. Yeah, compared to the hundred hours most people have put into it, but... I've put 140, 260, <laughs> two playthroughs. I have no uh, idea how I much pl- I did. No idea. I platinum the PS4, PS5, and thousand the Xbox, and all each right. each game I ever did twice. Yeah, that's... I was going through a rant and just did all of that. God bless you. That's uh, <laughs> you. You definitely did that thing. But no, when it comes to when it comes to from software games, <laughs> like I'm not playing. I'm probably not going to play Dark Souls two and three because three no, is no. like super dark souls one and two is like fucked up dark souls one from what i hear oh i'll yeah. play so, two don't play, don't play two. two it's just uh it's you just know, it's just it's just the, the first one i ever played two and two, two, two is just has a little too so many problems up, man mechanically <laughs> wise if you're gonna my first like, remedy game was crossfire <laughs> you fucking you fuck, I, you, I don't you make me so like, mad I think you play <laughs> dark souls one than that just, just so you can just to feel nostalgic but the closest one to Elden Ring was it's probably three. And if I mean, if you and I don't know, Demon Souls is it's because it, the remaster I'm or the not remake. Touching Demon Souls. Don't I'm touch. staying far. That's the fuck whole, away. Yeah, that's a whole beast. I mean, I don't like the, the whole, whole of the demon world mechanic. So the whole world mechanic is it horrible. I love the, the 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 combat, but the world mechanic is terrible. We got off topic. Yeah. Liza P. Yeah, no, Liza yeah. P. <laughs> great. The characters awesome like do i have we i think we did even mention earlier is like there's even skills where like you sit in the chair you get the p organs you could upgrade certain things like uh everything was so cool um even like you like you saw the ending like what are they gonna like we know what they're gonna do next how are they gonna do that like come on now like like me me thinking i was like a pinocchio game how are they supposed to do this but having to choose either the truth or the lie and it, like it changes like what your ending will be in certain things like i just loved every minute of it yeah and now we know the one after the next game steamboat willy game let's fucking yeah go. let's go <laughs> <laughs> initiate is that what it's called yeah oh god yeah that one uh, I, mm, oh. there's some weird stuff about that game out there i don't, I don't know yeah. quite about that one but hey steamboat willie's public domain let's fucking go Someone's yeah, they're making that live making a movie too uh, yeah probably i don't know horror movie or something i don't know yeah um steamboat but yeah no, you... Liza p is good but yeah no i would say uh like if you want to go back and not i mean even They've even, like I said, patched it to make the last boss even easy, like the easier, just because it was so stressfully hard. I don't remember how hard it was for you, Elijah, but like it took me forever, and like I almost had, I felt like I almost had to change my build just to get just to kill him because I in Elden Ring I had to change my build for Millennia, oh, and then I was able, I yeah, because <laughs> I was doing a strength build and I just I did it maybe like it was like 50 60 tries I could not yeah, get you were it. I, sw- I switched to a I switched to a blood build and it was, a, it was I mean it took me a couple more tries but I got it finally um but like I almost felt that way with this um but then I like I finally got it like I mean like I mean then did new game plus and like like everything is just like even the like the world is like I liked everything is even though it says like oh if it looks very bloodborne ish, it's 
I don't know. I'm not going to say like darkness is welcoming, but it's because I love Bloodborne so much. It's so welcoming to my eyes. I'm like, oh, I love this. Mm, like the familiar. Victorian age. Yeah. The, uh, what is it? Victorian style age. So yeah, I, like, Victorian, I love that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love yeah. that they played with humanity. I love that they played with, mm-hmm. like, you know, it, it, if you're asked, like, hey, do you lie? Like, it, it, you you generally be like, well, no, I, I'm usually a truthful person. But then they give you scenarios where, you're like, oh, so you would tell the truth to this dying kid uh, that they'll mm-hmm. die? And you're like, oh, no, I won't. Mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't do that. <laughs> like, you probably yeah. would lie and be like, hey, you'll feel better, you know? So there's <clears> situations <throat> that they put you in that lying is the uh better outcome and and they like doing mm-hmm. that and i very much love that and the way they play with a lot of uh different um stories and the mm-hmm. more you look into the game the more you'll find out about uh specific ways they play with a lot of things that are very fun uh and again this studio just really knocked it out of the park coming out yeah. of nowhere with a with a like, damn near a 10 yeah like if they could oh, do the yeah. same thing with the next one uh, it, it's like it's like insomniac like you like you trust them or like or or, or naughty dog you trust them with whatever they're coming next you're not worried like i'm hoping that like this is already on a positive note if they do the same with the next one i'm on their boat hey yep. yep you got my trust yeah bingo bingo neo is by the way a weird name like, <laughs> wow. hey, neo because they are definitely the new whiz kids on the block <laughs> mm-hmm. I hey, I tip my hat to them. Bingo, I bingo. tip my whiz. Mm-hmm. Emmett, <laughs> you're number uh, one. All right, number one. All Surge right, so two. we had. Swear to God, I was gonna say he's yeah. <laughs> actually speaking of the Surge two, it's actually <laughs> Atlas Fallen. No, I'm kidding. Atlas Fallen, Fallen, the movie. I don't mean. <laughs> it's fucking the, it's the original. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God, no. <laughs> the original joke I was gonna make was that it's forespoken, but then you set me up for the Atlas Fallen joke. So I just oh, like, imagine he says Hogwarts like, see how funny <laughs> would that fucking be, dude? He played the long game. He played it. Holy shit! <laughs> Good lord. No, no, no. Not, not, not this year, or maybe, probably not ever. We'll see. Um. All right. So this game, uh, number one. This is a game that y'all probably haven't heard of. Another of oh, your Jesus. little indie. Uh, another Steam Deck darling, of course. Steam Deck uh, darling. Here's what I'll say about this game. People know I like shooters. People know, look, I think this game, <laughs> it is strictly single player. I think it's better than Doom 2016. I think. Oh, it's whoa, whoa, whoa. I think it's Let's better not be than hasty. Doom 2016. I think it's better than Doom Eternal. <laughs> I think it's better than... I know this feels blasphemous, and even I had to talk within and make sure I feel this way. I think it's better than Titanfall 2 single player. Oh, that's a big deal from Emmett. You're just doing going hard, bro. It's like, it's it's single it's... player. We're talking just single player. It's like this is probably the Adventure. best first person shooter I've played up to this point. Uh, and we'll talk about why. And everyone should hop on it now. Turbo Overkill. Wow, what a generic ass name. Tur- so you said it, Turbo Overkill, you said? Turbo Overkill, yes. Overkill, okay. It, it sounds generic, but like, you look at this game, it don't look generic. <laughs> that looks sick. <laughs> it looks yes. sick. Absolutely. Um, oh, damn, this looks cool. Yeah, there we go. So Turbo Overkill, first person shooter. It is a boomer Tr- shooter in the classic, you know, Trigger style. Happy. Yeah, Trigger Happy Interactive is the developer. Uh, pretty... I think this is their first title, I believe, uh, working with Apogee Entertainment. Apogee, yeah, you might remember is. from... Yeah, 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 it's yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the publisher. Uh, Apogee, you might remember from stuff way back in the day. Uh, they did Ion Fury most recently, but uh, they're mainly known for their stuff back in like the mm-hmm. early or late 80s and 90s and whatnot. Um, but Turbo Overkill itself, first-person shooter, it is a boomer shooter. So, you know, high movement speeds, some over the top action, a lot of jumping around, a lot of like air strafing and whatnot. Uh, uh, but this game is so good because it just gives you the kitchen sink like halfway through the game and then lets you just go ballistic with it for the rest of the game. You, the whole gimmick is you play as like a mostly android human. So, like, all your lives have been swapped out with different tech and whatnot. Mm-hmm. You have chainsaws for legs. Originally, I see that originally here. you start off with one leg as a chainsaw. You can't upgrade it to where both <laughs> legs are chainsaws. Thank God. Um, yeah, and then later on, you you just outfit all your limbs with chainsaws. It, it's it sounds ridiculous. The game is ridiculous, even narratively. 
the narrative is more or less just like an excuse to do some crazy ridiculous shit it is over the top in all ways uh and like 80 percent of the game is just a shooting it is just finding new weapons navigating these environments these huge large massive environments there's some you know doom eternal style first person uh platforming there's quite a decent chunk of it actually every now and then it'll get broken up with some vehicle segments uh some really cool set pieces some mechs also um but the the shooting is just really fucking good uh and i've never played a game where once again 60 frames per second on steam deck that's how i played this entire thing but i've never played a game that just has such a wide variety of weaponry but like calls you to use it Mm. all the time where it it feels like the the fact that they don't telegraph what it is where in doom eternal there are a lot of like all right this enemy deserves this weapon and like they kind of make it very obvious this one's a lot more subtle about it. They don't tell you which enemy is vulnerable to which weapon. You kind of have to find that out on the field. So I've been, there were several arenas where I'd be stuck. I keep dying and dying and dying. And I'm like, all right, I can't get through this. I swap around my weapons and it's like, oh, wait, this enemy's vulnerable to this. Let me just make sure I take this out in time for this and then wipe them all out. And then the enemy design is really satisfying. But really, it's the weapons themselves that do it. They have a uh, double barrel shotgun that doubles as a grenade launcher. And then you can keep upgrading that. And then the pellets from the shotgun set on fire also. So you can just shoot into a whole crowd. And now everyone's getting tick mark damage from fire. Um, They have a sniper rifle in the game that is just a telefragger. So if you aim in at somebody, it'll just teleport you into their body and they explode. Um, And that is a traversal method in the game. (laughs) It's really fucking crazy. Um, they have dual SMGs that eventually you can upgrade and turn into just one giant, uh, assault rifle for longer range combat. The chain gun turns into a flamethrower. Um, and then there's even outside of, oh, fuck, I forgot the pistol. They have dual pistols. That's your first weapon in the game. There's an upgrade you can get later on where as long as you get like a good 10 hits in a row, it turns into like a magnum that does more damage per shot than any other weapon in the game. As long as you keep hitting your shots. So it's like there's like a meta in this game where it has you thinking constantly about like, all right, I need I need to make sure I have ammo for this so I can keep this going so I can balance all these resources. It does the resource balancing of Doom Eternal in a way that feels so much more organic. Where I think a lot of people didn't like Doom Eternal because it's like, all right, I got to stop shooting to go find a little small enemy to hit the little quick uh, melee kill. On this one, it's way more active. You have to save your slow motion ability so you can do this. You got to save your shoulder rocket so you can do this. It's so compelling. And it ends with, look, I know I said that the story isn't all that uh, you know, engaging. It's not something you're thinking about. But when you want to talk about a story that only exists for you to do cool shit, this is maybe the greatest story that has ever existed for you to do maybe the coolest shit I've ever fucking seen. Literally the last like three hours are all boss battles and it is satisfying. It is so much fun. There's literally one level that's just a tower of you fighting the same boss that keeps morphing and then he ascends and then you got to platform up to him and then kill him like 5,000 times. Then he teleports you into a different dimension. You got to fight him again. It's really fucking good. If you like first-person shooters, Turbo Overkill is maybe, out of all of the boomer shooters out right now, it is in that upper echelon. It is up there with Dusk. It is up there with uh, Ultra Kill. Turbo Overkill is right there alongside everybody else in the boomer shooter greats, and it is so good that, like I said, it's up there with the Titanfalls, the Doom Eternals of the world. It's too fucking good. I loved every second of it. Can't recommend it enough. Is it only on PC? Because it says that it was supposed to come out for console, but I can't find it anywhere on console. I think they're planning to bring it to console. Yeah, they're probably planning, but... Okay, because yeah, in 2021 or 2022, it said that it was coming out for console, but it did nothing says a, a date. They're probably yeah, like, I, one day. Yeah. <laughs> one day, yeah. yeah. One day. I mean, look, it's, it's Apogee Entertainment, and I'm not going to lie. Um, a lot of the like 3D realms and Apogee have both been hit with a bunch of layoffs in the last like mm-hmm. month or two. So I'm a little worried about the state of if the publisher can even help them get it to consoles, but yeah. they are aiming for consoles. They want to make it happen. I think it should. They already got a Steam Deck verified, so that's a lot of the work right there. Um I, we'll see, but it definitely deserves to be there because I, I know a lot more people will play it and a lot more people start turning heads towards this game because it absolutely deserves the attention. Yeah, I want to yeah, reiterate cool. something before I get into into this. 
what did you say at the beginning of this? You said this is your favorite shooter ever made or is that is that single player we're talking single player titanfall 2 has a fuck ton of multiplayer kudos that this can't reach for okay so single single player player is better than titanfall 2 absolutely then uh, just titanfall or period any game you've ever played titanfall is at the top so yeah period okay best single player first person shooter let's be specific best single best single player first person shooter it's high praise now reviews overwhelmingly positive turbo overkill is complete and with many new updates just in spectacular ending credits i can't imagine like what what crazy that is clean up paradise with your chainsaw leg 15 plus weapons and hover car and battle sin a super ai bounty hunters and cyberpunks aplenty apogee's most outrageous fps since duke nukem 3d Good hunting, sir. This game looks sick. I mean, the, I mean, it has it, a meta score of ninety-one. Goddamn, mm-hmm. Jesus! This yeah, game not a, not clearly a lot of is talked beloved. about it, but every yeah. outlet that talked about it gave it high marks, guaranteed. Yeah, every outlet that it gave it to uh, is like either nines or tens. Mm-hmm. Again, it where is incredible? Where is PlayStation? Where is Xbox? Where are right? they sleeping on these games? <laughs> like Emmett is finding them console. better than That's their money. fucking heads of Xbox and PlayStation. Get Look, these I'll... guys money and make yourself some money at the same time. It's not our Look, I hate to sound like an ad, but this is why I say, hey, Steam Deck, Steam Deck, Steam Deck, because yeah. there's simply too many games for major publishers to be able to catch every single one and get right. them on console. You're right. Um I, I feel like this is just one that slipped through the cracks. I mean, Dusk just made it to PlayStation 4 like a couple weeks ago. And Dusk is like one of the first boomer shooters of this wave. That came out like almost a decade ago. So it takes a while for these things. And plus, boomer shooter just became a category a on category. Steam yep. two weeks ago. Yep, so, two weeks ago. I saw that. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we're we're still on the ground floor, but if you got a Steam Deck and if you just have access to PC in general, which a Steam Deck is a very accessible way to do, you can get on the ground floor on a lot of these and be able to play them before waiting for them to come to whatever console you have. So, yeah, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. This looks sick. And I, I love that the the trailer shows him dropping on someone, the chainsaw like coming out, cutting them in half, and then coming back into his leg and him walking away. That was awesome. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was sick. God. And I'm a you I'm just, a sucker yeah. for a good double barrel shotgun. I'm a sucker. <laughs> and this looks sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really good double barrel. Even they even have a secondary single barrel shotgun that you can like charge three shots into when pumping with, with the action. It sends an EMP and disables like shields and stuff. It's really fucking good. And the rocket launcher, you can load like eight rockets into one shot. It's really good. <laughs> oh, I think the it's the Magnum good. you were saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The uh, the environment's looks great, too. It looks like um, mm-hmm. like uh, you, something out of the old 80s uh, fucking cartoon. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I'm assuming you like boomer shooters. Did you ever try Proteus? Proteus was also that was pretty was cool. Almost in my uh, what is it? Uh, my what did we say before we started the top ten? What is that? Uh, honorable mentions. It was yeah. almost in my honorable mentions because for years Proteus yeah. was the Game Pass game I would use to test out the latency on Steam Deck. Yeah. And That's what I tried it. I tried that on Game Pass. Yeah, and it, it's great on there. But I finally got it. It was on a humble bundle choice bundle a couple mm-hmm. months back picked it up on steam deck and i was like oh my god this n- there's no latency now and so i've just yeah. been running through it it's <laughs> there's really no latency <laughs> well, i was playing quake one remaster and the quake two remaster and i was and it was like oh you should like proteus so i gave it a shot and the quake two remaster is so fucking good i played yeah. a lot of that this year oh, did oh you? my yep. god i never played any quick well i played a little bit of quake one remaster but i've never played mm-hmm. any so quake, you, finish quake a lot two of it, you have to keep going i'm gonna i'm gonna beat quake two i definitely want to do that i I have it in me to beat a game that came out before 2000. I've never done that, so I'm <laughs> going to do that this year. Oh, I wow. Promise. You never did that? I don't know. That. Never. Never. Oh, wow. I played a couple, but never beat. Wow, really? You've never beaten a game Just... that came out prior to the year 2000? That's nah, right? Nah. Nah. I, I've tried. Wow. I picked up Half-Life. I've picked up... Um, what is it? Even Metal Gear Solid 1 I've toyed with, but like, no, I've never stuck with one long enough to beat it. I think Quake 2... Or Quake... Yeah, Quake 2 might be the one. Because it is so fucking good. Those modernizations are perfect to me. All right. So, yeah. That's awesome. I like shooters. Last notes, anyone. I've kept you guys here for quite a while. (laughs) Any last notes before we leave the audience? 
Um, I think that's pretty much it. it, it would this be the time to pitch like, ah, they say your name and what you want people to check out? <laughs> it sounds perfect. Go ahead. This spiel. It, yeah, in that case, uh, hi, I'm Emma Watkins Jr., also known as Easy Spun Six One on different places on the internet. Um, yeah, Easy Spun Six One. If you want to see anything about me, uh, maybe go to Blue Sky sometimes because I'm trying to post on there, but I'd be forgetting. I ain't gonna lie. Um, you and maybe everyone else. If we, look, it's starting to get bad because I used to not be on Blue Sky because there's a lot of people. They use AI sensors yep. to block all the uh, adult stuff. Those se- those sensors are not 100 no. percent foolproof. Uh, <laughs> I've heard I've heard it's madness over there. It, it was madness. It's not that bad now, but I, some some fall through the cracks. But on Twitter, I've been seeing ads where they're just showing hole. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> like some people have been seeing a lot of these ads where it's like a, a half naked woman or whatever. And I haven't seen any of enough. those. Oh, I they're starting. I'm starting to see viral tweets of people being like, "What the fuck are these ads with a screen cup?" Them? So I know I'm that's not annoying. I want to see them. That's funny. I, I the worst I get are just the annoying, um, like crypto like guy t shirt. Uh, yeah, a couple yeah. crypto things, but like it's like look at this t shirt that clearly has like read my cookies or something, and is like, <laughs> we know you like this. Yeah, well, I I've gotten a little bit of that, but like the the one I saw the other day was just a girl with like pulling them to the side halfway and you could see like 30% of hole. And I'm like, no, why is this on my screen when I didn't even want this? I'm at work for Christ's sake. It, it was very bad. It was very bad. Um, so yeah. So yeah, maybe blue sky where I can at least like block the person who's doing that, where you can't block these ad people because they just come back multiplied. Um, so yeah, follow me there. VGU.tv uh, right on the front page. You'll be able to see the top 25 uh, or God top 23. Thank you. Top 23 video essays of 2023. A lot of good guys on there. Uh, go and watch a lot of those because I was really happy uh, with that list. Mm. And uh, I might need to tweet it out again because I'm not going to lie. Usually when I tweet that out, that's like the only a thousand view thing that happens on the website all year. Um, it's not like 200. So I might need to boost that. Some yeah, do it, do it uh, again. I'll retweet it again. Um, it's it's great. It's a great list. I, I only got halfway through it, so I got to go back and like finish the rest of the half but it was great so far it's fucking awesome dude i always look yeah, forward to yeah. this a lot of long videos on there i apologize ahead of time for the five hour star wars video at the end so yeah. <laughs> but it's good it's worth it i don't even like star wars but the video is good um so yeah other than that uh spoonies just dropped spoonies two uh favorite things of the year watch that episode a really good fucking case of dramatic irony at the end of the episode so watch that uh and that's all I got for you. I'm going to go live life and I'll be back in a couple weeks with game of the year stuff over at VGU probably. So nice. Yeah. Nice. Thank you so much for joining me. Emmett. that was, um, that was great. And you donated so much of your time too. I appreciate that. You're always some of the best out there too. So I appreciate you. Keep it hustling out there. I will also keep hustling over here. Alex, all good. All good. Appreciate you having hmm. me y'all. I would thank you, but you had nothing else better to do. So this, I mean, man, what I got dice to do? roll. <laughs> uh that's true it's true you do have dice to roll that's right thank you so much for donating your time with me alex thank you for wearing your hat uh it was just a big day for you all around you got to talk about your top 10 you got to talk about your hat i mean it's all coming up alex i say yep alex season <laughs> alex season duck season and of course you come to me thank you so much for spending the last four hours with four hours us i appreciate it of course you could find emmett below in the description he will be on the top and of course you can find uh the description make sure you like comment subscribe share with a friend as this was a long time in the making and i'm very happy that everyone was able to join us so let's make sure everyone gets equal amount of love of course in those comments down below as well thank you so much remember five star review us on whatever platform you are currently using patreon.com slash if you'd like to donate financially and until the next time go chief yeah you made me wait for it that time. <laughs> <laughs>